It is extraordinary what a vast expanse the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens covers. It's hat trick time, and I've got a hat trick hero here, Reed from Hornsey School. Tell me about that hat trick. Well, first try, um, just nice hands down to the wing and just had the pace. I give to you the 2024 champions, Stanford! Yeah! Runners up in the under 14 girls. I'd like to welcome them up to the pitch. Come on, get to the under 14 girls champions. Jamila English. The sevens, I think, is a great introduction because it's a simple game, it's fast, and I think that's why we liked it. Because we, we couldn't kick a ball and we knew in the sevens, listen, you don't have to kick. Get the ball, create some space and, uh, and score some tries. Been a great start. The boys are really excited about playing here. They're a, they're a great year group. Uh, a good start against the Hay School. This tournament in the world, not just schoolboy, of any level. I've been told that and actually I'm quite emotional about being here. Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome to RE2 and to the live coverage on this pitch of the under 18s cup competition. It is the Thursday of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens and that means the biggest boys in the competition come out to play the under 18s cup. Now it's a, a format which is a bit different to what we've seen so far in the week and it's worth bearing in mind what's at stake uh, for these teams at the group stages as we begin our first match of the day by the way Harrow School against Abbey School, Harrow, the cup holders, of course, from last year, as well as the under 18 Continental Tire Schools Cup winners from last week at Twickenham on Thursday. So they have to be the hot favourites for a second title, but the perhaps uh, the aspect of their recent success which might work against them is that they haven't done as much training for sevens as they would have done in previous years coming into Roslyn Park. But bear in mind that across the 60 teams that are entering the under 18s cups they get drawn into 12 groups of five so we've seen groups of four so far it's now a group of five the winner and the runners up go through from the group so that's important the winners go through to the cup the second places go through to the plate competition but as with almost every other groups that we've seen here it's just been the winner that's gone through but in this under 18s cup competition two teams will go through to the next day from the group it uh, just depends whether you go to the cup if you finish top or if you go to the plate if you finish in second position so for harrow school and abingdon they're already out on the pitch abingdon in the pink and white and harrow in the white and blue Right back to the side, there's not much space at all over there. Well, very good morning, everybody, to wherever you're watching on from and whoever you're supporting here. We hope to have your company across the course of today and with the way fixtures can work for schools once things uh, go later in the day, timings can change and th uh, as such. But this first match for Harrow and Abingdon will be followed up by their second match for both of them at 11 20. Now, both these two schools are going to be on the show pitches across the course of these first two games. So after this, Abingdon will be on pitch RE1 against Kolegi Kamoi. Harrow will be staying on this pitch against the Bishop One Church of England school. So a double billing of both these schools. We're going to get used to them over this morning. And let's see what they can bring to Roslyn Park this year. Abingdon school kickoff. All back and win the restart as well. No mean feet, lovely touch through the gap. 
for Abington's number seven. Now, Daniel Tackle, no! Berry. Leave it out. And this is Church. That's a nice pass out the back. But here come Harrow with first possession in the 2024 edition. The cup holders and making quick work of Tackle. a couple of defenders there. Steel holding. Yeah, all on now. Abington with the penalty, though, and causing real problems for Harrow School early on. The pink and white jerseys linking together nicely. Wilkins can't quite take that. Knock on. Yeah, we'll come this way, but... <laughs> yeah, just stamp it in. Go, boy! Same on. Crouch! <laughs> Play! <laughs> Set! Harrow scrum under pressure from Abington. And they've turned it over again. Brilliant start from Abington. Released it, play on. Against... The reigning champions, Harrow. Are they going to get this ball back? Um, I'll get a penalty. I'll there, got a roll. It's all pink and white at the moment. All on play. Ollie Johnson. That's, That's come off a Harrow schoolboy body, although knock on declared. So uh, Harrow with this scrum. Coach! Bang! Row of Harrow includes St John Smith, who scored a try at Twickenham last week. It's been a, a case of trying to rest up and recuperate with as much training as is allowed to get ready for Roslyn Park. Here's Cam Knight. Saw him at Twickenham in darting form. And he's off to his sharpest footwork in this match in a couple of runs but passing that forward so certainly a sign that Arrow are getting used to their second Five. season perhaps Five. Six. Balls out. pass away from the base is good chip over and that's well positioned although Knight has got back and covered well now Harrow's Freddie Dynan is off and going. He has a man on the inside. Dynan plays it to him. And Harrow go in for their first try at Roslyn Park this year. After sucking up quite a few attacks from Abingdon School. They strike first on the scoreboard. Nice break from Freddie Dynan. To set the try up. Well, initially looked like uh, it was a well placed kick, just had a little too much on it. Night switch with Dynan, who stepped out of the first tackle, drew the sweeper, and then racing the ball home in the eight jersey was George Simpson. Played centre. At Twickenham last week, Simpson alongside Charlie Griffin, Back who is here eight. in the squad as well. Locked and loaded with all their stars from last week, this Harrow School team. Now, Abingdon in some space here. It's quickly shut down by Harrow. Play on, he's let go. So sh short on space when you face Harrow. At sevens, they cover the ground so well, and that defence, without overcommitting, is aggressive. Good steal, survive to clear. Philip Edstrom, fly half in 15s, where's one in sevens? He gets this next phase moving. Henry Dargan into contact. Cam Knight with the 
Scrum half roll here. Dynan draws and then gives again back Tackle, to Dynan. The two try scorers Tackle. who created the first try, George Simpson in combination again. This is on the line here. Taken over scrum five, white ball. Taken over by Abingdon and put down by Abingdon. Taken over and grounded. So here come a, a line change in a full ice hockey sense. Five players being switched by Harrow School. Personnel shift. They don't come uh, more resoundingly than that. What is that in percentage terms? 70% of the team changing? Crouch! Bay! Set! Good scrum from Abingdon. Picked away. Though still with Harrow and then chance on the edge here for the wheels to be stretched and the ball back inside is a good one. Fraser White touches down. Harrow get their second. Fraser White knocks this over from distance. That's a lovely strike from White. Good scrum though it was. White with the initial pass. And Sam Winters, who is uh, back from wrist surgery and looking to play an integral role in this Harrow School campaign. Okay. With a scoring touch to set up Fraser White. Back off White. In touch off White. White. Having done again. Having had a, a fair amount of possession here, maybe they can hurt Harrow here. Play on. That's taken away again, though. And sauntering forward is Simpson. Good pass to Stratton on the inside, and they'll run this in again, and looking so comp composed as they do so. Sam Winters gets on the scoreboard this time. And Harrow School ticking off their moves, making sure everyone gets a share of the play, and looking at... Fluids and dangerous at every opportunity. Three conversions as well. Don't get the sense that they are having to push themselves too hard in this first match. Ball back inside. Good support from Stratton. Then the uh, line from Winters, who missed out on the fun at Twickenham last week through injury. He'll be an important man over their campaign, you sense. Half time in the first match, 21-0 to Harrow School against Abingdon School. It's a glorious morning here at uh, Roslyn Park, as you can probably see from our cameras. So if any of you are thinking of coming down today to support either Harrow or Abington, then get a move on because the weather can change in this part of uh, southwest London quite quickly and Roslyn Park can turn quite muddy quite soon. But right now, it is glorious. It is perfect Rugby Sevens weather. And Harrow are having a lot of fun in the sun, as I sense having dinner as well, because uh, getting to play against this Harrow school side, despite how the scoreline looks right now, is a test. 
Well, it's a real test. Monmouth Abingdon have taken too well in that first half with quite a bit of possession before the points started coming. And they have more possession here. Scrum has looked good, Abingdon's. Now here's Jim Allen. Takes it into contact up against White. As well does Jim Allen. Little step here from the scrum half. That was nicely done. But knocking on, unfortunately. Straight out to the wing here. His Winters again. Oh, he steps inside and then he shows his wheels. Winters skates in for his second of the game. Sam Winters brushing off any cobwebs from a wrist injury. And he looks one of the sharpest out there right now. Takes a fair degree of confidence just to go miss one straight out to the wing. You've got to know that the man who receives it has got pace to burn, and Winters does quite evidently. Good take from Daniel Winterberry. Comes back on Harrow's side though. White, his Cam Knight, good hands. Spin and turn from Andrew Stratton. Then out with Keevney. And is this Winters again? And work it back from right to left. Knight with the pass this time. Ashton Ilinchic with the scoring pass. And that's nicely played. Comfortably done. Henry Dargan with the score. Ashton Ilinchic. Ilinchic. Excuse me, with the assist. White here, and every player in this Harrow school with such good hands and contact skills, no matter the position. Well, the other teams are in this pool, by the way, include Seaford College. Bishop One Church of England School and colleague Ikamoy. That's the five. And with Harris School in it, well, most of the other schools may well have been thinking this is about getting through to the plate competition, coming second in the pool. But you just never know, and that's why Harrow are pulling on as many points as they can in case it should ever come down to points difference as to who tops the group. There's St. John Smith, lovely pass from the seven. And this is the man who brought the house down at Twickenham on Thursday, Reggie Hammock. Getting a try, his first of the competition. I wonder how much lactic acid he's had to work out of his legs since last Thursday. He was everywhere. And this was lovely. So too was St. John Smith. I mean, this is a, an open side flanker in 15s. Runs like an outside centre. Hammock has the more familiar gait of a rampaging number eight. More often than that, not a flanker, though, when Kapu Tui Pilotto has been in the side, but Tui Pilotto's injury ruled him out of um, the business end of the schoolboy rugby season, unfortunately. How are going to race in for another here. Keevney on point and off the mark for his personal account. Ninety seconds still to play. Harrow working on the half ton.
defensive side of their game is, is so good. A bit of pressure. Or even the threat of pressure, because having to know that the defence can come at them forces that error. So Hammock is under this. Knocks it on. Pass from Wilkins. This is just hacked on. Might go in favour of Abingdon. Come back for the scrum. Well, some of the best moments of Roslyn Park so far this year have been when sides who have been on the end of a, a big score like this have come up with a try at the very end of a match. And that will be just reward for having in this match. Stuck to their task as best they can. Penalty. Ted Carter goes to the boot here. It's going to beat everyone, is it? And out on the edge. For full time. So a difficult uh, opening for Abingdon School. Harrow after a clunky beginning coming through by 45 points to nil in their first game. So 11.20 is when both these schools will be next in action. Abingdon School will be on RE1. That's a different live stream to ours against Colleg E. Kamoiv that is still on England Rugby. Just make sure you're watching the RE1 pitch for that. If you're following Abingdon, Harrow will be back on RE2. That's this pitch, this live stream against the Bishop Wand Church of England at 11.20. The next match on RE2 is Gosforth Academy against Oskol Guffin Glantath. One of the real likely teams to try and contend with the top brass here. Glantath so often a Welsh school that deliver hammer blows to schools with a big billing at Roslyn Park. They are so often a team to be feared on these pitches. Gosforth with 11 out of 13 players from the lower sixth from year 12. So a younger team here. Gosforth in the blue and yellow. Backward. And Glantaf in the light blue and dark blue. O'Brien. Moving things back to the right-hand side. Now this is Oshan Lewis in the scrum hat. Nice pass from Lloyd Lucas. High, high. High tackle, just there. First match of the day for both these two schools. And Glantaf playing nice and close to each other. Making sure they stay connected in their opening attacks. Dewey Thomas. Lou O'Brien, Lucas now sets off Oshan Lewis, and Lewis breaks through. The striding legs of the number 15 will be too much for Gosforth. Good first try for Glantaf. Let's go, 
Okay, we need the ball back. Lewis gets Glantaf off to a start, and this pool is going to be so competitive. A good start is imperative here, and Lewis with a, a half fend, but really it was his legs that broke the defensive line. A lot of power in that running style of the number 15, Marshawn Lewis. The other schools in this uh, group, by the way, include Brooksby, Melton College, Oakham School, and Cranley School. Cranley uh, having won the no, boys quick. under 18 cut back in 2017. They were finalists in 2018. Oh, they won it Yellow back in 2016 here. as well, going back to back. Real pedigree in, in this competition. So it's a very difficult group to get out of, just in how the schools in Harrow Schools group will be down on their luck a little bit with that draw, but this is a tough, tough group. Gosforth wanting to show that they can be contenders within it. Group winner goes through to the cup competition tomorrow, the runner up through to the plates. So out of five schools, two will be coming back tomorrow. Pinch on the floor Backwards. Backwards. from Ben Roberts. O'Brien now. Owain Hall on the edge. That was nicely done. If the feet can be kept within the whitewash, it's James Clark who's tackled. Now tries to get to the line. He's as close Back. as you can be without scoring a try. Off the floor, and that's a hammer blow required to knock down the defenders there. And Lou O'Brien willing to be that hammer. No touch, judges. No touch, judges. Well, this could have been a, a lovely solo score. The chase back is terrific, though. Gosforth's Academy will Natoka with the tackle. And that was amazing defensive work. It really was. The follow-up was good, although uh, from the slowdown, Gosforth claiming it was held up. Nonetheless, 12 points to nil to Glantaf. There are going to be decisions that go against every school across the course of all games. It's uh, part and parcel of rugby. Went back. So Gosforth dusting the themselves water, down, trying to contain Glantaf here again. Goes Clark, and he's on the other edge now, looking to avoid the same fate. He'll make it all the way. James Clark trying his luck all over town. Lou O'Brien's kick is a good one. Just going to slide across to the left-hand side, though. James Clark picked it up with 50 to go. A deceptive change of pace. And then in a one-on-one so so on one with same. Jamie Lane, who did well. Just uh, the line came too soon for him. Backward! Lord Lucas passes on. Here's Clark again. He'll draw and pass this time. Ben Roberts tackles. Hi! Hi! Yep. Right, tackle on Roberts. Lucas. Oshan Lewis back to... Owen Hall. Oh, that's lovely. Ghosting run. Now takes on the sweeper. 
and gets around him, Lou O'Brien. Hardly a finger laid on him. And all the best traditions of Welsh playmakers. With the ball in two hands and a convincing sell of the dummy. And then that gliding style to go around the last man. Gorgeous try. You can hear just how intense the uh, pace is here in this uh, under-18s boys group stage match. Oh, it's so good to see. Almost at full speed as he goes through. That's it now. Little push away. Keep the timing. Keep the timing, guys. On the money with the kick as well, O'Brien. That's going to come back to Glantaf's side. Here's O'Brien, now Clark. And Clark's going to have a go as well on the ghost and the drift and then the sprint. Although he doesn't quite need all his speed to make that one. Glantaf showing all their class now as the first half draws to an end. That's it, there. That's the first half, guys. Wonderful seven minutes of work. And even more impressive than Harrow School's first uh, half of the match. And that takes some topping. But Glantaf have done that. Half time. A comfortable lead. Might get a little bit better here with O'Brien's attempt on goal. But Lou O'Brien doesn't make that one. Well, Sean Lewis... Um, with the pass to then shift the play to the right. James Clark with a good score. Half time, 29 points to nil to Glantaf against Gosforth Academy. Klantaf, kick off in the second half. Extraordinary height, which they're able to put on these restarts, Klantaf. And that's uh, Lou O'Brien's doing. And here is Roberts. And Ben Roberts cuts back in. Out there, yellow, good. More Glantaf possession. More opportunities. New different cast members entering the fray now for Glantaf. And one of them back on the inside is number six, Gabe Williams. Contact. Always under pressure. Here we go, guys. Marks over here. 
Yeah, there might be a long way from the try line here, but possession has been scarce for Gosforth Academy. So Eddie Morgan, actually a, a Welsh exile playing for Gosforth, so he feeds the ball into the scrum. There is Morgan again. On the edge of Gosforth. But that's so canny from Glantaf to get in the passing lane, pinch the ball back. There's O'Brien who'll see a bit of space and goes back to the right hand side. Harvey Jones, Lucas. That's fine. Hold, hold. Good. And there is Harvey Jones again. <laughs> Taken yeah. by Gosforth. That was not on there, guys. Too much pressure for you guys. Let's come again. Well, that's in the background where the players warm up for their next match. I need better binding on the hookers, guys. And there's pitches behind there as well, the other RE pitches, all the way down to six. Overall, 21 Mark. pitches in use Crouch. right now Bind. at the Howden Roslyn Park Bind. National Bind. School Sevens. Set. Just uh, cameras on two of them, so that's 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 some that's of the it. highlights can come from all over. Lou O'Brien <laughs> looking to make Bind his out. own highlight reel here. I don't know if anyone saw the try yesterday from one of the uh, pitches right at the back of uh, the field of play here. It was a wonderful score. It's on the, the Howden Roslyn Park National School 7's social media account. Do check it out. Stunning piece of play. Exhibition stuff. It's been a, a little more traditional 7s from Glantaf, but they're going to add to their pile here. Touching down was Amondale. Finn Ammondale. And all from Gosforth line out. Good take at the front. That was by Gabe Williams. And the skills are so good here, aren't they? A little extra lift on the ball to give Ben Ammondale that extra time to cut back. Harrow almost hit uh, the half ton in their first game on this pitch. Don't to stand a good chance of doing that. Amondale again reworked it. Link play was nice from Harrison. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, leave it. Penalty oh, Gosford. Leave it. That's okay. Such Take little it. possession to live off You're here. Good. And they make something work here. Go close to the line. Take on Gantas, Harrison. Cooksey. Now there's space here on the left-hand side. Almost away, but the foot pass was forward. Now frustrating. Lloyd Lucas. Once again, Ammondale. New man on is uh, Harry Burrows in the 20 jersey. Lloyd Lucas goes through himself this time, showing that he can break the line as well as create holes in it. And he'll touch down here. Good pace from Lloyd Lucas. And nice identification of where the space was. Amondale. 
and the pass from Burrows. And then there was a lovely show and go on the inside. Valiant chase from Josh Farley, the captain of uh, Gosforth Academy. Amandel now popping up on the right. They reset nicely. Fantaf. Last 30 seconds of their first match. Release him! Been completely one way traffic. All blue and light blue colours cutting through yellow and blue. And Amandale again. It's made a difference since he's come on. Now, a chance here for Gosford. Can they break out upfield? A race on into the backfield. First time Gosford have had a real chance in the match. But Glantaf's covering is good. And Dewey Thomas is the boy back for it. Captain of the team is Dewey Thomas. And he made sure that that breakout didn't result in a try for their opponents. They're going to keep a clean sheet. And get off to a winning start, Glantaf over Gosforth Academy with the victory. 41 points to nil. So Glantaf will next be in action at 1pm against Oakham School. So they've got quite a break on now, uh, Glantaf. That's 1pm on pitch RE6, not one covered by our cameras for Gosforth Academy there on RE3, again, not one covered by our cameras. That's at 11.40, so just an hour's time before they face Cranley School. Oleg Cigar next up against Finborough in the under-18 boys cup competition. First match for both these two teams. Oleg Cigar to kick off. Advantage! Walk 
comes back for Kai Evans, and he'll get Colleg Cigar off for moving. And then Ellis Price it is, who makes that half break. Clon Jones. Good pass off the floor. Great start this for Colleg Cigar. Price, big pass from Ellis Price. Might have opened things up. Fimbra do well to get back and recover. There's Price again. Advantage! Easy, boys. Knock by blue. Scrum, red. No advantage game. Mark here. Let me see a good break foot, boys. Bring it in. Mark's here. Props. Bind into the hooker. Bind into the hooker. Kai Bind Evans hooker. is the scrum half for Colleague Cigar. All right, here we go, boys. Crouch! Ellis Price. Bang! In the front row. <laughs> in the uh, seven shirt. I know there's a sevens, but I still need to see shoulder separation. On bind. All right. Hello, prop is uh, Kai boys. Jones on the far hand side. Crouch! Bang! Sit! Play on. Away by Evans. Now with a great chance here. Bimbra Advantage. alert to the defence though and turning it over. Red. And now they Advantage can go from deep, very deep. Good tackle though. Price almost knock onto it. First knock, second knock. Scrum red. Scrum for Coleg Cigar. Good defence from Fimbra. Last scrum was good, boys. Do it again. Hold five. Crouch! Bang! Set! Evans. Onto the edge here with Alex Ridgway. Alex Ridgway scores in the corner. The Wales under 18 player muscles his way over. Anywhere on my line. It's Price with the conversion attempts, but uh, doesn't go. So five points to nil to Colleg Siga. Good speed on the ball from the number 15 for Colleg Siga. Had to reach back for it, didn't he? Ridgeway, and then barreled his way through. Behind the kicker, on you, sir. right up there for the Colleg Cigar Chasers to contend with. Now, Fimbra are off and going, and this is great speed on the ball. And maybe from the restart, Fimbra will race in for their first try. It's Kruger who has gone the distance. <laughs> Wonderful try from Kruger. Kruger took a great support line here, big fend, and what a turn of speed this is. Sweeper with no chance, but uh, pulling up a little towards the end. Managed to stay on. Kruger might have had to have a change after that. Imbrigo from kickoff. Pace has dropped right down there, hasn't it? That first few minutes of enthusiasm and of all that energy of now just fed away and the calculating sevens brains can go to work
Nicely tied up here. Kolig Sagal with all the possession, but still only one try apiece. They give away possession here. And this could be interesting for Nathan Alley. Oh, it's taken Backwards. by Evans. Ferocious at the breakdown and well drilled at the breakdown up. Kolig Sagal. Ninety seconds and a half, boys. Mark here. Hold five. Crouch. Bay. Sit. Evans. Price. Cleon Jones. That's a nice uh, step on the inside of Fimbra's number 12, Reese Cairns. Kai Jones, purposeful running from Jones. Now Price again, Ellis Price. Not afraid to find his own path. Lovely switch back. Evans. Price. They're just going to pass their way over the line here and using the big frame of Kai Jones to deliver the final blow. You got 10 seconds. Involved a couple of times in this setup. <whistles> was Kai Jones. Half. And they take the lead into the half. Time whistle. Big frame uses his ball skills well, and this was really intelligent from Price as well to make that switch with Morgan and Kai Evans, then Price, then Jones again. Good morning. Twelve points to seven at half time to colleagues. On RE1, Beach and Cliff School versus Norwich School. On RE2, Wellington College versus Richard Hewish College. On RE3, Bishop Burton College versus Millfield School. On RE4, St Joseph's College versus South Gloucestershire and Stroud College. On RE5, Exeter College versus Hartbury College. On RE6, St Benedict School versus Brighton College. And on RE7, Eaton College versus Blundells. So those matches due to get underway at 11 o'clock. kickoff was not handled well at all by colleague Cigar. To look at the possession from that first half, not that Sevens is anywhere in any way uh, dictated by the normal statistics of Rugby Union, but it was all colleague Cigar. They just didn't make enough hay with the ball that you thought they might have, so... Fimbra still in this bum fight. Good speed on the ball here. And opening things up, and that's beautifully done. Chase is on, though. Good tackle back. It was Burns. <laughs> Lowy Burns, who made his way all the way back into defence and Four saved a certain so try. And kept things to within a score, which will be so important for Fimbra. They've got to show a little more devil in attack than they did in that first half. Nice hands to expose the left-hand side. Then the break on. This is great stuff. This is Leo on the attack. Leo stepping back. 
and scoring for Fimbra. By my count, that's two attacks <laughs> and two tries from them. And the lead comes with it for Fimbra as well. Nice break from Cairns. And then Leo, who had numbers on the left, didn't need them. <laughs> Does go 10, taken again Red. by Fimbra, enjoying a Red, over. their best patch of the game so far. Now they go to the left. Charlie Jones on the ball, he loses Bro. it. Colleague Cigar have it back. First knock by blue, then by red. Scrum, red. Bring in, boys. Take a step back. Right there. Crouch! Bye! <laughs> I know you're tired. I need some celebration, okay? All right, just hold it. Crouch! Bang! Set! It's there, it's playable, playable. Scrum made a mess of by Fimbra. Colleague Cigar, get it away. Good pass from Morgan. Good speed from Alfie. No! Hands on the ground. Hands on the ground. Alfie Rodder. Ladek. It's a good defensive line set from Fimbra here. Staying nice and close to each other, putting a bit of pressure on when they can. Oleg Cigar and Davis choose to go into contact. Me. Get back on side. Alice Price uh, brings Fimbra to the floor. Oh, another chance here on the edge. This is once again Jones. He's pushed into touch though by Alex Ridgway. You can see in the background Wellington College warming up. They will be the next match on this pitch. So if you're tuning in to watch Wellington, you're in the right place. Good tunnel, boys. They're going to get their campaign underway. Hold very, on. very shortly. I need two by two. My colleague Cigar and Fimbra, they have Radley College Rugby School and Stourport High School in their group. Another competitive group. Lovely dink round the back to make some space here for colleague Cigar, who are chasing two points here to try and level up the contest and go ahead of having led for most of the match. Now release what a chase that is. Excellent work. Nope. They've broken out of their half Don't now. The and with Mog Sadler tapping and going, and Ellis Price, they can flood that left-hand side. I'm just going to play a knock. Scrum red. Be careful with that. Two minutes left. Five teams in the group. The winner goes through to the cup competition, to the next stage of the cup competition. There, boys. The second place team goes through Good to the plate three. competition. Crouch! Bang! Sit! And those uh, knockout stages taking place tomorrow, of course. It's so a double knock. Three teams from the, each pool will be first eliminated. Therefore, winning your first match Stop. is so Let's important go. to Let's go. your chances Make of coming quick, back boys. for a second day. I'm second day off one. school as well. Got less than a minute now. Here, bring it up. All right, here we go. Crouch! Bang! Set! Fimbra, inside the last minute, needing to eat up the time. 
but they have the leads, and that's well played indeed. They might look to add more points here. Again, opening up Colleg Cigar on the left-hand side. No, get off your feet. You're okay, Red. Don't play it, Red. Thank you. Another good charge from Leah. <whistles> Penalty. Red, now this will be surely enough now for Finn to start with a win. Atkins. Release! Time is almost up now. Will Fimbra look for another score? Because points Never. difference could also come into play later on in the competition. He's knocked That's it enough. on, and that will be all. <laughs> so Fimbra hold on against Colleg Cigar in their first match. Good job, boys. 14 points to 12. They've beaten a very talented and uh, promising Colleg Cigar side. But it's Fimbra School who come out on top. 14 points to 12. It's Richard Hewish College now against Wellington College. In the under-18 Boys Cup group stages, Wellington College, previous winners of the Cup. Always a team to watch out for at Roslyn Park in those yellow and black gold hoops. Formidable force on the schoolboy scene for so many years. Richard Hewish in the green and Stifling the attack with Sam Gray. Look how spaced out Wellington College are, using the full width of the field. Sometimes we see teams staying much closer together than this, but they really want to stretch Richard Hewish here. And Maslin. On the tackle now, Tom Maslin. One of the players playing a year down, or a year up, as you might put it. He's a year 12. Crouch, bind, set. Yeah, first man, that's fine. Hewish have turned it over. Really good work. Ollie Guess now. Has to look for support, and Wellington all over this. Scrabbling for it, getting it backwards. Maslin plays it to the wing, and Wellington College will be away here for their first try. From the turnover, one pass to the left wing, and they strike. Try scored by Langford, man who's uh, been with England under 18 for camps this year, another year 12 player. Inigo Langford with his first score of this year's Roslyn Park. Great work on the floor. The try really owed to uh, that side of Wellington's play. And that was Oliver Teague who was digging into the grass. Back off 
green. So Mossman uh, now to guest. And the slowdown from Sam Gray. Knocks this over. This might work nicely. Wellington almost take it back. Now they do take it back. And Oliver Teague plays it inside. Wellington strike again. Jack Natman. Welcome back to rugby, Jack. Six month break for the Irish under 17 academy player. On the score sheet here for number two for Wellington. It was Natman who um, did well to not knock the ball on initially. Then Teague. Back to Natman. Touch. Thanks, Jets. Green ball. Okay, way on the line, please. Keep the gap. Holly Guess will take this in. It's uh, knocked back by Wellington, though. And they'll start again. And Will Corbett gone to ground off the left hand of Harry Eckersall. So the Wellington School team notes that we've been given here for RE2 have been written by the hand Crouch. of a pupil, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, given some of the uh, comments that are listed under useful information for commentators that they make quite a quite interesting reading. <laughs> Richard Hewish on the charge, they... Don't scream like that, you look stupid. I've had plenty of possession, and I guessed Looks to be a man that can twist a defence in knots when he gets the chance. This is Jared Mossman, lifted over by Kieran Hill. Gray being held up here, smuggles it backwards. Taken though by Wellington again, and then racing through the gears is Eckersall. Passes it on. And it's number three for Wellington. So said comments um, about Wellington that the pupils have, have clearly written um, would involve uh, Harry Eckersall, who we're featuring here in this uh, run. It's a lovely run. The breaker through, actually Ben Smith it was, uh, rather than Eckersall. Smith with the break and then the pass. So plenty of these comments, very sensible. Year 12, fly half for Ben Smith. But Harry Eckersall says, devastatingly good-looking and very funny. Okay, back so I think we know who held the pen to write down these uh, team names and numbers. And here is Eckersall. And can he be devastating on the front foot for Wellington? Whipped back across. Really impressed with the width that Wellington are playing with here. Creating things. And Jack Natman is going to go in for a hat-trick here. Number three for Jack and that really is uh, a welcome back to action one on the right wing second on the left and then skirting again round to go under the posts fine work from Wellington College in the first half and Natman is all smiles Wellington's Roslyn Park Sevens Going well so far. First seven minutes in the books. 
And they lead Richard Hughes 26 points to nil. So McBurn Peters with a good pass here and then a nice draw and give from Smith. And then what a step this is from Natman. So Wellington will get us uh, underway shortly in the second half in this Group J in the Under-18 Boys' Cup. It includes Beach and Cliff School, Norwich School, as well as Oakland's College. Norwich School and Beach and Cliff School, they've been playing on RE1, the other showpiece pitch here. Only... One team goes through to the cup from each pool, so you've got to top your group if you want to be that school. School finishing in second place will go through to the plate competition. So both those top two placings offer a way back to Roslyn Park tomorrow. It's just good uh, possession from Richard Hewish. Kieran Goulding involved here. Bouncing ball though, Wellington are going to pinch okay, that. Just lost four on the floor. But It'll knocking it on, that's, uh, that's so frustrating for Wellington. Having done well to collectively put pressure on with their defensive pattern. Not able to uh, take the ball when the opportunity Five. presented itself. Set. Wave the ball. Almost a pinch of it from Wellington's power packed scrum and they do get it back over to the right hand side oh there was Natman he's looking for number four Jack Natman yeah I'll make sure they go straight by down okay make sure he's driving straight for just you players on for Wellington by the way Isaac Sprenger Ball, He's please. on at hooker. Crouch. Bind. Set. Richard Hewish, get it away. Has to be hacked forward, though. It's very little other option here. Might work out, you know. Two in the game for Wellington, though. Sprenger is back there. And the big man sets off. Good skills as well from Sprenger. No, going to floor. Release. Big tackle, both of you. Oh, you go. Eckersall okay, plays scrum half. And again, they'll stretch Richard Hewish across to this edge. What a beautiful pass that is. And McNamara is off and going. Kieran McNamara around the outside. He kept his depth. And then tore through the green jerseys. Yeah, pretty down, pretty down. Another year 12 player for this Wellington College team that whatever happens this year, going to be a force to be reckoned with next year with these players reaching uh, their final year at the school after that. McNamara, though, didn't need much more than raw speed here. Running past the Bumblebee jerseys that Wellington College supporters wear. Knocked back and knocked into the path. 
of the onrushing number 13 for Wellington. That's McBurns Peters now on the other side. Sprenger. It's got a long reach. The wingspan of this man can keep anyone at bay. McNamara pops up one place inside now. Looks to create something. Offloads nicely. Sprenger, good pass from the big man. Lovely stuff. And then with the fend to go around the outside. And Ego Langford again. He'll get a second. Everything's been so structured from Wellington, the way their tries have come. This one a little bit more of the improv. That was a beautiful pass from Isaac Sprenger. Langford hits this too high, or not long enough, rather. Joe Buxton... Um, decided to take that and give the tap and go from halfway to Richard Hewish. Guest, good speed from Guest, but then pinch back. Not enough close support from Richard Hewish and they're going to be stung here again. And it's Kieran McNamara, who has all the speed in the world, but doesn't need to use it there. More of a trot to the line. So 90 seconds still to play for Wellington. And for Richard Hewish. And from halfway, he realised he was in. Well, Harrow didn't manage to make it to 50 in their first match of the day against Abingdon School, as impressive as Laid looks, the reigning champions. Wellington College might do. They've got a minute to He's on the way down, hit that mark. For Richard Hewish will want to get on the scoreboard as well, and guest. Be careful, please, 12, okay? Sam Gray. Look to combine. Here is Sam Gray. Does a good job of slowing the pace down to the tempo he wants to go at and then accelerates. And that's lovely feet on the edge, isn't it? To work his way around Joe Buxton. Still with Theo Badhouse. O'Donnell, Louis O'Donnell with that pass and good strength on the floor from Kieran Goulding. Wellington College, though with the last attack of the match and can they make it all the way to 50 here's big joe buxton he goes all the way through well they say he's built like a lamppost joe buxton and from that vantage point he stomps through the defense and takes it to 50 converting as well nicely done by joe buxton and nicely done by wellington college well, okay. 52 points to nil against Richard Hewish College in their first match. They'll face tougher challenges in this group, but that is a composed start. And both these two teams will be in action at 12.20. Well, actually, Richard Hewish College in action at 12.20 on pitch RE3 against Beach and Cliff School. Wellington will have a little bit of a longer wait to face Norwich School at 1.40 today on RE6. So not a showpiece. Uh, pitch then but later on we'll see Richard Hewish on this pitch at 4.20 against Norwich School
Thanks, Jack, for a top shift to start the day. I'm Wilfred Kemsley, back with you here for continued action from the Under-18 Cup. Five teams to a group, hundreds of teams in action. It's a really busy day. I've just been down to RE5 to have a look at Gordon's school. I'm playing Clifton, who looks strong. There's some really big units on show. And, uh, well, talking of big units, let's talk about Harrow School, who are back in action live here on RE2 for their second game of the day at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Well, the Bishop Wand beat Seaford College in that first game over on RE1. And Harrow, unsurprisingly, put 47 past Avingdon. It feels a little bit like if you put a tenner on Harrow to win this cup competition, you get five pounds in return. But we're hoping for a couple of upsets. And, uh, well, Bishop Wand have started strongly in the blue and red as we await some action from the referees to get us underway. We're squaring a few things away ahead of this fixture. Our next four, all from the under-18 cup competition after this game. It will be uh, Bromsgrove taking on Cardiff and Vale College. And then Denston take on Myerscough for Kirkham. Take on Hartbury University and Hartbury College, of course. And then Jack Zorab will be back with you for Abingdon up against Seaford. It's under 18 boys cup all day until two o'clock when we get some action from the girls ace competition. Exeter take on Worthington there. And then we return to the cup for the rest of the day barring one more ace game at 20 past three where Bishops Burton take on Worthing for the second time. It's a jam-packed day here on RE2. Well, the coin toss. So we are soon to get underway here. And it will be Bishop One to get us underway. From the kickoff, Finn Keylock to get us started. And he'll hook it high and just shy of the 22, plucked out of the sky. And look how Harrow take it to the line off first phase, skipping through the tackles. Away they go, and this time running down the right hand side. Oh, it's unfortunate there for Henry Dargan. Guys, but how here. quickly do they start? Scrum. A scrum, though, for uh, Bishop Wand. They'll have a chance to play out from their own 22. Crouch. Okay. Bind. Set. Stay nine. Scrum fed by Bishop Wand, a little bit uh, shaky there, and there's a loose pass too, but it's been regathered in midfield. Taken down at first time of asking. There's a lovely little offload to maybe free up some space. In goes the fend. But quickly over the ball, a harrow Put turned over Put by Freddie Dinian. No escape ten, ten, for ten, Bishop ten. Wand. And here come the relentless harrow. Switching on the inside this time is Hamich, man of the match at that big Twickenham final, of course. Little show and go from Dinian. Calm and composed on the ball, Patrick Keeving. And a quick pick and go, and they'll look to take on all comers. In goes the fend, and it's a score for Henry Dargan. Harrow draw first blood. Inside two minutes here, and Bishop one go behind to the much fancied Harrow School. The best 15-a-side team in the country, that's for certain, and 
despite their limited experience in the short format and the build-up to this competition. True quality shines through at every level. Little hitch kick drawing in two defenders. And then there's a little overlap on the right-hand side. Just too much space for Henry Dargan to sprint away into. Back it comes from the kickoff, a little show and go, and it might put them through the hole. Bishop Wand, but knocks on in contact. Logan Achamar hit hard from behind. Crouch! Binds! Sets. Scrum for Harrow then in a dangerous position as they go searching for their second try. Dinian plays it out to that left-hand side. <laughs> but this time it's a reverse at the breakdown and instead it's a quick Not tap from Bishop One, but too far away from the mark. Quick tap then, Bishop One looking to get things rolling and it's a good offload through contact. But Harrow on the cover, backwards. ball goes down, but always backwards. Intercepted, just palmed straight to Reggie ha Hamich. And Hamich driving on, there's a little turn to break through for the contact. And Harrow will go in for another. <laughs> and two tries up, they ring in the changes. Six in total. Harrow trusting their bench as much as their starters. And the extras as well. So 12 points now they lead. Well, you can see the vision, but uh, how do you miss <laughs> Reggie Hamich, the big lad? And then Cam Knight with the run in. Ruthless stuff from uh, Harrow. We'll have a look out for big uh, Charlie Griffith, captain of England under 18 level in previous. He's got some defending to do on this short side. And in the end, takes two to wrap up uh, Bishop Wand. And they've got seven on feet, Harrow as they look to high press. Offloads through the contact, however, and there's a little two-on-one opening up here, perhaps, for Bishop Wand, they put it to the toe. Offside. And an offside is the call, as Harrow were retreating, offside. so a good opportunity this for Bishop Wand. Harrow yet to concede in their opening game, but here's Mildenhall. Middle Milden Hall hands it off to Keylock, who takes contact. Not rolling this time. Milden Hall taps. The captain for Bishop Wand. Little show and go from Keylock. Offloads through the contact, but look how quickly Harrow looked to shut down the attack, and it just bounces off the leg. But in the tackle, knocked on. Out the back door offload this time for McDonough. On there. Another knock on by Harrow. Bishop Wan still very much in the game here. A try would do them wonders on the stroke of half time. Achima to feed this scrum. Crouch! Got Binds. options left and right. Set! Albert Mildenhall switches the direction of the attack and takes it at first receiver. There's the switch, and Keylock goes to ground. And we could see a card here for Harrow. High tackle, that close to the line. Means Harrow are down to six. A big opportunity this right on half time. 
There's a bit of space on the right. But a big tackle comes in. And right on half time, Harrow escape unscathed. But would you believe it? Down to six on the scramble. Knocked on over the line by Bishop Wand, which means into the break, although they will be uh, up a player to begin the second half, they're down two tries. But Harrow threatened for the first time in this competition. What can the Bishop Wand Church of England school offer in response? We'll find out in the second half of this under 18s cup match here at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens as the two undefeated teams in the group face off. Well, the Bishop One School will receive this kickoff, and it's been <laughs> nudged short. So they'll tap on halfway, the Surrey School, based in the westest of West London. And nudged in behind, lovely weighted kick, and it will bounce unkindly for Harrow. And turned over at the breakdown, a top start to the second half for Bishop Wand, who still play with that man advantage. And there's a little ball on the inside that almost sees them away. On the turn, two on one. Wrapped up this time Holding on. Put it down. by Harrow and Reggie Hamich. Turn it over. Uh, Good little spin from Mildenhall to free up the hands. But in that two on one, wasn't executed. So here's Cam Knight. Offloading in contact. There's another one too. Harrow still contained in their own 22. Looking to break away here. Look at the acceleration and Harrow skip away. And now there's a foot race to the line that surely they will win. A hammer blow to Bishop Wand just as they look to swing the momentum of the game. A breakaway try for Harrow puts them back in the ascendancy. They lead by 19. And that young lad's day is done. In the end, unchallenged. And once again, Harrow ring in the changes. They've brought on five new players. A tactic I'm sure we'll see more of throughout the day. Seems to be working for them here, although, as we saw after they made all those changes, the... Um, Momentum just swung. They've managed to reclaim that facet of the game as they are returned to a full complement of players as well. Bishop One looked to get in behind. The loose pass hacked forward by Mildenhall. It ricocheted off a Harrow player, so we will have a line out for Bishop One. Right. Here to channel, please. Back line. Keep moving, keep moving. Elijah Taylor at number seven of London South Central. One to watch out for, but picked off by Harrow. And Fraser White hands it off. And suddenly into the wide channels, there's the big fend. Up to that 15 metre mark. Once again, it's a 
White at first receiver, but steaming through the contact, straight through the hole goes Dargin, and the scorer of Harrow's first try will surely seal them the game. <laughs> Henry Dargin dissected the hole that Bishop won left open for him. Down the tram lines on the left hand side. And they add the extras as well. Pretty simple sevens, just through the hands. And then Dargin injected a bit of pace at the right time for Harrow. Well, taken off the kickoff well by Bishop Wand. Arrow still yet to concede, but they could be in danger here. And it's a penalty for a late tackle, and we could see another yellow card here for Arrow. Well, the fair play award may now be out of the question. That's another yellow card in this game. It's a tackle. Well, this time it's uh, Ashton Inacic who will see the no, sideline for a bit. And then a lovely work in the tackle by Martin Bepin. There's the offload too. Now the ball is wide and there's a bit of green grass ahead of Bishop Wand. Bunce plays nine into Little Fair. Once again, here is Bevan, who beats one. Lovely footwork from Bevan. Off the foot, off the foot. Off the foot, so it will still be clean ball for Bishop Wand. They're inches away now. But once He's again, not knocked there, on. Just yes. centimetres from the line. And Harrow make another five changes. Subs coming on, guys. Another six, in fact, as Cam Knight will also enter the fray. Bishop Wand can hardly believe what they're seeing here. Once again, the entire team rotated with two minutes to go. And it will be a Harrow scrum on the five metre. We talk about the uh, South African tactics that we saw at the World Coach. Cup, where player will, a player will go until they're spent. Set. And then they will be substituted as soon as their numbers drop. A Harrow following that tactic here, where the team will burn whatever energy they have, and then when it's time for them to have a rest, they're allowed it. And well, we're seeing the implications here as it's a beautiful run from Fraser White to put Harrow away again. St John Smith in support. But that was all Fraser White and his creation and Harrow have another Edstrom captain of the under 18 cup team will look to add the extras yes and Harrow remain unchallenged with just colleague Ika Moyd left to play in this group But they are still yet to concede. They've crossed the 30-point barrier twice already today in their opening two games. And Bishop Wand, in the end, have not been able to challenge this dominating Harrow side. Good footwork in there. Let him run! From Eric Nagy, and then... A bit of space might open up here. There's lovely quick hands through the tackle. Bevan looking for options inside and out. Throws the basketball pass. Another great offload inside. And will Harrow finally concede? Oh. No, it's a beautiful covering tackle. Can you believe it? Little Fair thought he That's was it, away. But what a tackle that is. Thank you very much. And Harrow have killed the game and 
Good Thank Lord, you. what desire from Harrow to keep their try line protected. Well, the door remains locked on Harrow's home try line. Yet to concede in the opening two. Three times in this game, Bishop Wand were a few inches from the line and three times they were denied. And in the end there, uh, by a beautiful covering tackle, thought for all the, way, all the world that Little Fair was in to score Bishop Wands first. But instead, Harrow, now with their 78-plus points difference, are still yet to concede at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens competition. They are surely through now to the second day already with just that elimination game to come later on. Well, we will remain from the, with the under-18s cup competition here on RE2. As up next, it's Bromsgrove who will take on Cardiff and Vale. That's live next for you here on RE2 at the Howland Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Well, Bromsgrove here in action for the first time in Group E. Cardiff and Vale College beaten by Berkhamsted 38-10 in their first game. So they'll be hoping to get their Roslyn Park Sevens back on track. Newport High School defeated by Bedford in that other fixture to open up Group E. Kickoff excellently reclaimed by Bromsgrove, and what a fast start they're having. Ben Yeo, the captain, went down the right hand side, but now they're going back across the face of the attack, and a penalty and a card early for Cardiff and Vale College. That was cynical, and it's a shame, really, to start the game. James, back 10, please. With a yellow, but. George Thorrington will have two minutes on the sidelines, not that he needed a rest just yet. So the perfect the pitch, start for Bromsgrove. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the two-on-one opens up on the left-hand side, skipping through the contact. There's the offload and the big fend, and Bromsgrove will score early. Inches short, but surely they have to finish from here. Well, they look to go for the corner instead. Josh Horton opens the scoring. No, Horton made the initial break, found Gilbert on the inside. But in the end, Horton went darting into the corner. For Bromsgrove to open the scoring. Henry Parsons. One of an, an EAP Academy I'll, I'll player. Wait, okay? When, is, when you're ready. Unsuccessful from the conversion. Lovely offload inside. Gilbert thought he was there. Two Cardiff and Vale players on the cover. 
And then Horton <coughs> assessing his options, decides to dart into the corner instead. This time taken off the kickoff by Cardiff and Vale College. And the head down running through the first contact. Lovely footwork from Reese Cummings. Over the ball go Bromsgrove. But suddenly it might open up on the left-hand side. Little switch back across the grain, and it's lovely running, and they will be through here. Morgan Prosser <laughs> crashes over. And we're level again here in this thrilling groupie encounter. Just on me, OK. An excellent kick from Tom Hughes puts Cardiff and Vale in front. Time off. This ball. is a great line of running from Prosser. Time on. And it will be a kick off for Cardiff and Vale as well. Linked uh, very closely to the Cardiff rugby. Provincial side. And there's a big shot off the kickoff coming in from Thorrington. But weathered by Kingsley Reed. And it's a loose ball that's just behind the try scorer Horton and <laughs> Cardiff and Vale College will have a line out. Well, perhaps Bedford and Berkhamsted are the teams to beat in this group. Cardiff and Vale already off a loss, but in what's shaping up to be a tight group, a win here would really put them back on track and still keep things in their own hands in terms of progressing through to the next round of the competition. On the wraparound, they go, a big shot, putting them to deck, but then suddenly down the blind side, away goes Cummings. Cummings catches Bromsgrove unaware and they take the lead by one, two tries to one. Tom Hughes looks to nail his second conversion of the game. No luck this time. Well, I was watching Cardiff and Vale earlier on today when they took on Berkhamsted and uh, it looked closer and that 38-10 scoreline to Jess. It's a good pickup from Reese Cummings. And Hughes to kick off as well for Cardiff and Vale. This time not the cleanest of connections and uh, Bromsgrove will have a tap on the halfway. On to the 10. Ben Yeo. Regulation fly half for Bromsgrove. And they go through the hands to find Horton. Yeo. And it could open up for Bromsgrove down the left-hand side. Stead back across the face of the defence and a huge shot comes in from Hughes who drives Bromsgrove back past their own 10 metre but they are still in possession. Big Fen through the first contact. Still looking to create something, and there's the high press, but it hasn't worked for Cardiff and Vale because Collie is through. Offload, intercepted, and the high Adrian tackle as well on Crosser. Come on, side position. But uh, instead, it's a penalty. Offside. Tackle's been made, you can't come in. Well, Collie. Keep working, keep working. Through, but instead, Yeo. Finds Benson, the 9 and 10, creating on that right-hand side, and it will be a walk-in for Jack Gilbert. And from a good position, Neo will look to add the extras too. We've seen Bromsgrove in action this year on the 15s game. They're part of our coverage at rugby school. Neo and Benson have a great connection. At nine and ten, and that's uh, 
providing yeah. them with dividends here as well. Simple hands as they really stretched the Cardiff and Vale defence. From the Welsh capital, of course. Well, a missed conversion, unfortunately, means that Cardiff and Vale will still be two points up. Contested kickoff. Taking away the space, Falls into the hands of uh, just here. Bromsgrove, but instead it will be a penalty. Cardiffville will have to retake. Farrington straight through contact. Brought down by Horton, but a lovely offload. Still Horton driving on in the end. Little dummy with the offload. Cardiff and Vale in the ascendancy. Ben Borra swung to ground. Strong clear out. And Richards plays nine. Thorrington again Lance looks to pass forward. it through contact, but actually it's just forward. So Lance Bromsgrove come away with it. Big fend. Thorrington bumped up as well. Huge carrying from Bromsgrove. And it's created a bit of space out wide. Cutting back against the grain this time is Brendan Colley, who finds Benson, Horton. Surely Parsons is away here for Bromsgrove, and they will retake the lead. Half-time, gents. Well, on the stroke of half-time, deep into overtime, Bromsgrove go back out in front. With the kick to come, they lead by three. A really well worked counter attack. And at half time, they will hold a slender advantage over the Welsh side. Well, it came from a turnover in midfield and a big, strong carry through the centres before Collies break down the right hand side. They moved right to left, and Henry Parsons was in acres of space to run it in for Bromsgrove. And that puts them in front at the break by 15 to 12 in their first outing here at the Howard and Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Cardiff and Vale in their second game searching for their first win. We'll see if they can turn it back around here on RE2, live next. Not the kickoff that Cardiff and Vale needed at the start of this second half. Free kick on halfway for Bromsgrove School. There's the try scorer Parsons handing it off and Yeo through the hole and Yeo will saunter in. Great acceleration from the skipper. <laughs> Bromsgrove oh, extend good. their advantage to 20 points to 12 and surely Ben Yeo from here will convert two more. 
taking his time, unsuccessful so far. Regulation from the fly half this time. Perfect start for Bromsgrove. And so many options outside. The little show and go to deceive Kalen Hurley. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of afters from Hughes. Yeah, doesn't mind that one bit. And Parsons will kick off this time. A little bit deeper, cleanly taken by Charlie Connick. And into contact. Hurley. Good offload, but what a shot Advantage from Orton. Forward. And he's forced the turnover as well. Back come Bromsdrove, who counts in Ford. All the way wide to Parsons once again. Dummies on the switch. But suddenly there's a three on one and another show and go. This time by Benson. Horton, the pace merchant on the right hand side, steps inside and out. And Bromsgrove with a beautiful start to this second half. Another try for them. And all of a sudden it's 27 12. Bromsgrove have switched into second gear in their first game here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And this time a better strike and a, another set of points. 29-12. For Bromsgrove. Well, first it was Zio, this time Benson through the hole. Opted to use the pace of Horton, why wouldn't you? Well, a shorter kickoff this time. Advantage lock on. Just knocked on by no Bromsgrove. Forward, scrum down. Up went Jack Wilkinson. Not his game sevens, the second row necessarily. But uh, mobile enough for Bromsgrove Crouch. to utilise him here. Up quickly. Listen to the calls, keep the space, OK? Listen to the calls. Crouch! But we don't wish to get Bind. bogged down at scrum time Set. here. Neither do Cardiff and Vale. College. Straight down. Ball down. Who concede a penalty at scrum time? And uh, well, when it rains, it pours sometimes in the game of sevens. It's all going Bromsgrove's way, unfortunately, for Cardiff and Vale. Horton takes the offload. Parsons hands it off. Yeo. Interception and Cardiff and Vale. Are right, they tackle. And they win Let's the penalty advantage. Hack through. My tackle, number two, you're in front. Can't play the advantage. Well, Thorrington with a good read, although he was clearly offside. My tackle. May have attributed some of Reese Cummings' behaviour on the ball now to Thorrington in the first half. Apologies for that. Holmes goes over the ball and they have turned it over. Cardiff and Vale just unable to string together the phases. Keep working, keep working. Once again, it's Bromsgrove in attack. Toby Lewis checks back. But Townsend Ford brought to ground. We've got Bromsgrove backpedalling here. Still in possession, Horton on the switch. Dragged down by Cummings. Osborne takes the direct route, but the ball is spilled. Pops up safely into the hands of Hastings. Who throws a loose pass, but it's regathered by Wilkinson. Osborne there again. Checks back and puts in the kick in behind, and there's plenty of players on the chase for Bromsgrove. But Cardiff and Vale will win the race through Morgan Prosser freshly onto the field, looking to break through the contact. Little show and go by Hurley. Flicks it out the back, and now there's an overlap. Cummings, patient. But not this time as they take it to the line. Borra throws the offload. Hughes is in. Perhaps a little bit too late for Cardiff and Vale. 
Well, they've still got over a minute to go here. Yeah, it's fine. We'll do kick and then time off, OK? Again, just give him some space. Well, Hughes will look to add his own extras here. Cut the gap to 10. No. Good support play from Tom Hughes. Time off. does pierce the uprights. Injury. We'll have time off. There's a man down for Broms Grove. Couple of nice offloads in there. Hurley with one. And then Hurley involved again. Puts Ben Borrow through a hole. This is a lovely offload. Good awareness and a good line by Hughes. Looking ahead to our next game then. Ten points in it here. But Denston College take on Myers Cough. We had a really good tournament last year. But unfortunately, in a group with both Eton and Sedbur, as well as Blundell, what a group this is. Group I, an absolute death penalty for any side drawn alongside Sedbur, Eton and Blundells. But Eton did lose 33 0 to Blundells in the first game. Myers Cough. Had it handed to them by Sedba, 45-14. This Denston's first game. Time off, let's get the ball, please. It's Myerskoff, oh, who have already been defeated, but, well, no shame losing to Sedba in reduced format. Next Gen will be there at the Sedba 10s as well this weekend. After the conclusion of Roslyn, Gilbert bumps off a couple of players. They all want a piece of Gilbert. No afters, no afters, leave it. And a ball over the top, beautifully weighted by Lewis, has got Bromsgrove once again in behind with Colley. Who's still driving on Colley. He's only yeah, a few inches now, short. On the wrong side. And Lewis at nine. Osborne. Townsend Ford. Gilbert. Horton with acres of space. And that will seal it. Full time, gents. Final action of the game is Bromsgrove crossing the white line for a sixth time great start for their tournament time just on me and we look ahead to uh, further action in the under 18s competition but, and the conclusion of this game it's Bromsgrove off to a winning start as Cardiff and Vale take taste defeat for the second time, their tournament surely over, as is the ruthless nature of Roslyn Park. Bromsgrove look ahead to some big games against the likes of Berkhamstead in their group. But our next fixture live on RE2, Denston College up against Myerskov College in what promises to be a fascinating encounter can anyone top Sedbar off in this group, of course? They're the side to topple. But for now, Denston will begin their tournament live here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens in the Under-18 Cup competition. Well, Denston College take on Myerskoff here. Myerskoff to kick off. 
It's a big shot to get things going. Great aggression for Myers Koff. Accidental. Not on. Just not man. on on the floor, but uh, well. Just accidental. Yeah, it's a scrum. That's the first action of uh, Denston's it's tournament. Play on to his own man. He can't be, by the way. <laughs> and it will be a scrum for Myers Koff. Okay. Good. Okay, crouch. <laughs> Boyd. Sit. Well, from the scrum, Denston do play away. Knock on. But it's been knocked on, an unforced error. Not one uh, you'd like to give away against this Myerskoff team, littered sure. with uh, academy players and a couple of internationals, would you believe it? For the Isle of Man, that is. A couple going, of mate? Dutchmen as well, okay. a good mix in this Myerskoff squad. Crouch. Anna Gravitas alongside me for the first Boys. time today. How are you, Anna? Yeah, very well, thank Set. you. Excited to be back. Well, we I was talking earlier about the uh, state of this group, Anna. I'll let you know just how unbelievably difficult it is once we have a conclusion to this Myerskoff attack. And Senior, the captain with the first carry. Let him go now. A loose pass. Okay. Fad two knock ons. First off, White. And off two red. knock ons. The first one off Denston. So Myerskoff will have another attack. But yeah. this group includes Eaton, Sedba, Blundells, and then the two on field, Denston yeah, right. and Myerskoff. Can you well, have tougher to competition in one group here at Roslyn Park? I don't know, that seems like a ridiculously okay. tough uh, group. So we'll see who comes out on top there. Boys. Blundells started off with a 33 win over Set. Eaton, which is a really impressive result. This Myerskoff side, Backwards. pretty dominant so far. Lost to Sedba by 45 points to 14, but it could be Denston with the fastest start. It was hacked forward by Harrison Eaton, and he will score. Well, a Get the ball. clearance kick on the volley, okay. but hasn't it borne fruit for Denston, Anna? What a start for them. Yeah, brilliant. I think it's a brilliant pickup for him to then stride ahead and dot that down. Well, it was just wait for him. aimlessly hacked forward, really, just to clear the lines, but great effort from Eaton there. And it will be a kick-off for Denston as well. Taken by the captain, Senior. Reliable hands, and then flicked on by Campbell, number two. On, a loose ball, and now Denston will look advantage to counter. Owusu on the outside. Awusu puts in the fence, skips through the contact, and will score. Now, the Awusu brothers of Denston well. College are two seriously impressive forwards Six, stay in the uh, 15s game. Six white. Shown they can do just it on a reduced format the as well. Thank you. Just regather the And ball. it's a pretty okay. strong start for Denston College, Anna. Yeah, they'll be really happy with that. Especially in the first three, four minutes to get two tries. Brilliant yeah. effort. And they haven't spent a lot of time in Myerskoff's college half, but uh, perhaps their heads down a little following that opening game loss, whereas Denston yet to play the fresher of the sides. Well, Ricky Awusu with the first. We'll see action from Rick Awusu later, of course. Not particularly creative names, but seriously impressive rugby players, Alan. Oh, we just end up with yeah. completely dead time for ages. Brilliant strength there, just to hand them off, hand them off, and then get to the line. Timing. Thank you. Another kick off to come then. And this one is hung high into the overcast off, sky, and it's been tapped backwards by Myerskoff in the mind of the referee. Yeah. yeah, first man. But stolen by Campbell. A little show and go oh, as well, the hooker. And away, why? Strong carry. Still in. A bit of possession for Myers. Good on the offside. He would need a victory here to keep any chance Tackle. of their tournament alive in the cup competition. Just lost forwards. Loose ball knocked on, and 
Denson keeping Myerskoff contained here, Anna. Yeah, definitely. I think okay. just that kickoff from Form the start has been has been Strong so good, good so in this game. I think they've just got it nice and high and just at that 10 metre line, which has been brilliant for them to win the ball back again. Okay. The try Crouch. scorer, Eaton, with the feet. Point. Harrison Eaton, Set. who will be taking on Eaton himself, Eaton College, that is, when these two sides meet in the final round of group fixtures here. Straight away in they touch. attack in the wide channel, but it's into touch. It's in touch. It's a line out. Line out then for Sorry, Myers Koff, but Denston okay. looked threatening at you. every phase, Anna. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's defense there. On getting it out there to, onto the wing, had two brilliant That's steps, defense, and I thought he might go all the Thank way, you. but just unlucky to go just into touch. In the middle. Make it credibly in the middle. Myers Koff, move. As we this way. encroach upon the end Hooker. of the first half. Hooker. Myers Koff. I'm saying move this way, move, you've got to be in the middle. Trail <laughs> by in. two tries. You're like directly, in, he's directly in line with you. He's got unhappy the with the feed of the line yeah, out okay. from Warhurst okay. of middle the Sharks of the Academy. Hooker, move in. Move, thank you. Just wait there. Well, this time it's lifted offside, and there's an offside in midfield. Free ball then for Myerskoff as Mayer Advantage over. the line and Mayer was just the sweep of the beat and he does evade the tackle. Will he go all the way? Eaton tackle with complete. a big covering tackle. A Wusu there to disrupt at the breakdown, but it's Eaton Holding. himself with a turnover. What a back. big first half for Harrison Eaton. Open Wait, the scoring. Not advantage. And then excellent work to turn it over, Anna. Yeah, brilliant. Denton will be super advantage happy over. they've managed to get that covering tackle. And suddenly there might be something on in the wide channel. The little Traveller kicked through this time. And then hacked Tied on up. at the second time of asking by Smith. And Smith will Backwards. look to regather. Backwards okay. in the end. Playing the ball on the 4, 22. But a penalty, unfortunately, Last against side. Dom Smith. But a breathless period of play, Anna. Yeah, I think this game is going to be so o has been so open so far. And I think there's like. a lot more points to be had in the second half. Time is up, fellas. Well, that's time for the first half. Myerskoff will look to attack. And, well, Denston have been caught unawares there. There's a huge overlap on the left-hand side. Rich. It just rockets off the yeah. head of Awusu <laughs> to end the first end half. half. Well, he didn't know very much about that, Ricky Awusu, but he has uh, brought an end to that first half. Half-time, then. Denston College lead by 10 points. Myerskoff have come close at times, but as yet unable to cross the white line of Denston College, who in their opening game at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens under 18 Cup currently lead by two unanswered scores. We'll be back for the second half shortly here on RE2.
second half them. And uh, they might not be the biggest names in this group. Hi. But Denston and Myerscroft will be looking to cause an upset and qualify out of this incredibly tight Group I. At the moment, it's Denston with a two-try advantage, but a good ball from Campbell out to the left. Might get things going. Holding. Turnover by okay. Owusu of okay. the Rick variety this back time. There, back there, back fresh onto the field. About 10 metres, fellas. Keep going, He's keep won going. a penalty. A great start for him, Anna. Advantage, yeah, brilliant 10. start. Denson were really happy with that turnover, and it looks like they might go on to score from it. Well, they did have the penalty Not advantage. 10. Smith just go. glided about into a hole. Owusu was there in support. It's still Denston play, a hard carry yeah. up the jumper by uh, Ollie on. Makepeace. And skipping away is Smith. Play on. The ball is loose Whoa. and hacked okay. away by Myerskoff. And it might bounce kindly for them here. Let on the go. volley, Let there's another. But uh, brought down Backwards. by Denston. The referee wave play on. So Liam Schoen on the cover. And Liam Schoen with a hard carry down Away. a dark alley with no lampshade there. Awusu, good ball out of contact though to keep Denston flowing and there's nothing but green grass in front of Charles Worthington who will be ushered into the corner by Corlett. And Denston have another. Well, some big shots in from Myerskoff there, but Denston kept the ball alive yeah, well, Anna. Ball. Yeah, it's been so physical in the second half Denston, already. Sub. And I think Myerskoff will be quite upset to not have scored because they've had a few chances and they just probably haven't converted as well as they'd have liked to. Denston three Ten up seconds, then. Yeah. Tough kick for uh, the try scorer Worthington. Yeah. And. Uh, well, closer to going out yeah. for in touch than over the post. Off me, I'm in line. There's a great offload from Awusu. Who took Campbell out of the game and then a well executed two on one. But Worthington looks pretty knackered You're after that run to the line. Timing, lads. He'll still take the kick off for Denston. A great take off the kickoff, under pressure from Makepeace. And Campbell keeps alive Tackle, with a physical away. carry. Ball's gone. Flying through the breakdown. There you go, leave Denston, it, you two, leave it. It will break here for Myerskoff and Dobson of the Midlands Academy has got just the sweeper to beat. He'll take him on the outside. Good tackle by Worthington. No Myerskoff now, beautiful out the back door to put Senior Leave away. It. And Myerskoff will get on the board. Right, fellas, next one who does anything off the ball is penalty but yellow that's card. That's a lovely no offload to free up the space and put Senior away. Yeah, Myerskoff will be really happy with that. I think there, there's some gaps and some dents in defence through the middle and they've really executed that brilliantly fault, and lads. deserved it for the try. Well, it was a good break by... Dobson. But how about this for an offload? Just perfect from Cohen, the Dutchman. Substitute coming on. Three minutes. Scores 15 7. I think there's actually two points of the conversion of a super key here as well. Still need two scores Backwards. against this Denston side. Ball back. Have looked on top overall in this Bad game, man. but a great turnover by the skipper. And then another yeah. at the breakdown. A Wusu this time comes yeah. away with it. But a loose pass to make peace, advantage. and Campbell latches on it. It's really scrappy at the moment, but senior on the turn. A Wusu on the cover lifts the, the offload, over. but the advantage was over. So back comes make peace. Finally, Denston with ball in hand and a bit of respite, perhaps. Benson. Awusu has been everywhere Backwards. on the attack and the defence. Taken back. Although there are two of them, in fairness. <laughs> well, fired into the hands of uh, all backwards. Kwang Hodges Forward. with a good take, but in the end, it's knocked on and Myers have minutes. it back. Here we go, form up, let's go. Both teams in. 
Wanawusu in the breakdown, and then the next one on the covering tackle. They'll be key to anything Denston do today, having those two flankers in defence. A couple more metres, please. Maya Scott will be looking to score here uh, as early Thank as quickly and early and Crouch. as early and as quickly as possible. So they can get another go at it. Set. Hamer with the feed. It's backwards. Dropped off first receiver, but only backwards by uh, Make Peace. Not to be confused with the number eight from Denston, and suddenly they could be away. <laughs> and Cohen, who set up the first. Scores the second, the Flying Dutchman down that right-hand side. Myersko, why don't you stay behind? Puts well, and scores well a great try. And Myersko, right back in the game, you kill Alan. It. One of you down there. Re collect the ball. One minute. There's one minute, says the ref. Well, the kickoff is short, but it won't matter. Myersko need another score. What a tense finish this is, Anna. Scores 15 yeah, it Looks 12. like there's some ridiculously tired bodies out there as well. It's been such an end-to-end -end game. Another out the back door. And Cohen yes! dissected the Awusu brothers. And is through to score. 25 seconds. Cohen enjoying a little Awusu sandwich there. Although it would be a Cohen Backwards. sandwich, as the Awusus <laughs> would be the bread, in fairness. And here's another Awusu making yardage down that left-hand side. Make peace in support. Advantage. Well, there's plenty of numbers over on advantage the right. Over. If Denston can use them. And they found the other Awusu on the edge. That's Rick fun. this time to seal the game for Denston. <laughs> and Myerskoff came awfully close to a great comeback here, but in Bonus the end... Denson will take victory from their first game You've here. Got seconds, it's in line the with Holden me. Roslyn Park Take National line, School Sevens, Anna. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be really happy to have just seen that game out. It did but get a bit time. tense for them at the end there, but they'll be happy to score then. Well, back goes Jed Benson. Regulation fly half <laughs> for Denson College to add well, the fine. extras. And the big question will be, who can challenge Sedba in this group? Cheers. Will it be Blundells? Will it be Denson? We'll find out later in the afternoon. Right. But they're off to the Cheers. perfect start. Right. A win here we against Myerskoff College. Yeah. But the action continues yeah. in the under-18s cup competition. And what a huge game Thank we you. have Cheers. for you. Well, well, Kirkham Grammar School, finalists in the National Cup at under-15 level take on Hartbury College, of course, a direct link to that Super Bucks University. A huge game here on RE2 in Group L of the under-18s Boys Cup competition. That's next, live at the Howard and Rosling Park National School Sevens. Well, it's a big game, and of course, who'd you bring along for the big occasion? Bristol University first team player, James Barry. Welcome to the Roslyn Park Sevens, James. Thank you very much for having me, Wilfred. I'm very keen to get stuck into this very good game. Well, it's uh, Kirkham Grammar School up against Hartbury College. Two serious rugby playing teams, and uh, just can't wait to see what they have to offer. 
Hartbury College already off to a flying start. They beat Exeter College in a clash of the ace league teams in their opening game. But uh, Kirkham yet to feature this their first game. Also, Brighton College in the group, so some serious pedigree, James, across this cup competition, and especially this Group L. For sure, I mean, Kirkham, of course, I know that since, since they had a, a very successful tournament at St. Joseph's, didn't they? Um, Indeed, Harbury, the wins of there. Course, Harbury, of course, very good ace college, full of, full of potential there. But it's Kirkham who might get off to the fastest start, <laughs> carried into Go contact. Ah! by Harrison Causey, but it's a big penalty decision, so not 10 from Hartbury, flicked out the back door, uh, open go. try. What a fast start for Kirk and James. Brilliant start, that. Applying pressure from the, from the off. And they do have the first try. Hartbury lucky, to be honest, that Kirkham scored. Could have seen a yellow for not retreating the required 10 metres. But the perfect start for Kirkham Grammar School. A devastating loss, really, in that cup final to Harrow, the two best teams in the country at 15's level, no doubt about that. But from the penalty, quick tap by Sam Hewton, who played fly half at Twickenham, and how about that for an offload? But Causey away. Brilliant try. <clears throat> A perfectly deep. weighted kick. And there is a hand in there from Kirkham, but it's forward, so oh, it. Hartbury College almost through the hole. Well, it's uh, fly half Sam Lutus, of course. Oh, strong forward. A big, strong carry, that is, from Fitzpatrick of the Midlands West Under-18 Academy. Only a uh, lower six student, a year 12. Plenty of... Young faces in this Hartbury team. It's almost entirely year 12s, in fact. So imagine how good they'll be next year at the Howard and Roslyn Park National School 7s. But they're on the offensive here. Lovely footwork. Brilliant. But it re a good tackle there from Holtz. And the penalty for side entry. And you were saying, James, really good defence from Kirkham. Brilliant, yeah. But here they go on the short side. Well, they have found an overlap, and it... Eventually wrapped up is uh, Cam Blamey. Lutus finds Holtz at first receiver. All the way to that wide channel they go. Bumped off oh. big time. Out the back door, Holtz still driving Kirkham onwards. Lutus, quick oh. offload, Casey. And now on this oh, left-hand side. Brilliant. In and out step from Casey, brilliant. Well, it's Sebi Krippner in the end with a great Krippner. score. Well, Krippner with the score, and there's some lovely footwork you were saying, James. Brilliant. Down that short side, out and in. Remind me of my friend, actually, Charlie Beckett. Let's shout out to him, UBRFC legend. <laughs> now playing, of course, over in Ireland for Queens. Great showcase of some footwork there from, from the young man. And what Krippner. a kick that is as well. It Brilliant. Had the legs, but just not the distance. Let's have another look at this try. It's Casey the try school with the final ball, but first he bumped someone up, Krippner, freed up the hands, and when it came back to him on the left-hand side. In and out, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. Puts a man to deck as well. And Hartbury College, who've already taken a victory away from this tough group. Tulto includes Brighton College, St. Benedict School and Exeter College are two tries behind in the first half and yet as so far to cross Backwards. into Kirkham's half that's how well marshalled they've been by this Kirkham side Ooh. and the looking to break but Brilliant it's defense. just been spilled by Jack Thomas of Gloucester and this Kirkham defence yet to give up an inch James I know that defence on the wing there was very clutch from I'm not sure which number it was but just walking towards us now. I think it might have been the try score. Yeah, the try score, by Sebi Krippner again. Brilliant. He's having a great game. Great first half. Boys, I want to see more Holtz with the feed then. Again. Lutus at first right. receiver. Crutch. That's James Stacey Boys. at 13. 
And Krippner outside, set. a threatening back line. See if they've got any set move off this, they will. Same tunnel. It hasn't gone out yet. Reset. And we will have a reset the hasn't gone out yet. at the scrum. But James, how are you finding the Roslyn Park 7 so far, this massive event? It's been brilliant. I remember playing here Crutch. when I was younger for Tunbridge School, who are actually here Point. today, so shout out to them. Um, set. But yeah, I mean, so, so many people are just sitting up here in the commentary tower. You can see how vast it is and just so excited, to be honest, for tomorrow to see all the finals as well. Well, Hulse on the wraparound. Does well to free up the ball. Went for the dummy kick there. Nice move, that. Stacey puts the hammer down. Still Kirkham. Relentless in their play. Good step, almost away. Hartbury College, hang on. Lofted ball, a bit too wide for Krippner. Great work but from Krippner. What recovery, stepping once again through the tackles. Dragged down in the end by Elias Dean Smith. Flashed across the face by Causey. Brilliant step, great feet. Hard line by Smith, who's still going Smith. Causey there in support. Showcasing a bit more hot stepper from, from Smith there. That's brilliant. The try score in that national final against Harrow, but there's a knock-on advantage. And Dean Smith... Offside. Well, it's a penalty advantage, in fact, for offside. And Hartbury College, James, in this closing stage of the first half, really need to get something on the board, because they haven't yeah. yet crossed the halfway line. Good scramble defence, but Kirk at the moment are just looking quick. The speed of ball, the handling's looking brilliant. Well, that's a really good kick that for the first time in the game we'll see Hartbury have possession in Kirkham's half which for seven minutes of sevens is pretty remarkable James it is indeed testament to their fitness as well Kirkham to keep going itch, guys, itch. about a week and a day since that big cup final You're good here. it will be Hartbury line out <coughs> Moulton the target <laughs> Not straight, was it? Great. Well, Geely's ball in. Part of the Bristol Bears Academy, line but line not straight from the line out. And line Kirkham choose the line out instead of the scrum, James. That's uh, for me personally, I really like that option. Being a big line out north myself. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Up go Kirkham. Nice and simple. Ooh. And they will bring an end to the first half, happy to take their 10-point advantage into the break. And what's most impressive is that Hartbury Collive have yet to have a single attacking set inside Kirkham Grammar School's half. So impressive defence, James. Can they keep it up in the second half? That is a pretty strong feat from Kirkham. Uh, obviously, big boys, strong, quick, and in attack especially. Very, uh, speed of ball is brilliant. Kripner had... A Brilliant first half, I think you'd agree with. Um, but yeah, let's, 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 let's see how the second one goes. Well, James, here we are then, and you were just saying how much you enjoy the commentary space that we have here. Indeed. It's my first, it's my first uh, experience of this, and obviously being a good friend of Will from <laughs> university, I know that he, he, he spends a lot of time with, uh, with Next Gen and doing a lot of commentary, and yeah, I mean, it's brilliant. Like, seeing up here, you've got the best view, so what, what's not to like? Absolutely, and uh, <laughs> we'll comment on the game itself as well, James. What do Hartbury need to do? to change their fortunes. They've just yet to really threaten Kirkham in any serious way. I think Hartbury just need to, to open the game up a little bit, get a bit of ball, get in Kirkham's half in, in the second half and then and do what they do best. They're quick team, strong wingers. So, yeah, here we go. Well, we'll return to the action with a Hartbury College kickoff and it will be uh, Geely as well of the Bristol Bears to get things underway. Hartby trail by two unanswered tries, and from the kickoff, well it's a gathered. beautiful cake by Knight. Another one from Gloucester. 
and suddenly injecting some pace into the attack for the very first time. Table. Table. Brilliant rip again Table. from Kripner, I think. Well, Semi Kripner yeah, has control of this game, rips it into touch to put an end to the attack, but better from Hartbury already, James. Indeed, Will. More space, please. Seeing, yeah, more space. seeing some promising more signs space. there. More space. Yeah, let's go. See what comes from this lineup. Moulton will be the target again. Well taken. Oh, a big gap there. Rogelio on the wraparound, teasing the defence. And then a lofty pass. Kripner? No, he cannot. Wow, what a collision. Morgan of the Dragons. Stolen. Taking contact, but stolen on the ground by Kirkham. And Kripner does it again, James. He's just been absolutely immense. He's a big boy for an 18-year-old. 17-year-old, isn't he? Lower sick. What a performance by uh, Kripner. He might be 18. I think he is now in his is final 18, year. Yeah, he's played okay. a lot of rugby for Kirkham over the years. But he's having a, the game of his life in terms of the sevens format, at least. Indeed. But uh, unforced error. Yeah, Big sure. opportunity for Hartbury. Scrum on the 22, James. They've really got to create something here. Coach! This needs to be a try for me, Will. Point! Set! Lots of space down this blind side for that nine, but he doesn't go for it. <laughs> Geely instead opens it up to find Harris. Thomas. Wild. Hands it off to Morgan of the Dragons. But blind on the side. short side they go. Kripner over the ball, leaves it this time. To Gordon Asprey, actually, it is. At 22 oh. and put down. Kirkham's defence has just been brilliant. They're up in their face. They're covering the width. Making it really tough for Harbury to find a try here. And it will result in a turnover in possession and an end to that period of attack for Harbury. Well, Harbury College's uh, women's side, part of that specialist ace competition in the women's format. Coach! Will be in action Point. later on RE2, I believe. Set! But at the moment, they're uh, men's side trail and Hulst as well to get it away. And here is Kripner. Here's the danger, man. Well, bursting through the tackles over the gain line. Ruben Gordon Asprey affects the turnover. Morning. Crucial turnover from, from Gordon yeah. Asley. Asbury. And now here come the red shirts of Hartbury College. Just a Brilliant big fend in there from oh, Williams. Williams might go all the Under way. The that, that is exactly what Hartbury needed. Henry Williams of the Midlands West, one of the senior players in this side, littered with lower sixth graduates has just scored a beautiful try and he says I'm off James that's all he needed to do what a carry by Williams brilliant carry see Will first that, that's testament to how and sometimes in sevens you just need to truck it up <laughs> as well I'm sure you, you you'd be a big fan of doing in a sevens tournament my friend well I'm afraid that past the under 16s I didn't make the cut for St Joseph's College we'll be action on RE1 later at 40 minutes past one but here on RE2, it's Kirkham looking to respond. They've been under pressure for the whole half, but oh, a great offload just put out. down by Tomlinson. And suddenly Dean Smith is on the break. Dean Smith looks like he could be a very elusive one runner, Will. I want to, want to see him in some space. Elias Dean Smith, another one of the Midlands West, another one of the uh, year 13s in this side. In fact, he's one of the only two leavers in this Hartbury College side. The rest will all be back next year. That's an interesting thought. Point. Already looking ahead to next year's tournament. Set. But we'll stay focused on the here and the now, as Hartbury could look to turn this game around, and this would be a statement victory against Kirkham. Ooh, wow. With all their dominance in the first half, it's chipped through. Bounce hasn't quite worked for Hartbury there, but well gathered by Kirkham. Well, it is well gathered Back. by Harry Tomlinson. And Hulse will hack it away. Brilliant kick in the end. Well, it's a great kick and... Uh, and it's just going to sit by the touchline. Really excellent kick and Hulse with a great chase as well. In goes the fend from Williams. Great effort from Hulse to chase his own kick. 
Geely. Well, Elias Dean Smith over the ball. Harris, Geely. Short line oh, through the hole. And there's nobody home for Kirkham. So Hartbury College will take the lead. Win Knight, the scorer, the Gloucester man, with just a minute to go here. One minute. Puts Hartbury in front. Can you believe it, James? What a turnaround in the second half. Brilliant. I think they've got to, got to give a shout out to Harris, uh, Liam Harris. Kick, the ability yeah. to pull the strings in the second half have been brilliant. How Putting a big guy through holes. Exactly what he's meant to be doing. Well, there's two number nines on the field, so it was Geely or Harris, also 213. So that first try was Williams or Caswell. We're just committing <laughs> to, uh, to a name here in the hopes that it will go One on minute. his highlight reel. One minute. One but that was certainly win night go, for Gloucester, go. who picked a great line. And it was great instruction, as you said, from Harris there to pull him into the fray. Now, Harper really going to want to regain this kickoff here. Fawley, and it's the perfect oh, outcome no. kick. for Kirkham Grammar. Kick. Well, they've Miscommunication got, there, I think, Will. They've got perhaps one more it's attack, last table, last and Tomlinson day. will get us underway. Here is Hulse. Oh, Good love. line speed, but in fact, it's a hole that's been found by Kirkham, and they're over the gain line. Tomlinson shows and goes into a crowd of red shirts. Here is, oh, here he is. the main man, he is. Kripner, bursting through the tackles. Oh, wow. Savvy Kripner, on he goes. Well, there's no one over the ball for Hartbury. They're just lying on top of the man. Tomlinson, what a kick. Brilliant. Will it fall for Kirkham? Wow. They will take the game. Goodness me. Stacey has the winner, but that. that kick from the number seven, Harry Tomlinson. Well, what a beautifully weighted nudge. And I won't take that try away from That's Alex that. Smith. What a brilliant end to the game, eh, Will? Can't ask for more than that than Kirkham. No, why well, Hulse will kick wide, but it won't matter. They take a huge victory out of their first game. Hartbury will not do the double from their first two fixtures. Kirkham win it in the final play by a single point. And have a look at this try. What a brilliant game. And this kick here, just wonderful. And it is Stacey who scores. Great anticipation. What a fixture that was, eh, Wilfred? A perfect game for Kirkham's first appearance on RE2. Certainly challengers if they can get out of this very difficult group. They may have just seen off the best team in it besides themselves. Thank you very much for being with us, James. We'll maybe hear from you a bit later on. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Wilfred. And, yeah. and the coverage will continue here as Abingdon School are back on RE2 to take on Seaford. Both sides looking for their first win of the competition so far. Jack Zara have to take you through the next four fixtures live here on RE2 at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Thank you very much, Wolf Kemsley. Great to have your company, everybody, after that thriller. Kirkham at the death against Hartbury University and Hartbury College. So we're up next now into the second round matches for both Seaford College and Abingdon School. And hello to you as well, one of the smaller spectators pitch side. And on a leash because dogs can run free at Roslyn Park and cause all manner of havoc. We know because we had a dog in the commentary box yesterday. It was my dog and uh, she was exceptionally well behaved. And everyone out there on the uh, Wimbledon Common today though, fewer dogs, more rugby balls. And we are back to the action with Seaford College against Abingdon School. So today for this commentary from Abingdon School, we have uh, Will Howitt, uh, a sixth former there. And Will, you're working with us on Next Gem for the next two days. Great to have your insights onto the boys in pink up against Seaford College here. They obviously had a, a tough old start in their first match today against Harrow School, 45 points to nil down. Um, have you spoken to the boys? What's their frame of mind going into this one? 
Yeah, good afternoon, Jack. Good afternoon, everybody. I was speaking to uh, Daniel Wittenbury on the ball there, Jim Allen, Ted Carter. I think there are positives to take from the game. You know, Harrow are obviously the best schoolboy team, everyone's favourite to win here, uh, and they did score a try in their last game. And here they go, Abington off and running early against Seaford. And straight in, under the sticks, for Abingdon's number 15, Barney Church. Brilliant from Barney, newly elected chairman of school council, no less. And uh, takes it under the post. Those are the kind of insights uh, we're here for, Will. Lovely stuff. New man on the council and uh, new man on the score sheet for Abingdon. This is a good friend, isn't it? Good power from Church. It's for confidence they needed, actually. I think, you know, game one would have been a very hard game for them. Uh, psychologically. Game two, they got over the hurdle of not scoring any points so far. They got the seven points. What a way to start the match. Less than a minute in. You know, the uh, coverage comes even thicker and faster than uh, I thought because Abingdon, you're right, playing their third game of the day now, having lost a colleague of Kamoy in their second match. This is their number three for Abingdon. Getting to see them again. And they're looking more and more connected today. Jacob Wilkins on that last carry. Now Johnny Nocta, lovely pass, but the defence is good Two from Seaford. It's positive rugby, attacking rugby, a much different Abingdon. From the Seaford perspective, their results to this point, they lost their first match to the Bishop One Church of England school, and that's been their only match, so they've only had one game in the book so far, and a 10-point loss. So they really need to win this one if they are to have any hope of going through this group and getting to day two. This is a nice break down the blind side. Lovely tap tackle, though he keeps his feet brilliantly. Ball back on the inside. Big fend in there. The tackling is good. So too the support. Sifa going to run this home, but only just. And they switched off there, Abin, and I think they thought he got the tackle in. And perhaps, you know, just one loss of a step slows you down led to the try but it's defenses that win you matches you know I've been I've been finding myself around the pitches today RE1 RE2 and there was a game earlier I'm gonna be honest can't remember the team, there was a try saving tackle and they went on the other end and scored defenses are what win you matches so here for Seaford this was a wonderful tap tackle Sean Sharp it was who kept his feet though ball back on the inside and that was uh, Liam Boyle and then the try scored in the end by Christian Cheesley. When you're ready. So Seaford on the board, Abingdon on the board. We're all set in this third group game of the day for Abingdon. And what power brought onto Backwards. the field by Daniel Winterberry. And then lost on the floor. Daniel Wintonberry, excuse me. Wittenbury. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Yeah, we've been saying that one all, all day. Uh, incorrectly, apologies uh, to Daniel. We know Charlie Atkinson comes from your neck of the woods, uh, Will. How is the rugby program these days, and how much of a big deal is it at the school? It's our number one sport. I think we've had a difficult year this year. Um, injuries, no less. Just today, Zach Broad, first 15 captain, he's on the sidelines watching. Uh, our star player, Ollie Thompson, he's out with illness just yesterday. And it's, you know, we've been done by injuries. The Colts, under 16, they look really promising. Obviously, they were here yesterday. Leave it blue! Fantastic fantastic players, very unlucky. Not going to over. In the dying minutes. Injuries so often play a, a massive role in Roslyn Parks. Particularly after day one, some teams can tear up and then an injury overnight. T day two becomes so much harder. I'm oh, sorry to hear about uh, those before even day one for Abingdon School. This is in behind and Seaford going back. Really flourishing rugby school, Seaford College. Have been for, for a long, long time actually, but none more so than these days. And that was hacked clear. I think it was touch, Sean Sharp who was going down the left-hand side. Quinn's under-18 player is the number quick. nine for Seaford. Then James Wall Morris, yeah, number 14, he's it. complaining about something. Possibly something he went fine. into touch. I'm not sure. It's quite hard to tell from here. Well, we are positioned on the halfway line. 
in the Channel 9. The camera view that we see just then is uh, our view. Line out from Seaford, just about keeping the ball. Ducking back, lovely pass over the top. That was smartly done. Abington having to stay very alert here. There's an overlap of four Seaford players on the left-hand side, and they're going to pass this in and step their way through for try number two. And they'll take the lead with it. Well, it's what you can find in seven sometimes for gaps in the defence. You know, obviously, in Union, you've got 15 players. So, say, possibly, you know, seven in that back line. In sevens, you have seven. If three of them are out the game, it's a, it's a five on four, as we saw. And once one team has a man advantage, it's very difficult to go and get the ball back. Conversion was good. And try from Alex Ford after some smart offloading from Von Hess. This is big Von Hess with the uh, mullet at the back. And then Ford, nice step on the end. I wonder how much the lack of game time uh, for Seaford played a part in the opening minutes. Because obviously Abingdon have had you know, two 14-minute games. Seaford have had a long time since their first match. It's sort of taken them a while to get into shape. That's a good point there, Will. Abington certainly looking so much more in the mood in attack. And this is a race for the line now all the way across Wimbledon Common. Comes the cover defence. But you just can't stop Jim Allen. But Allen clatters the post with the, with the conversion. And that means Abingdon don't take the lead. Every point matters in Roslyn Park. I really hope that doesn't come back to bite him. Wonderful run by Jim. You know, let's focus on the positives. Incredible run by him. The club captain of the overarching club. Um, you can hear, you can hear it's panting, it's tired. Everyone's tired. All tied up then between Seaford and Abingdon as uh, that tiredness sets in. Last play of the first half. And we're in, yeah, game three. You mentioned freshness, but also tiredness more for Abingdon um, with that extra game. Well, last chance for points before. Over there, your mark, lads. The first half rings out. Jago Dyer taps and goes. Jacob Reload, he's on man this way. Will be Johnny. passes to the right hand side. Now the switch on the edge. Big flinged pass over to the left hand side. Knocked out. Now Wilkins. Jacob Wilkins flares his nostrils in the wide right channel and does storm in for Abingdon to take the lead. Wonderful Thunderous, run. wasn't it? Exactly, pace, power, that's what he's about, Jacob. I've been with their attacking rugby. It's what we mentioned earlier, actually. You see a lot of teams come here and be, try and be a bit too conservative, I think, actually. And they sort of think 40 minutes, not very long, maybe you can sort of get that point advantage. If you go and play looking to score, you may concede. We've seen they've conceded two tries, 12 points, but you, you know, the goal of the game at the end of the day is outscore your opponents. It doesn't matter how you do it, just that you do it. Tell us a bit about Jacob here as we see this, this run in. Uh, well, what, what sort of a bloke is he like? What sort of a player is he like? Well, he's obviously a big guy. You don't need me to tell you that. You can, you can see that. But in that, he's a, he's a very friendly man, actually, Jacob, and he, he comes across very well. Uh, but on the field, he is a different player. You know, it's very much pace, very much power, which he, which he has, you know, in unbelievable amounts. So Abingdon at half time, 19 points to 12. And Will, if you just um, step a bit closer to me, we're going to say hi to everyone at Abingdon School. Uh, here we are with Will on the commentary box. Is it working spirit? Technically working here? What is it a busman's holiday? You're just skyping from school. Well, it depends how well I do. I might get a full time job. Who knows? There but, we go. Yeah, work experience. Um, hello to everyone at school if you're watching. Uh, hello to you at Seaford as well. Um, uh, and if anyone is down from Seaford, then, uh, you know, poke your head into our commentary box we're on re2 uh, be great to have your thoughts as well on the live stream but but will um abingdon that uh the pink jerseys explain to us about the pink jerseys are traditional colors is that has it always been that way well we normally wear cerise and white hoops which is sort of like a light pink. so you would have seen our, our football hockey 
uh, rugby, even the rowing, where these pink and white hoops. For sevens, we slightly change it. It's almost like a sort of pink kit where, where half of it's been stripped off by a plaster. Okay. But it's a, it's a unique colour. I think you see so many teams in sort of red and white. Or pink. <laughs> yeah, that's a, di a direct call out to you, Taunton School. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of hoops going on. Yeah, um, no, no, we, we respect that. We, we respect the uh, the tournament, the tournament school hoops, but that's a traditional style, of course. And, and yeah, I like uh, I like what Abington have done. They've they've made it a sevens a seven style kit. Yeah, no, very nice. Will means even if we lose, we lose in style. That's what Abington's about. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Pink right down to your boots to bootstraps to the chin straps. Okay, here we go. Taken from the restart. Taken well by Seaford as an edge that could be exploited here. Big power carry into contact from Von Hess. Not now. Freddie Von Hess with a power carry on the left. Now it gets reworked. Break from Sharp. Sharp races through. The fastest feet in the Seaford College side. And he cuts through Abingdon Colours. It's good, quick rugby, and that's, that's what you want to see. You want to see a teams attacking. See for doing it very well. The pace and the nimbleness on the legs, I and mean, that's what, and we're going to see a replay here. You can see one, two, three tackles on that first attacking phase. You're drawing out three players there. Maybe they're still in the game, but you know, they're still recovering from the tackle. They're a little bit of a chicken step. Yeah, it just goes through the gap, doesn't it? Chicken step, you say, Will. Uh, my rugby terminology has been found out now. <laughs> no, no, I like it. I like it. You know, I've got a. You know, you're you're still at school. Uh, I was at school. I played in the Roslyn Park Sevens. Okay, twenty, almost twenty years ago. Okay, so that's how long ago I was at school. So to stay in touch with, you know, the lingo, the chicken stuff, I like it. It's it's useful. It could be completely wrong. <laughs> there's no wrong. There's no, I think when it comes to being creative around sidesteps, there's no wrong answers. Abingdon go from east to west and then back again. Good patience from the boys in pink. <laughs> Wittenberg. Went again. Penalty though, Seaford. And they were patient themselves in defence. And they have Freddie Von Hess on the edge. This is Sean Sharp again. Cuts back. Watched well. Little straightener required. Now here are the two game breakers for Seaford in combination. Sharp, Sean Sharp is super sharp. He goes in for a third score. The hat-trick man for Seaford. And they nudge themselves ahead. The different styles of play is what's intriguing me. You've, you've got Abinun who on the attack are very frantic, aren't they? Sort of almost slightly pushing too hard that try to say so Seaford were taking their time. They were happy to let Held the seconds again, yeah. run down because they know they've got the quality. Sharp, he's an incredible I mean look yeah. at he's a wonderful player, isn't he? Runner of real elegance. You're absolutely right, Will. Seven points the difference, four minutes to play. There's twists and turns that are yet to come. Abingdon's will be. That's a good offload, isn't it, from the floor? Not held. Wittenbury. Hanging on to the bootstraps, getting a, a free ride along the grass. Allen. Jim Allen. Thought about the offload, decided against it. Here's Wilkins. Can he muscle his way forward? Supporting line picked up by Nocta, but knocked on. What I talked about frantic play, I, you know, I appreciate there's three minutes to go, but they're, they're pushing it. They're pushing it so hard to try and get the points. Three minutes is a long time in sevens, but you, you can't help yourself to feel that urgency. 
when you've had a 15 season behind you and, and three minutes is, no, is nothing at all in 15. Crouch. But an age in sevens. Find. And we can't moan as a neutral. It uh, makes it exciting. Yeah, it doesn't. Seaford, no, it's a long, long time to go as well. Taking on Abingdon right from the set piece, looking to challenge them physically and then put in some speed as well into the equation. Always back, no offside. Back to Abingdon, Wilkins has taken it. Penalty, now they can go here. Can they bring the speed? Ollie Johnson has tapped and gone. Never 10. That's good play 11. from Johnson, isn't it, to identify 11. that. And that's a yellow card as well. Johnson with a, a raising of the pace, which Seaford couldn't handle. So they're down to six. The black and whites. It's a good offload too. Barney Church involved there. Church almost gets back. it back, doesn't knock it on. And Abingdon need a little bit of support here, but everyone's lining up well. They kept their depth. Johnson passes. Here's Wilkins. He'll run. And he'll run hard. And Wilkins is away. He gets the offload in as well. The score for Abingdon. Church dives down. And we are back once again. These two trading blows with each other. And are we about to go all level at 26 apiece? The conversion will see us there. But you know what I said earlier? Defence wins you matches. Look at the tackle from Ben Simons there. They were through, through to the end zone. The game. That's one. game done if they go and score that. That tackle leads to the yellow card. Does that yellow card run to the end of the match? No, it will just fall short of the end of the match by a second. I mean, maybe it will run to the end of the match, but uh, it, could, it could well be short. It's a big, big moment in this game, that's for sure. Wilkins. Love the way this man enters contact on his own terms. Frightening prospect. It's good, good uh, carry by Will Beer as well. Driving Difficult on the side. angle to get it. Uh, Will be sorry, just behind him. Good grab. And you mentioned that you're number seven. Just give him a shout out as well, Will. Who, who is that? Uh, ben Simons at the so back. Ben Simons, I he's yeah. captain. You know, that tackle, it will go unnoticed by many people. That's back. what scored Abin in the try. So we are all tied up at 26 each. All fine. And Abingdon with Simons, who whiz away with those fast red boots of his. Play carried forward. Hands again for Abingdon. There's no numbers left for Seaford to defend. And Abingdon have the score which will win the match. First win at Roslyn Park this year after two losses in the group stages, but they're going to come out on top against Seaford. And it was patience in the end, Will. You said they were, they were a bit frantic earlier, but they applied the patience factor and it paid off. Oh, it shows. What do I know? These people know what they're doing. Talented, talented players. It's showing again. And you know what? Obviously, I am going to be biased. I try my best not to be. I'm really happy for them because they've had a difficult season on the pitch. Um, difficult first few days today. Commiserations to Seaford, and that has to be said. Uh, Sharp, the number nine, he is a real talented player. Yak yeah, Seaford so close, but that yellow card, the, the difference, and the game breaker in the end. Johnny Nocter with that try. So, Abingdon School 33, Seaford College 26. And uh, Will, thanks so much for your time uh, from Abingdon School. It's been great to have you. And actually, you're going to stay for another match as well uh, on this on this pitch now, if that's OK. Is that OK? Is that oh, okay? Yeah, no. yeah, fantastic. More, more. <laughs> thanks very much. OK, so we'll uh, pick up commentary in under a minute or so. And we'll bring our next match to the screens. And that'll be Coleg Ikamoyth. against, uh, it won't be against Harris School, uh, my apologies, um, that'll be coming up next. Let's get the right teams to come up. It's Ipswich School up next in action against Coleg Clandrillo.
Coleg Clandrillo against Ipswich School now. Ipswich kick us off, lovely tap back into the hands of Dave Owusu. Landrillo College in the uh, green and purple strip with a strike down the middle. We talked about Abingdon's kit, Will, earlier. Well, Clandrillo's is another wonderful jersey. Yeah, it's quite modern. Uh, we see a lot of rugby kits, they sort of base themselves on right. sort of retro vibe, don't they, with the hoops Set. and the colours. I quite like this new adaptation of a kit. I think the swish in the middle is beautiful. It's a go-faster uh, strike, if ever there was one. And Flandrillo looking to put some speed on things here against uh, an Ipswich school team, which have won both their matches so far. Really strong performance, being Trinity Stool Croydon, no less. And then coming out on top against Hurst Pier Point College as well. So they've gone two from two. Colo Flandrillo losing their no first black. match to City of Oxford, and that's been so far their only match. This is their second encounter, whereas Ipswich are looking to go three from three. So highly Let motivated Ipswich side here as they have Backwards designs now, surely, of making it out of the group, making it to day two. You win your first two games, it puts you right in that bracket. First man on the ball. Yes, it's Penalty again. Right. Noah Woodhouse, Woodhouse. Lovely hands from Woodhouse. Move Harry seven! Evans with the next carry. There's space down the blind side. Woodhouse is tiptoeing carefully, but he's bundled into touch by colleague Landrillo. It's a good tackle, that. Good move as well. Uh, good move by Ipswich, just lacking that final quality. Colleague uh, Landrillo's first match loss was to City of Oxford, 31 points to 14. So right uh, in that contest as well. Balls on the Tackle line. release black. Ipswich. <laughs> trying all manner of uh, mischief to rip the ball from Clandrillo hands. And uh, only the illegal route secures the ball, so penalty. They got away with that, Clandrillo. They they didn't make their mind up. If you're if you're ever a place on the pitch where you're not certain of what you're doing, it can't be in your own 22. Thank you. That's your mark there. Hooker, come up, please. Secure the line out, hands below. Ben Senior pops it along the line. That's Charlie Jones in the eight jersey with the yellow scrum hat. Jones in support, gets it back from Yeston Hughes. Here's Jones again. Holding on. But penalty given away. And Ipswich are going again with Hell Woodhouse. Now. He's difficult to stop when he's only a foot off the ground. Keeping himself low and you go. Throwing the ball away. driving hard. But yellow card shown to Ipswich. And okay. that could really sting them. Throwing the ball away. For throwing the ball away as well. Just a lack of discipline. I mean, in rugby, you've got to keep your head. Um, and I'm sure, obviously, there's lots of things said on the pitch, lots of things going on outside of the pitch. But... In a game of sevens, you can't afford to go down to six. Yeah, it was uh, it's what saw Abingdon home, uh, your school will, in the last match. Going Thank down you. to six of Seaford. But now you've got to exploit okay, it. And so, can Clandrillo do that? You know, Clan Clandrillo really needed that. I thought, the first three minutes, I thought they were struggling. They were struggling to get out of their own half. The extra man advantage could just let them put a foot in Cross the sports. game. Who knows what that could do for them. A couple of subs um, being changed up here. That's why we're having a, a delay on for Ipswich. Okay. The amount, I'm just Time on. Let's go. Looking over there, just past the strike. The amount of rugby going on. Find. I mean, I, I set. Think sort of sat Twenty-seven thousand players this week. Some of them on, sir. Wow, the player. I mean, there's over 20 pitches in action pretty much constantly for five days. And uh, yeah, it could, could well be adding up to that. And, the, and the, the Welsh representation is so traditional here for so many years as well. Crouch. And so many sides Bind. make the trip up the M4 to compete here. Set! Andrillo doing that journey 
today or possibly last night not entirely sure when they arrived here but nonetheless uh, more miles in the legs than Ipswich have had 20 we'll seconds it. on the card 20 seconds they haven't made as much as an advantage as there's they should have of that kind of there's only you know 20 seconds of a card left it's it's a big big uh, task in a game when you for a team that's having to defend against seven Bind. Have done really well to hold them off. Set. Eating the clock up without uh, any blows being landed. Now they're on the attack with Gazette. Oh, that's good speed. Really good evasion here. And Ipswich might strike themselves. Racing towards the line is Connor Holdcroft. And Holdcroft holds them all off <laughs> for the first score. Your yellow car can come back. It was coming. You could see it coming. There was constant pressure. When it was 77, first three minutes, constant pressure. Slightly laid off a bit, but, you know, to score with the seven, you know, let's bear that in mind. Please. They scored with six men on the pitch. That's a big, big moment. Not quite. We've got a minute on the clock. <laughs> Knocks it over himself, Connor Holcroft. Save switch. With a lovely try here, isn't it? Pure individual talent at play, a lovely couple of steps in the speed. Yeah, absolutely, just starts away from him, really too nimble, too quick, too good. Scrum advantage. You start taken by Ipswich with an advantage. Scrum advantage over. And the half uh, still going, still uh, with time to play. Harry Evans in that nine jersey. And here comes Dom Gazette. Mark van der Veen took that tap and go. The number one, Evans, pulls it back. Chapman involved here. Good hands on the edge. Now, can they isolate the last man? Good cover defence from Clandrillo. Still there, though, with Wilkinson. Wilkinson, more good hands. And they're so good at backing each other up, this Ipswich high school team. That's why they've won their first two matches of the day. A big uh, judo throw. Smashing Ipswich down to the ground from Van Drillo. Again, it's Van Der Veen. Oh, he's found a lovely pass out the back. And Noah Woodhouse skips in. Ipswich with number three. And they go into half-time half, looking lads. very good indeed. Well, the thing I'm interested by is in their, in their just sort of passing play in the middle of a the pitch. They're actually very narrow. It switched. You know, the two wingers are really not that far apart. Oh, that. However, when they get Thank into you. that final 22 and the attacking phase, suddenly they start exploiting the win. I don't think Clan Clandrido have quite worked that out yet. There's so much space on the wing when they're in attacking phase. So Ipswich School at halftime, leading colleague Clandrillo 14 points to nil. Ipswich received the kickoff. High tackle. High tackle. From Clandrilla. Woodhouse. Ipswich only with two tries in that first half. Uh, I said three at the end of it, but it was just the two. George Howard has done well in the number five jersey. And look at the space that's opening up here. It's 
Ipswich's work on the left, which has exposed space on the right. And Harry Evans will race in. Harry, Rod, and he's got a wide high. smile on his face as Harry Evans. Constructing play like that. <laughs> and exploiting space. So enjoyable. Absolutely. They're racing away with it. And a little bit of after in the middle there, which I never okay. particularly like to see. Uh, sometimes we like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what type of afters. But this was great play because uh, Siep Valter is on here. Valter with that pass to Evans, who is speedy and evasive and he can dance, I bet, as well on a ballroom. He'd be pretty good at that. Lovely play. Scrum advantage. You have to say Ipswich exploiting space very, very well. You're in the side there, no advantage. Hang on, just a scrum. We've seen a bit of Ipswich uh, in previous days, Will, before you came and they're under 16s. Just relax. Just relax, please. On the same pathway as no these boys, but uh, not enjoying the success that the under 18s have. They've clearly the Sipswich high school team have done brilliantly over the years and, and through all their Crouch. coaching and forming the sevens team this season as well. They're a great unit. Set. Nice balance, good mix of skills. Can Flandrillo get themselves Scrum into the advantage. contest? with some points. No advantage. Good defensive Knock shape from Ipswich, stopping the attack. Let's go for... Crouch! Bind! Set! Ben Griffiths feeds the scrum. Looks right, but goes left. Zach McKenzie, the uh, man who's got the ball in his hands. Good defensive line from Ipswich. They're up so fast, and they snaffle that one with the hands of Harry Chapman. Penalty, though, Flandrillo. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Harrow and Brighton as the ones to watch. From from my watching this performance, you've, you've got to put Ipswich in that mix as well. I, thought, I think they've been amazing. They're going to go three from three here, aren't they? Scrum and advantage. Who knows what the final scoreline is here. Five, leave it, thank you. So often we make a judgment no advantage. So on, a, on a day one basis, and a team can look exceptional uh, in, in day one, and then they come up against contest for the first time on day two and things change or injuries have come in overnight bodies feel different the next day it, it's the hardest rugby tournament in the world to win i think uh, the howden roslyn park national school sevens forget the world cup that's seven matches okay 15s over right. six weeks Adam, this is over okay. two days on each other. On you hooker. have a group Thank stage you. today you go into a group stage Crouch. tomorrow in some of the competitions, Bind. not actually the under-18 cup, there's a third group stage which you have to compete in before you then get to semi-finals and finals. I mean, it's absurdly hard to come through all these matches and win a final at the end of it. But Ipswich looking so good on day one, we can only judge them on that, and they are flying right now. Connor Holcroft races in for another. You've got to be a, a bold team to go for the all-black look. Given the, uh, the association that you're going to be compared with with New Zealand. And uh, they are looking. Every inch, a dominant force. Yeah, they're certainly living up to it. The thing that I find most interesting is actually <coughs> the fresh legness within Ipswich. They've played a lot of games, as you were saying. You know, There's a lot of games to win this tournament. That's why we love it. It's the hardest in the world to win. But um, they're bringing on subs. Obviously, there is there's the rule where everyone has to play at least half a match. Uh, but their subs are coming on. It's looking like you know it's the first time they've played. Timing's today. fine. They've all played three games. Hands away, Black. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they're feeding them at Ipswich School. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Billy, run! It's it's a rugby hotbed Ipswich. We've got St Joe's um, St Joseph's College as well up in Ipswich. Uh, our fellow commentator Wilf Kemsley uh, comes from that neck of the woods. They breed them big. Clearly, in uh, two and two. Ipswich. Wolf Kemsley now uh, holding the up the tight head, either tight head or the, or the loose head at, at uh, Bristol Cross University forwards. now. Wolf. Mark Both here, sides lads. at the moment. Okay. Well, that, that's you've got to be even bigger to do that. 
Yeah, well, Wilf Kemsley uh, is the voice you've been hearing on previous matches uh, here Crouch. on RE2. Bind! Yeah, Set! He's not commentating, shoving his head in a scrum like this one. Leave him! <laughs> Offside, number nine. Not tapping and going. Oh, Landrillo barging Ipswich players out the way. The ball kicked forward by Griffiths. But he wasn't able to chase his own kick. He was maybe impeded, actually, by Ipswich. But they're on the attack again with the fast-moving Harry Evans and the even faster footwork on the edge here, burning everybody and scorching the turf as well. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. We're 12 minutes into a really physical game. They've played two already, and he's got legs like that. <laughs> No Woodhouse it was, and gosh, we've seen a lot of Noah Woodhouse today, but here he looks like um, he's just on the park with those wheels. And you know, the thing is, the takeaway, it's not even a, uh, a Clandridro mistake. It's just Ipswich's perfection. I genuinely think, I know we talked about day two, everything can change. Watch this space on these guys. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll come back, we'll come back to tomorrow. Those words will be weighed and measured carefully. We'll see what you mean. Backwards but off black. No, they're, they're uh, having a great time out there as well. Ipswich. You're held. Clantrilla with much more ball in this second half. Charlie Jones goes forward. He's the first 15 captain. Charlie Jones, big fan of uh, Wrexham AFC football club as well. I think we're all a fan of Wrexham these days, aren't we? Given what's going on there. Guy telling a Notts County fan. <laughs> OK, yeah, good point. That's a very good point. Well, that's lovely. The Iron Jones with the sidesteps, and this is an opportunity here now for Oshan Clewellyn. Clewellyn tackled in the 22, gets the offload away. That's nice, and can Lanquillo finish this off? They will! <laughs> with Iron Jones. And that is time, lads. Right at the death. Clandrillo, come up with a score. You know, I think they can be time proud up. of themselves, though. Um, obviously, 35-5 defeat, they're, they're going to come off with heads down. But the attacking play at the end was sublime. Uh, that's the only... It's not a word I use often, but it's the only one that came to my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, and, uh, and that desire to keep going as well, to get on the scoreboard um, at the end. So, Clandrillo round things off with this score. Really fine work from all involved. Oshan Llewellyn here and George Watkins in the nine jersey with the Iron Jones in the red scrum hat dotting down. So well played both teams. It is three from three for Ipswich School. They're in uh, the best possible position to be heading through to day two and staying in the cup competition. Still one more match to come for them, however, and We'll see how they fare in that one. Next up on RE2, we're going to have Camford School against Epsom College, and that's coming up in just a moment, so stay with us for that one. Camford School Take against Epsom College here. Epsom in the white from kickoff are going and looking for points. 
And this is a return of the five point kind. 16 seconds it takes Epsom College to score in this one. A bit further out, mate. Thank you. So here's the take. Ollie War, it is, who thought he was going to go all by himself. Might Time have touched run, it down. Time run. Passed it on. You want. And on the line or behind. Hold, hold. It was Ben Tomley who touched it down in the end, the number seven. Tomley heading after that from the restart. Right here, guys. White there, white here. Blue here. In the channel, thank you. So for both teams, they have matches under their the belts middle. today already. Epson white, white. having middle, beaten Barnard Castle earlier today, 38 points Blue. to 10, Blue. whilst thank you. Camford have played to, lost to, went so close to, to beating Barnard Castle. 21-19 they lost, and then went to Warwick. School 45-14 and lost to them so without a win from two matches the boys in blue Epsom are looking for their second victory of the day from their second match this is Owen Beswick on the burst good pass and again it'll be Ben Tomley to touch down So that was the pass back inside. Tom Austin there, and Ben Quinton on the link play. Beswick here makes the difference, doesn't he? Under the attentions of Camford defenders. But Tom Bully gets it done. 10 metres, guys. Go to your 10 metre line. Time's off for the ball. Free kick just in the middle. Hold your ten, guys. Over here. Time back on. Camp first a uh, real attack of notes here. <laughs> off straight off your feet, White. Straight off your feet. Leave them all. Thank you. You're not on. You're not. Sam on. Martin. Good now. Will Fountain. Good wheels here. Lovely evasion as well from defenders. Powerful run coming in. No white, no white on your feet. Hold your body weight, white. Is Timberlake? Good. That's a good pass out of contact too. Max Firth. That's out. Hanford. Went backwards. Far away from their first score. Timberlake. Ed Timberlake. That's fine. You've got him. Miss pass taken by Epsom and without any real mates around him, weaving a path through Camford numbers. It's Will White who punishes Camford and burns his way through. Wonderful uh, speed from Will White. Tom Austin's uh, kickoff doesn't go 10. So Camford again from halfway will have the ball and a chance. Time off again for the ball. 
for a set piece uh, effectively. Time stop, eh? To free coke, same as before. <coughs> Time back on. Canford moved the ball nicely, intercepted once again. It's Will White. He's not going to go from distance for the second time, is he? Instead, out wide they go. And this is really nice. Touching this down will be Ollie War. <laughs> going all the way is Ollie War. No, one more minute. Blue, give him space. Thank you. Go get the ball. So 26 points to nil, Epsom lead after another turnover. They strike quickly, don't they? Tom Austin transferring and then from halfway, Ollie Wart didn't need anyone else. Quinton, a couple of changes in the uh, Epsom back line now. That's a nice break on from Austin, gets it away to Jack Jarvis. Sobi. There is Jarvis Sobi. Quinton out wide again. This is Temperley. Temperley looking for a hat trick. He gets it. Ben Temperley. Had a lot That's to do time, on picking up the ball. That's time, yep. But imposed his kick. frame on Camford and stepped out of those tackles. Got 10 seconds to do it. It's the fastest uh, start to a match I think we've seen today on RE2. 31 points before the half is out. <laughs> First half. Don't worry about it, mate. You go with your team. I'll Camp get it. being uh, put to the sword in a brutal fashion by this Epsom College side. <laughs> Quinton with this nice pass, and this was well picked up here. And he had to evade the first uh, challenger and the second for Ben Temperley to score. everybody the next matches for both these two schools coming up Epsom are in action against Warwick School at 240 that's on RE6 so uh, not one that will be covered by our cameras Os Camford are in action at 240 as well against Whitgift School that's on RE5 so they'll be adjacent uh, to each other but not uh, but they'll be in the background to where we are now you can see the pitches behind that's where they'll be playing Go on your ten. to be going into that ten encounter side. with ten Warwick School, Thank which you. may well be a, a group decider with the likes of who's in this. In fact, it, it almost certainly will be a group decider in their next That's match. Good. That's what okay, they're tackle, building towards. And looking to rack up as many points as they can in the process. Big shot on Max Delamain. That's good. And does well, Delamain. Holding on. Leave it, White. There, there, just the way you are. Ten minutes, guys. 
Thank you. Penalty muscled out of uh, Epson by Camford. Backwards. No, Willow, well, no. Thank Earl you. has tidied up for well Epson. Done. Well, that's lovely. Oh, that is uh, a casual Timing break forward from Tom Austin. Didn't require his speed on that occasion, just uh, saw the space, played in the kick. Cam for return now. Pass is good, pass is good. There's space here for them to exploit with Fountain. Fountain chips for himself, oh. then goes again. Went he's out. called back. Why line out here? Just out of bounds. Thank you. Yeah. White line out. Blue, this is your mark. Stay in the channel, mate. Just went half me there that way, thank you. Hold for subs, hold for subs. We good? Okay, let's go. Hold your 10. Let's go, please. <laughs> Guys, that wasn't straight. Blue, what do you want? Scrum. Scrum? Option, scrum. Oh. Well, not straight. Option, scrum. Over here, guys. 15 metres. Thank you. Find on the hooker. Find on the hooker, please. Find on him. Thank you very much. Crouch. Find. Set. I came straight out through the tunnel. Can't play that. Guys, don't engage until there's a set. Yeah? Keep that space. Say mark. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Make sure you're still binding on the hooker. Crouch. <laughs> yeah. Your, your guys go, are going go, in. Go. Yeah. Back, back. No. Good Time now. For tap and Thank go. you. No, no way. No way. Not now. Not now. Lost it. Will Fountain. Leave him right. No way. No way. Trying for every We're meter back. that he Rucks can get played. against this Epsom College side. Can Camford put this together? All the way Release to him. the try line. Stay wide. Ashby Rudd Thank you. with that last carry. The chance to maybe offer the kick in over yes, the top. It, was. it wasn't Thank taken, you. and I can see it. Motsu was, was calling for that. There. You felt. It went forward. Right, me. Subs. But a line change for Camford yes, now. Yes, for the last time, just because you guys are pre-engaging, so try and control that. Here's your mark, guys. Finding on the hooker. Thank you. Sorry, mate, I just. Crouch! Bind! Set! Stay behind. Okay, that's out. That's perfect. Delamain. Yep, that's tackled. Fine. Gets up again. Still going. Max Delamain. Ball is now ripped. Yeah, that's also forward. Yeah, don't worry, I've got it. So in these Thank tight you, exchanges, Seaford. That's fine, it was not gone. Getting yet. some change out of Epsom College. Knocked on my white. Scrum blue. There's your mark. Same again, guys. Crouch. Bind. Set. Swiftly moved to the left-hand side. Now Motsu gets going. Oh, he's escaped. Brilliant from the number 11 and then steps out of the next tackle. <laughs> Wonderful try from Johnson Motsu. No, no, Motsu. it's got to be this side. Got to be this side. That is a beauty. Further out, further out, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Give him space, guys. There's so much to admire about this individual score here. We got a ball? Especially Camford having we go. worked ball. hard to get the ball back and then into the hands of this man here. And he just thunders his way out of two tackles. Rightly your timing, gives that guys? the big What's celebration. Yep, whenever you're ready. Perfect. Delamain escapes the uh, first defender. He's pulled to that the floor high, by Martin. Back here. Good. Keeping the pace uh, nice and high. Our uh, Epsom. Ollie War. Delamain. Rush defence from Camford leaves. Knocked on. Epson without that option to go wide. Good uh, rush defence from Camford. They're, they're really 
presenting a different Mark. problem now to Epsom. 31 points to nil at half time, remember. And then we've since played six minutes Thank of rugby you. and Cam could have fine. scored the only points in that Set. time. That's fine, that's good. Epsom that's good. hook it back. And now with that Out there, centre good. position of Ondia Laga, he uh, tries to go on his own. Now we'll rework things with Delamain. He gets through. Delamain finds support. And Epsom score their first try of the second half. The pace having slowed right down, but that was some nice work from Max Delamain. Um, there's time for another kickoff. You have 10 seconds for this now. One deal larger. Last kickoff, guys. Aims for the kickoff here. Let's uh, look at this again. Good draw and give, and a nice reach down to pick up the ball. Scored by Luca Baker. So last time run, play guys. Of the match. Time run. Thank you. Played back nicely by War, and he flies that into the <laughs> midfield. Yeah, so that went forward there. That's the end. And that was uh, forward. So Epsom win their second match of these group stages. Well done, guys. Thirty-eight points well to five. Thanks, mate. Not well tested in a sense of. Uh, pressure being applied to them but certainly tested by their systems and defensive patterns in that second half Camford school sticking to their task and taking away a try from this one 38 points to five Epsom have beaten Camford so next on pitch re2 Hampton school against Bishop Burton school in group K and then after that we'll be bringing coverage of the national sevens girls ace league to the screen. Exeter College in action against Worthing College girls. And that match will be at two o'clock, so stay with us uh, over the next uh, hour or so if you're looking to cover off one of these schools. Bishop Burton College against Hampton up next. Bishop Burton College now facing Hampton School. Hampton in the black and gold and Bishop Burton in the green and white. Bishop Burton College are chasing their first win of today. They've played two, lost two. And Hampton, by comparison, have won their first match. Knock this on is their ten. second. Free kick. Against Bishop Burton's third match. Bishop Burton, though, have gone close against South Gloucestershire and Stroud College in their last match, losing that 31-19 after losing go, 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 go. to 
Milfield play on, play in the first match of the day. It's a tough old group, this one. Hampton with a lovely show and go, and that was outrageous. Hampton's Theo Tyler Lowe with a dummy to send Bishop Burton College scrabbling around to see if they're still sane. That was incredible. Heads. So let's slow this down. Theo Taylor Lowe waits here, waits here, then places a fend and just shunts himself through. Goes all the way. Which way are you going? Left, yeah. Okay, there it is. Go on, ten. Hampton's restart. Play on! One. Really good. Okay, one. knock out, back. line out, and green ball. Out touch, though, so Bishop Burton will have the ball. Green ball, line out. Hampton's first victory of the day green was ball, black here, one. Black it was here, over please. On RE6, so a long way from our cameras, but they beat Millfield 27. 21. Close so the gap, please. Thank you. You do that, and you are the team to then beat in your pool. It's gone over the top again. Hampton run it through the hands to the right wing, and there's a bit of space for Abrahart. Still going. Okay, tackle. James Abrahart. the ball. Pass from Armstrong. Cardosi in the 10 jersey, make sure they stretch it to the other edge. And Finley Wiseman, he's the captain. He cuts back and uses his big frame. And no one Try scored. Finley Wiseman. Try scored. Hampton in again. This line here, the 15 metres, number 10, OK? Get the ball back, please. Can the ball, please, here? Yep. Ball. Transfer Thank you. Was really swift, and Tyler Lowe involved in that, making sure he got the ball to this man in space, and he was able to take the pick of the roots to the line. Let's go. One side. Again, the restart is good. Bishop Burton College running a really sharp angle was Miles Dodsworth. Made good yards, did Dodsworth, and that's allowed Reese Davis. Play, play on, turn over's good. Go on a foray play forward. On, play on. Play on! Bishop Burton College. Big hits coming tackle. in. That was enormous. Joe Cornell with the tackle. Still Bishop Burton College, though. And they found some space on the left wing. Not held! Oliver Rimmington. Good pass again. Now, maybe if Play there's on. any space left on the pitch. That's flat. That's Hampton good. That's that good. It free. Massive pass. Half the pitch covered here. And then Tyler Lowe. He's actually done the right thing. Tackle release! He was the player that went backwards, play on! That huge hit, Cornell. But now Bishop Burton's chance to lay gloves on Hampton. Tackle. Oliver Rimmington with that tackle. Play on, play on. Oh, it's going to be chipped through here. Dodsworth. Not held! He's going to pick yeah. it and score! Try scored! Miles Dodsworth. Using his hands and his feet to get that one done. Stroked over. Dodsworth has got Bishop Burton right back into this. Lads, the ball's there. What Time about off. this hit, though? Enormous from Remington. Put time off, okay? And this is really smart here. Little two. 
sidestep kick and then picked up, not held, made sure he didn't just scramble towards the line on his knees by jumping up and diving over. Good awareness of a good rugby IQ from Miles Dodsworth. Which way are you going? Okay. Time to run, lads. Okay, onside. Wiseman comes forward. Knock on. He's hit hard as he comes down to earth. Bishop okay, Burton so knock on the there ball. from Scrum down, green ball. Knock on. Quite a shift in how things have been going to this point. Green ball. Bishop Burton College can Mark, lads. level up the match. Okay, boys, in you come. If they can make this. No push into the, no push into the balls in, boys. Come here. Into points. Crouch. Reese Davis. He's a Midlands Bind. Player. Is Reese Davis. Set. He has the ball in his hands. Up again, lads. Up, up. Right, both, players both with representation on that side. Boys. Come on. in this team. Let's Harry go, Dawkins please. is a Yorkshire Academy player. Right. Waverley Wigglesworth. Crouch. Wigglesworth is a Yorkshire Academy Bind. and a North of England player. Set. Scotland representation in Ant McCormack as well. Bishop Burton's Davis gets uh, things moving. Fell. Oh, this is chipped over and there's speed in the wheels here. Oh. And not quite the possession. He's Adam knocked Quinn it on over the try line. Okay, charging towards the line. Knocked it on there. No, sorry, 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 it's a scrum five, scrum five. Oh, that was. Scrum five. Scrum five. So close. It's time for this game. No, 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 let's go. Yeah, scrummage, lads, come on. Other side, please. Okay, crouch. Bind, set, last play. Last play. Hampton under pressure, but behind their own line. Half time. It from there. So I would say last play to everyone. Called. Last play of the half. I did say that. Last 14 play. points to Thank seven you. for uh, Hampton at half time. But Bishop Burton College bringing themselves right into the contest towards the end of that first half. Bishop Burton College begin the second half and trail by seven in a tight encounter against the early pace setters in this group. Hampton having beaten Millfield in their first Not match. On the ball, no lift, play on. Strong run from Abrahart on the left flank. Cornell in that red scrum hat brings in Finley Wiseman, who doesn't create as much damage as he can in other scenarios. However, it sucked in a few defenders and now there's space here on the other edge with James Abrahart. And Abrahart makes sure Hampton start the second half on the front foot. You can go behind a rope if you need to. Really well worked. And the spacing between Hampton players as they reset themselves to go from right to left. Had all the hallmarks of such a well-drilled team. They had dropped back to then come onto the ball at such speed. And Perhaps Abrahart was already hooker, okay. flying when he collected the ball. Perhaps needs to bind on the hooker. And it wasn't by much that he squeezed down the left edge, but it was by... 
every inch he needed. Why is Play on, go on 10. Take this. Go on 10. Play on. Looks it out the back again. Tyler Love. And Tim Wright is on. No, no, it's fast. In line Cornell. with it, OK? Please don't appeal. Rucks the ball over now. Tom Williams in the four jerseys, <laughs> ransacked. Line out, line touch. out, green ball. That's we get back to the pitch, please, thank you. Lads, back from the pitch. For those green of you who are wanting to watch Exeter College your mark, lads. against Worthing College yeah, girls black, in the Ace League competition, that's uh, coming up next on mark this pitch. Man. See it? There? Keep going? Yeah, thank you. Hampton over to Wiseman, right from the line-out. Wiseman doesn't think he has enough on the outside initially, but he's still going. Tackle. And now the ball on the floor is pinched. That's really strong work from Bishop Burton College in defence. Four minutes remaining. They're still very much in this contest as sauntering through the midfield goes Big Amp Cormac, the man who has Scottish under-18. Hands on board, clear lift. Associations. Not. But he's had the ball turned over here. Perhaps not enough support. Wiseman hit it really hard here. Does well to get out of that tackle. Good attempt from Pearson. Cornell. Now Ty Lalo. Oh, he's done it again. Stretches those long legs. Theo Ty Lalo. Put it down, eight. Thank you. Scores again. They do breed them big in the under-18s cup. Tyler Lowe, the uh, power player for Hampton. <laughs> Wiseman showed his uh, particular brand of force on the left, and then Tyler Lowe with his own stamp of authority. Time you run, lads, please. Go on 10! Go on 10! On the line! Go on 10! away and looking for another. The restart work from Hampton has been so good, they're going to get it back. OK, Rock, leave it now, lads. Offside advantage. Moved by Offside right. advantage against Green, 14. Offside 13. from Bishop Burton. So play advantage. Well, that's good play to just do everything to keep this alive. Hands are there, and if okay, it doesn't on. go forward... 13 offside. Although it has done. 13 offside. Other the try line, please. Try yeah. line. This is the one to try line, please, yes. And all of a sudden, 13 the offside. Line Next play, come on. It's an impossible Thank you. score to come back from for Bishop Burton. So it's about how many Hampton can add here. And they're going to add one more. <laughs> Harry Armstrong. Take it down there, please. You can't kick it. Harry, great job. Two minutes to play. Number two, can you go away, please? Number two, thank you. Harry Armstrong gets a rest after crossing for this try. Quite a few numbers changing here for Hampton. Tim Wright, of course, there tapping and going, and Armstrong with a good fence. When you're ready. Not ten. Ben O'Connor Green is uh, the man who's uh, had quite a lot of success on the restarts recently. Not on that particular occasion, just uh, didn't quite go 10. Here's Bishop Burton's Ben Hall and Oliver Pearson. And Hall again. And Hall going off and finding number five, 
Finley Hobson. Now we're into the arms of Rimmington again. Rimmington tackled. It's all good, all good. Well, Dodsworth scored the try for Bishop Burton. Hands away, Black, hands away! <laughs> he marks here. Marks here. Pearson. What? Has Dodsworth with him. Pearson goes by himself. Tackle. Good tackle from Sam Ho. Reese Davis. Reese Davis fighting hard. <laughs> Davis has got there. Okay. Well, he went one way, weaved in between two Hampton players, forced his way over. Reese Davis. Doubles Bishop Burton money. The two o'clock round of fixtures in the eighth competition. But that's the final uh, act of the match. Hampton take a comfortable victory in the end, but with periods when Bishop Burton were causing them real problems. And this is nothing less than what Bishop Button deserved here. Rimmington, or rather, or the Pearson, excuse me, with that little weave. And then Reese Davis fighting players off. Four Hampton players tried to stop him, but none could. So final score, Hampton 35, Bishop Burton 12. Where will you be? Yeah, no, it's true. He's picked someone who doesn't even go to college. Yeah, no, literally, that's why I said I'm going to go You picked someone who doesn't even go to Wiley College. Doesn't matter. Kira, go your way. You'll be all right. You'll be fine. Watch the camera. Yeah, 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 love Oh, wait, there's a. Oh, okay. Well, we've changed competitions finally here, and we're bringing you action from the ace on, competition. So the highest standard of women's rugby here at Roslyn Park as Worthing women take on Exeter yes, College. Kira Day is alongside me for the first half at least. Kira, excited to be on the live stream for this one. Hello. <laughs> well, we'll be uh, starting off here with a quick turnover that goes away of Worthing. Ella Cross. But a penalty goes against Exeter. Oh, Kira, tell me, how have uh, Worthing found the competition so far? We found it quite good, but I think we're just working on our structure. We've got a lot of 15s players and a lot of forwards. We're a very forwards heavy team, which I think we're just working on making sure we're getting it down to the wingers and utilising our back. Well, we'll see how that uh, comes to the fore here as Worthing moving it from right to left and a hint of a two-on-one on this nice wide guy, channel. Guy. A strong challenge as the sun is uh, really beating down on us here at Roslyn Park. The perfect yes, weather for sevens. That's an, no. a strong carry from Croft down the centre. Swung wide by Newby. 
No advantage there. But there was a touch of a knock on there, so Exeter College back in possession. Had much, had much experience against the likes of Exeter College so far? Or yeah. in the season just gone? I think Exeter are a very strong team. They just, um, for the 15s, they've okay. just lost against Parkbury in the finals for the Aces. Point. So this will definitely be Set. for us. We'll see how Worthing fare as it's a scrum to Exeter, but that uh, okay, powerful you. forward pack of Worthing proving a nuisance and a great tackle comes in too to shut down the attack. Take Some pace injected to the line, lower, touch of a high lower, tackle lower, there. Lower, lower, lower. But pick blind, in comes the big fence. Strong carry from Mas Gaslin. Over the ball go Worthing. But still it comes. Exeter's way, wider by, and then cutting back against the grain, great support on the carry, and another offload, through the hand, surely it must be on here, beautiful ball out wide, and over goes Pulsar, and that is the first score, and here it wasn't for the right side in your opinion, but an excellent first try you must say. It was very good. They utilise really? it in their hands a lot yeah. more, and I, don't know, I, haven't really I think seen us play much. it's definitely going to be a challenge. But I think we've got this. Well, a great effort from the conversion as well, and Exeter take the lead. Of course, if Exeter College can win this game, then they will be uh, home and dry almost. With Henley and Oakland also on six points, but of course, Oakland in action over on. RE1. But a great first score. Oh, when you're ready. How are you expecting Worthing women to respond, Kira? I think definitely going to utilise the fact that this ball's going straight to us. We've got Sophie on there, one of our Quinn's center of excellence players. A great flanker. A great offload through the contact, and suddenly Worthing might be in behind, taken to ground. Exeter quickly over the ball. Pulsar once again looking to disrupt. And Exeter do come away with it. Goes backwards there, knock or on knock there. on is the call. <laughs> Missed opportunity by Exeter, but uh, a set piece for Worthing Kira. Exciting stuff inside Exeter's half for the first time. I hope to get it out to Sophie. Okay. He's Coach. definitely one of our stronger car Point. carriers, number 36. Set. So. Sophie Watson on the short Lap. side, but instead they go to the right-hand side. Through the hands from Newby. And it comes back to Croft, who makes good yardage over the game line. And then straight forward from Hancock. Another good clear out. Penalty for Worthing. And they tap oh, quickly, ten, Exeter not 10, so they'll take another penalty advantage into the latter no stages of this no, attack. Wait, 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 and we could see a yellow card here as well. Not that is ten. a yellow card for not retreating oh, 10. Oh, well, there's a great tackle coming in. But oh, Worthing's oh, still in possession on the 22. Oh, the project a bit of pace into the attack. Another strong carry this time. But it's been... Ripped Pretty away good. by Exeter. And suddenly Worthing lose possession. Chipped away and there's a race on on that left hand side. A beautifully weighted kick, but will it fall for Exeter? Excellent pick off. The floor and suddenly they're in behind. There's plenty of Worthing bodies back to support. There's the offload. There's the big fend as well. Once again lifted through the tackle. And with just the sweeper to beat. They thought Exeter might be away there, but uh, Worthing scrambling in defence. They have made it back. Lovely step off the right. And that is a second try. Definitely well deserved from Exeter. I think that we just need to make sure we've now got one less player to go against and make sure we use that.
Well, a strong carry by Exeter's number 26. Not a number listed on our uh, team sheet here, but impressive stuff nonetheless. Kira, what do Worthing need to do in what might be the last attack of the first half to recover this 14-point deficit? Well, we've now got Billy on the ball, stronger characters. All right, tackler, thank I think you. That if we just get it out passing, I think we're lacking the passing right now, but it looks like we're on. Yes, go, and they are on the left-hand side. The pass back inside, speculative, but well picked up by Worthing, who once again free the hands through contact. Strong carry by Billy Brown. Another lofted pass, but this time it's intercepted. And Exeter will have possession, That's stolen good. in the carry. And suddenly they could be in behind. And there is a real race to the line here for Worthing. Wonderful cover and tackle, but it's been ridden by Easy Flu, and that is the try that will get Worthing back into this game. Kira, a great finish. Yeah, that was great. That's exactly what we needed, passing Half it time. down to one of our fasters people just and left. yeah just over. it was actually a brilliant try and we'll see if flu can add the extras as well it's <laughs> routine from her so Off into time. the break worthing women will be trailing by just the one try kira we must let you go as yes. you'll need in the second half but thank be. you for being with us thank, thank you very much on. i'll send up one of my friends thanks very much we'll be hoping to hear from another worthing player soon as she uh, enters the field kira day In the number seven shirt for Worthing. Great work from Kira to come and uh, join us in the booth and now star on the field and hopefully sending up another Worthing player to join us for the second half. Good afternoon, the fixture schedule for 2.20 in the cup competition. On RE1, Trinity School versus College Lambrio. On RE2, Hurst Pierpoint College versus City of Oxford College. On RE3, Berkhamsted School versus Bedford School. On RE4, Bromwell Grove versus Newport High School. On RE5, Woodhouse Grove versus Dulwich College. On RE6, Hamley School versus Iskol Banta. And on RE7, SMB College Group versus Gospel Academy. Uh, those matches due to get underway at 2.20. Thanks. Well, it's a fast start to this second half to Exeter, who lead by the uh, solitary try. There's a late hit coming in there. Some strong physicality. And then in goes the fend, and suddenly roaring away this time goes Lily Taylor. We're going to come back to the advantage here. The late knock tackle. on. There's still an advantage being played. Late tackle. So penalty for Exeter. Please. Good start to this. Uh, Second half for them. Shift, 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 shift. And away goes Dyke. What a strong carry that is. They've gone all the way. Scrum five. And instead, it was knocked on. Scrum. So there'll be a scrum five. five. But it goes extra way. So carried over the line by Worthing. Well, happening in the blink of an eye there, that attack. 
to make sure the props are bound, please, to the hooker. Props bind to the hooker, please. Thank you. Crouch. Bind. Set. I'd like to feed this scrum. And she'll go to the line herself. Great change of direction. And Exeter will have a third. <coughs> we heard, of course, in the first half that this is the Exeter College <coughs> women's side who are so close to uh, yes. going all the way in the 15s competition, beaten in yeah, the end by the, the mighty stuff. Hartbury. And it was always going to be a tough ask for uh, Worthing. The bottom of this group, a shared role with Loughborough, but a win here will put keep Exeter Play College at the top of this Ace Cup group with Henley and Oakland's in pursuit. Kick off then for Exeter. It's an unkind bounce, but it's a good take. Right away, tackler. There is Kira Day available. over the ball, who you heard in the first half. It's a lovely ball across the face as well. Good hands. And then wearing the contact well, but they are behind the gain line. Worthing. And then to the outside. They take possession of the ball. Away, it's a strong tackle. Tackler, roll away. But not rolling. Back ten, back ten, keep on going, keep on going. So good now. Waste no time in getting things underway. Lovely step to get away from the first, but an Exeter player positioned themselves brilliantly well to intercept the offload and they could look to counter a great pass into the wide channels and a strong leg drive as well from Tilly Polfer but not releasing back, Worthing going, get back going. underway yeah, good they're looking to respond here they'll need a try soon to get back into this game powerful clear out from Day it's a bit of space in the wing but great line speed to shut down the attack at this time of asking and now away goes Lily Pittick. Off the feet. Off the feet, however, so they'll wave play on despite the ball falling loose. Get out! Thundering tackle coming in there from Hancock. Need to lift the ball. But it's been chipped in behind. Hancock made the tackle. So there's a limited chase for Exeter. Over the ball they go and they've stolen it. The ball is still loose, however. Who Play can on. latch Play it on at first? It's Worthing. And suddenly there's green space in front. Touch but a there, really touch. strong tackle once again by Beck Ray. Marks it there. Crucial intervention from Ray there. I should mark that work. No, it's your ball. Your ball. Tackle into touch. Foul there. Next to then in possession, in attack, and there's a big fend to get on the outside of Worthing, and another. Come what on, a great Ellie. run this is! Go on, Ella, you go there. Well, Lily Taylor will go all the way. What a beautiful individual <laughs> score. Rightly placed on the sidelines, as you can hear. Then you got 30 seconds. Two terrifying handoffs. Keep there. And that may have just sealed the game for Exeter. Is there water? Need to kick straight away. And that's the end of Lily. For now, at least, Lily Taylor leaving the field. And fair enough, given the lengths she had to go for that try. A really great score. A great solo effort. Right, let's play when you're ready. We're not waiting for a shoelace. Let's play. Don't let it bounce. No, she didn't. Worthing ball. Is that the right call to jump at it at the end? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh, I didn't really feel the pace. I could hear the 
Yeah, need a hooker in here. Well, then it's a line out Thank you. from the kickoff that went straight out, so Worthing will be in possession. Up they go, but the ball is played. loose, and Exeter pounce Bantage upon Jennifer, it. Not Lovely to, to break through the contact, Alice Gray will score. <laughs> a great finish, and that will certainly put the game to bed. Well, it was a really good first half from Worthing women, but they've been overwhelmed by this talented Exeter College side. Conversion wide. But it won't affect this game as they lead by 31 7. Well, it looks like the crucial game in this pool will be when Exeter College take on Hendley at 20 past 3 on RE6. That depends how Oakland's get on against Loughborough. But uh, Exeter College, this is their game in hand, so they will go top on nine points with a win here. Balls out, and then they have the opportunity out. to top the group. And it's Worthing still on the attack. Another good oh, offload yeah, through contact. Yeah, yeah. Over the ball of Exeter and they've won the penalty as well. This time, Scarlett, Margaret Rood. Oh, Margaret yeah. Rood even. But it's been spilled in the carry, oh, so we'll have one last attack for Worthing. Instead, it's, it's been hacked through by Exeter. Yes, a yes, great yes, covering yes. tackle. Yes, yes. We'll end this game. Full time. Yes. Well, Exeter ran away with it in the second half, and they look like one of the strongest teams in this ace oh, competition. They will top this group with one game left to play to decide it for them later on at 20 past three. The action, however, does not stop here on RE2. Our next game for you is a return to the Under-18 Cup competition as the City of Oxford College face off against Hurstbeer Point. That's live next on RE2 at the Howden Rosin Park National School 7s. Welcome back, Sam, to RE2. How are you feeling? Hi. A big win yesterday for uh, Brunel. Yeah, hi, Wilf. Uh, really enjoyed my day out yesterday to Loughborough. Massive win for the boys, um, but just ecstatic to be back here at this uh, great festival and an absolutely spiffing day for it as well. The weather's playing ball at the moment, and here's how things stand for the uh, city of Oxford College. They are uh, one win and one loss so far. They need a victory here to keep pace with Trinity School, and then they need to go on and beat Ipswich later on this afternoon in order to qualify. So a big ask, especially with a talented Hurstbeer point side yet to get off the mark as their opponents in the in and out step from Oli Das. Currently Wales under 18, but it's been turned over the breakdown. So back come the city of Oxford. And Oxford on the run here. There's a wide ball yeah! left hand side for Bailden. Slipping through the first tackle is Toth. And then that big wide pass 
looking to open up the space. There's the hard line, which takes two defenders to bring him down. Really sustained pressure from uh, City of Oxford off the off the start here. And is there a two on one out wide? Instead, they switch it back. Once again, Lukatov is in possession and takes it to the line himself. Good offload off the deck. And Toff there to secure the ball as well. Just Belden, move. missed pass on the bounce. Still keeping the ball alive. Great KDA. Bunts off the deck once again. But a knock on there. For some good sustained Gents, leave attacks. It, leave it. No yeah, need for that. Really good from uh, City no, Oxford. No, no need for that. Um, okay. Great little uh, offload, as you said there, from uh, Darcy Bunts. Um, but yeah, we have a. St. Joe's put in now. Just see if they can work something magic Crouch. out of their own 22. But so far, all City of Oxford, I'd say. Sets. Well, Hurst be a point, it is. Oh, sorry. Sam Hurst from the South Wales. We were just talking about St. Joe's College off yeah, camera, of course, sorry. who fell to Millfield in pretty miserable circumstances, for myself anyway. Fantastic. But uh, Hurst be a point, on the other hand, are breaking away, and they might race away and score. And a great solo effort will be their first try. It's a top run. And going all the way through is Ed Tulsa of the Harlequins Academy, or Tusker it is even. Yeah, just a really good uh, platform to play off there for Hurstbeer Point. Uh, scrum really well, ball, clean ball out of the back, and then uh, just simple hands through the line. And um, yeah, as you said, Tusker just saw the space and went for it. Great oh. feet there. Lovely step by Tusker, one of a few academy lads in this Hurstbeer Point side. Hailing from uh, Old Brighton Way on the south coast. Lovely part of the world. When you're ready. And Ed Tusker opens his account in front of us here on RE2, looking to upset the apple cart of the city of Oxford College, who are desperate for a win here to keep their hopes of qualification alive. Hurstbeer Point hoping for their first win in two games. That's a strong carry by Darcy Bunce yet again. Just seeing it. Gone for it again. And he slipped away from the tackle Well, suddenly it's Baldwin who's through. And Bailden it is. Going all the way. Well, sorry, who gave the offload. Toth, I think. Yeah, it is Luca Toth who will eventually score. Great work between him and Will Belden at 22, who will look to add the extras. Didn't take long for the City of Oxford College to get back on level terms. No, no, and uh, really, really good try there. Uh, we see it so often in sevens, just, just figuring a way to work out kind of a strong defense. And uh, Toth, as you see here, just, just has a look and then decides he's gonna go. Beats his opposite man out the tackle, wriggles out of it and uh, strides underneath the post. But yeah, very good game so far, very competitive. Uh, both teams coming out really strong out of the blocks, Will. Well, it's ruthless, Roslyn Park. You need to play to win every time you're on the field. And City of Oxford know that only a win here is good enough to keep their hopes alive of progressing through. No, to no, the no, 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 no. But it's been taken off the kickoff. And Hurst to a point. We'll look to create this big fend and a lovely offload as well. And suddenly they're in behind yet again. Well, it's a great run this time from Sam Griggs. The back row will go coast to coast for Hurstbeer Point. Two tries created from deep in their 22. And once again, they take the lead in this topsy-turvy fixture. Yes, seeming like a basketball game at the moment, Will. Just uh, attack on attack and uh, the Hurstbeer Point boys uh, come out on top this time. Great friend there, almost a bit fortuitous to come out of the out of the hands straight into another Hurstbeer points player's hands. But yeah, I mean, great try and found the space on the outside. Didn't know a lot about that offload, but mm. uh, sometimes you just need things to go your way in sevens. And it will be Hurstbeer point who kick off, and that's an impressive kick off as well. Almost taken cleanly out of the air. Tackle! Instead, it goes loose. Well, as they look to go edge to edge here, instead, Bunt's taking it back across the grain. Hurstbeer Point hunting for it on the deck. 
It does come their way, but as quickly as they turn it over, Borden takes it back again and Bunce is back to his feet and finds the try scorer Toff, who's in a foot race to again. the line. And he will beat Conway and will score another. It's almost like a replica of the first try, Wilf. Um, just uh, Toff on the outside, backing his pace. A great score then for the city of Oxford, who once again pegged back Hurstbury point, although this time they're able to go in front. 30 seconds. A great finish from Toth from long range. Yeah. Um, this, this game is extremely, and I'm, I'm very glad that I came up uh, exactly on this time because for a first game today, for me watching it, it's been absolutely thrilling. And from the kickoff, this time the city of Oxford College have won it back. And there's a lofty miss pass, and the no look from Vance doesn't go to plan because it's been picked off by Griggs. And now there could be a two on one in that wide channel. They do make their way outside. <laughs> Like Whistle glows for the high tackle, an important tackle regardless from Junior Tagne. But there's a bit of space on that left-hand side if they can use it. Up over the gain line, drawing Take in two up. defenders. All good. Quick hands to the centre of the park. Griggs with a man outside, but the pass doesn't go to plan. And well, a bit of sloppy play to end that first half off, but the City of Oxford College will take a two-point advantage into a game in which they conceded to go behind twice. But they keep their cup hopes alive just about with a slender two-point advantage going into half-time. We'll be live for the second half from the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens in just a moment. Oh, oh my God. Well, we're kicking off here with the City of Oxford College, two points in front, desperate for a result here. And if they do win this game, they'll have to take our down Ipswich School later, which is a seriously hard ask. Fire open play. And some good defence and a lovely offload from Bailden keeps the attack alive for the City of Oxford College. Sam, alongside me, it's been a pretty exciting first half. Yeah, I mean... Uh, it's been really good so far. The first half came out really well for both sides. 
just uh, yeah, City of Oxford keeping the lead with that uh, extra conversion. Um, but again, great f staying in the fight from City of Oxford there. Hurstbit Point making a fantastic break down the middle of the pitch. But um, okay, time's as, we, as we all know, it's so important in seven, just staying in that defensive battle. Boys. And being able to scrap your opposition player. Set! Feed from Hurstbit Point. That's Inja at scrum half. And they'll take it right to the line. And they've picked a good hole. Away goes Tusker. There's the offload. And it's a blistering start for Ollie Das. Welsh under 18 international with a good score. Put through the hole by the first try score as well, Tusker, the Harlequins man. Those are two pretty key players for Hurstbit Point. Yeah, the two magic men combining once again with uh, Das well, just on the striding his way One down the left hand the side uh, after a great offload there. Um, let's see if they can sink this kick to go up. Well, Hurstbit Point have already lost to Trinity and to Ipswich School, which is 17, uh, well, a pretty fair to assessment to in them, all fairness, them. because those are two seriously Ten. impressive sides. Mm. But in theory, if they win here and then they beat Clandillo College as well, then uh, they'd need results to go their way, but it's very possible that they could uh, cause quite a good result. And uh, kick up that oh, great contest in the air from Hurstbeard Point. Not on. Just a and slight offside. knock on, very unlucky. But, um, great challenge in the air, and we see the kicking game coming into influence again. Uh, City Box with the ball now. And a little chip through. Can they get there? Looks well, like they might. Suddenly Ooh. there was a race on for uh, the City of Oxford College. Not now, it not runs now. into touch. So we'll have a break in play. Hey, Oxford. Another little Here's kick option. No one home there at all That's your mark. It, uh, That's for your mark. Hurst Pier Point. Your mark. And uh, I said, why not? Put it into the backfield and let the boys run. Well, it's Hurstbeer Point on the attack again here, slipping off the tackle. Lovely step back against the grain, slipping away from two. And now an excellent covering tackle from Tagne, who missed the first. But what a way to make up for your mistake. Six off feet. Penalty, however. Das with another break, but here is Tusker, who creates the two-on-one. Tap tackle, unable to hold back Oscar Mann. And Hurstbeer Point are spoiling the city of Oxford's day. Mm. Yeah, great attempt for a little tap tackle there from uh, Tom Coleman, but on, with no avail. Uh, Hurstbeer Point finding a lot of joy down this left-hand side at the moment. Um, and uh, Ed Tusker has been absolutely key to it. Just controlling the ball in the midfield and giving those little niche offloads out to the wingers. Well, it's a shame it's taken Hurstbeer Point this long to really get going. A big loss to Trinity and Ipswich before this. Means that this result really is uh, Ipswich's favour, depending on how results go elsewhere for them. But uh, this benefits them the most as they sit pretty on nine points at the top of this group. And Hurstbeer Point have really turned it on in this second half. But a great take off the kickoff from Freddie Cow will get no the hands. city of Oxford College rolling. Looking left and right is Cav. Offloaded through the contact, but a lack of support there. City of Oxford back to their feet. Bagney. A long reaching ball, but they come back to the left-hand side. Well, there's a strong carry through the centre and Tagne gets the offload. That's a hint of a high tackle, but it might just fall kindly instead for Zlatinger. Oh, lovely ball inside. And Hurstman Point may well have sealed this game. Yeah, that's a fantastic offload, Well, Just, just evades the, the, the two oncoming City of Oxford defenders and loops One the ball. Uh, into the path of, a, of another teammate. Just here, slightly odd decision making from the City Walks of Boys. Um, just um, just uh, spits out of there and a great little offload. Seb Maunder, the beneficiary of that good ball from Zlatinger, and off the kickoff, it's a wonderful take from Kempson as well. Put down, but. Uh, just hit me. 
Star scrum. As it's Third off the flash. referee, it will be back for a scrum for her spear point. Let's go, gents. Time's off. Not long on. to go here, but we look ahead for our next fixture, and it is a okay, time back on. seriously Crouch. impressive one over Bind. on RE2. Set. In the under-18 Boys Cup competition, because it's Kirkham Grammar School, victorious late against Hartbury, taking on Brighton College, two of the biggest names in schoolboy rugby. In touch. Good tackle there from uh, Junior Tanga. Here's your mark, Hurst. Just rock solid defending, not dying here. Yeah, you're fine. Staying in the fight, City of Oxford, even though this game has probably gotten away from them a bit too much. Hooker! They're on that. Uh, you stay on your mark. A, uh, you stay on your front, City man. City of Oxford. Gents, line gents out here. you stay on your front, man, and you come up to the mark. Just the referee ordering the boys about. Well, up it goes, but it's been picked off by Brighton, by Hurstbeer Point, even. We've got more Southwest teams on the horizon as Brighton College will be in action next. Lovely Off footwork, feet. teasing stuff from Oscar Mann. He could go all the way. An inch short, the ball pops out loose. Not well done. Very unlucky there. But it will not matter for Hurstbeer Point to take a 29-14 victory. Their first out of three here at Roslyn Park. A great performance from them, and they may have knocked City of Oxford College out of the cup competition on their way through as well. A 29-14 victory, well-deserved. Clearly the better team in this specific game, Sam. Yeah, um, Hurstbeer Point have just absolutely dazzled City of Oxford in the second half there. Uh, both teams came out very strong in the first half, but just the endurance and the, and the strength and capability of this Hurst Bear Point side got them through in the second half. I have to give a mention to uh, Ed Tusker and Ollie Das, who, have, who really dazzled us down this, left, down this near left-hand side. Um, but yeah, great game. Well, I'm afraid to say that I've teased you all very slightly with that ginormous Brighton College Kirkham game at three o'clock. Before that, we have John Fisher's school up against Stowe. That's the next game live here on RE2. Stowe school desperate for a win to keep pace with Gordons and Clifton ahead of a huge game that Stowe have at four o'clock where they could knock off Gordons and take the lead. John Fisher's school looking for their first win of the group. That action is live next here at the Howard and Rosing Park National School Sevens on RE2. Well, I hope you brushed up on your Latin recently, Sam, because John Fisher in the Roman numerals playing from left to right in their famous old strip are taking on Stowe School, who need a win here in order to keep their hopes of cup rugby alive. John Fisher, it's slightly beyond them, unfortunately. They sit on zero points. But Stowe here sit on three with a game in hand on the team above them in a group with Gordons as well, who look pretty important so far with the likes of uh, Zuko Rob amongst their ranks. But Stowe will start the fastest here with ball in hand. Out! Out! Yeah, uh, well, for the, as an ex-wicket boy, I've had many a derby day against uh, a vet of multiple strong John Fisher sides. Uh, always an aggressive and uh, capable team. Um, but unfortunately, the tournament's just got a bit away from them today. Um, but both sides coming out very strong here. John Fisher with more of the ball, just trying to work it wide now. Good turnover from Hamilton there. And it's gone backwards, so 
John Fisher can keep on driving He's over the Ugo Stowe. <laughs> Bryden this time with the turnover himself. Yeah, fantastic turnover there from Jamie Bryden. Just uh, if you want a, a uh, carbon example for a, a good strong turnover, then you look at Jamie Bryden, but now... It's Tobias Ellerton instead for Stowe, who will benefit from some quick hands back down the short side take the lead pretty clinical stuff Sam yeah I mean it all comes from the turnover in the middle of the pitch then uh, just working it wide catching that John Fisher defense out slightly uh, slightly cold there um, and uh, yeah um, Stowe take the five point or oh, seven point advantage even well it's a fast start for Stowe exactly what they need over on RE1, King School Macclesfield take on Clifton. Clifton themselves with a win against Kings there will go up to nine points. Although uh, Stowe School have two games in hand. If they win here, all they've got to do is beat Gordons. Behind, and they will top you. the group. That is a tough task though. As you said, Wilf, earlier with the, with a strong Gordon squad out this year. Winners of their own sevens, of course, mm. earlier in the run up to this tournament. But from the kickoff, John Fisher in possession, loose ball, latched upon by Hamilton, but knock-on is the call, and Stowe, the Vars winners in 2022, Bowl winners in 2023, decided to take that leap into the cup competition. Mm. They'll have a scrum here. Yeah, very unlucky there from uh, Fisher point of view, just struggling a bit here to just find That's something to get going on um, but we Crouch. have another uh, um, right. scrum here Hewlett with the feed Set. and Bear Hewlett comes away with it simply enough well cutting back against the grain a bit of ingenuity from Bristol Bro. looking to challenge Hold. the Fisher defense and they hold firm this time and then it's a great tackle. tackle from Harrison who's looking really dangerous in defense Clayton looking to skip away. But John Fisher holding strong. They do lift it off the deck. And well read. The strong line speed was spotted by Stowe, who tried to throw the miracle pass. But instead, it's been a turned over. And here comes John Fisher up to the 10 meter. Looking to create something down the short side. Release the roll! Well, there's the carry from Jalen Ryan Coker. The big miss pass. Good ball out wide there. And to the boot they go. Here we go. Well, there's a race on here that would have been won by John Fisher. The real winner, however, is the touchline. There's no option. Because yeah, he great ingenuity the from, the, uh, from the uh, winger there, from uh, John Fisher. Yeah, you're not going to lose him today with that pink scrum hat, I tell you that. You're certainly not. Marked it. Joe Mamode, now at the front of the line out as well. Bear Hewlett, ready to take it. No, no, you're definitely not 10, come on. There you go. Stay alive. And up it goes. man lift, it's for Stowe to go long, but what a take in midfield, and straight away there in behind. Beautiful pick up, and James Bristow will score. Yeah, straight from the training ground, that line out, you could see from early on that, um, that uh, Stowe were trying to work this ball out to Bristow. He's a very strong carry and he's got great feet as well. But um, yeah, long overthrow line out and a fantastic pick up there. Just to um, find that gap in the middle of the pitch and uh, stride in for another seven points. Well, Stowe, they took down the King School Macclesfield by just two points, right, thank you. but they didn't have enough for Clifton College, which puts them in a tenuous position Gordon's undefeated but if they win here and they can beat Gordon's then Clifton's loss to Gordon's might just put them through but a big big score here would help as things often come down to points difference Are you ready? as they will in this group if all the events I've just described transpire Are you ready? Yeah. interesting to see how the how the day plays plays out now We'll find all later on in the afternoon, because in the here and now, all that Stoke can do is rack up the points. Here's Mood. Mood taking contact. Goes loose and uh, 
What will be given here? Scrub only! No, 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 no! Right, ripped and then went forward, OK? Was ripped in the contact, but uh, it went down. And it rolled John Fisher's way, so they'll have the scrum. There we go. No one's done anything wrong, Just not yet. Let's see if Fisher here can. Well, I wouldn't want to call it a consolation, but it might be at this point. Um, still plenty of time left in the game. Very right. true. Mahmoud to fit this scrum. He's got plenty of options at first receiver, but he goes himself. Goes for the high Set carry. Go. Hamilton there to play nine. Got a bit of space down this left hand side now. But a strong tackle comes in from Cousins. And that will bring an end to the first half. Stow up by two tries. They'd like a couple more to re establish Thank a positive you. points difference here in this pool where they are chasing Gordons, who could be the dark horses in this competition. They keep up their good form. However, for now, Stow lead John Fisher by 14 unanswered points. Kickoff then, plucked out of the air by John Fisher, who certainly aren't out of this game yet. Here's Mahmoud, cutting against the grain, back up to the feet to challenge is Elson. Hamilton plays it to the right-hand side, cutting back against the grain, all wrapped up by Stowe, but suddenly it opens up on the blind side. Nobody home for Stowe. Back with a covering tackle is Cousins, who once again drags John Fisher into touch, and that's the there second the time either side of half time. Worth a try. Yeah, we've seen some fantastic defence on display today, and uh, two occasions from uh, Cousins out on this left flank, just staying in the fight and dragging his man back into great, touch, not allowing him for that walk in that he was so, so hopeful for. Um, well, there's, I'll clarify something for everyone at home, of course. These games do mean a lot more than perhaps we've been giving them credit, as the top two through, from each group will go through today, too. The winners of each Leave group through the cup, well no elimination side. game required. Good job, though, and the second-place team into the plate. There so go. there's a lot more on the line, as a plate place could be secured by Stowe on their own terms if they win the next two games, regardless of points difference. No, 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 no. So a win here Leave does it. remain Leave important Good job. to them. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, well, having, uh, having not played in this too long ago, you just want to spend as long away from school as possible, to be honest. Um, no, you're and, at the uh, side. Leave it. rugby is absolutely perfect, but here we go. Stowe breaking through. Lovely show and go. And that will set Stowe on their way for a third try, unless the covering tackle comes <laughs> in. Well, it was a touch high in the end by Reed. So you're right. a try for Sam Cousins. Known as chips by the Stowe boys, <laughs> but uh, what a great if game he's space, been having. Yeah, fine, but if you can go back through, Marvel. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, we, we see that um, um, wide defence from him twice in a row, and then he just strides through there. Um, almost got caught by the cover tackle, but uh, again, Stowe dazzling John Fisher here today. We'll just see here again on the replay. 
nice little show and go there and he's he's away unlucky tack tackle attempt there but Stowe again just putting the numbers up top effort from Reed to pile mm, on the pressure yeah no, God, and out of the sky it's been spilled so Stowe with another opportunity Give it positive to go it. forward Look on first yeah, by just John. a tad, a tad unlucky I'm there from it. Fisher again really struggling to just right get a, a, a oh. threshold in this game um, but we'll have another opportunity for Stowe to put more points on the board with the scrum here. Come we'll on! Lead by uh, 21 unanswered Crouch. points. Mm. And John Five. Fisher with some work to do Set. to keep out this Stowe Crouch. side that are in good form in this game. <laughs> well, it's all the way well, to that right hand side. And then back to the feet. Good desire Nelson. from Elson. But the ball's out. Ruck was formed, driven at the side legally. But in from the side, well, that's a tough call we for go. the captain, Harrison De, Ant De Antiques. Dummy switch. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Away goes the captain, Northampton Saints, Louis Haley, with a beautiful try. The dummy switch, the throw and go, what every sevens player dreams of. Formed. And he does score. You went round the side of it. Yeah, double bubble wolf. Um, just a, nut, a lovely still, little bit of uh, footwork and handling there from the from the captain himself. Okay. And then he slots the kick as well. Um, come through the gate. Just really, really great it from, was still from in. Stowe here. Um, as we'll watch again on the replay, decides to come back this way. A one and a two completely sells the John Fisher defence and uh, walks in. Louis Haley makes it look very easy. Are you ready? And Stowe up by four. Yeah. Haley on the kickoff too. Clocked out of the air, but good line speed. They do manage to free the hands and John Fisher out. with possession inside their own half where they've spent most of the game. But it might open up here down the left-hand tram line interesting to see here well if he just um once Haley takes the kick off he just sits in the backfield waiting for for a kick through or or a, or a chase or something which uh you don't see some sevens teams do although it, it can leave you a bit short in in the actual front line big carry by de antiques another but it over. could be stolen and it has been Play the ball on Lewis the Haley again well, he's miles away from the mark, but the referee waves play on as he's behind it instead. Big fend up top, and Stowe will go in for another try. Yeah, Stowe really racking up the points here. And, uh, yeah, just blowing away this, this John Fisher squad. Um, well, it's a top start to the uh, game. For Stowe and a really strong finish as well. Yeah. And they rack up their fifth try. Haley, the creator. Let's have another look at this from Haley. Gets the turnover. Good from the referee actually to let the play on, even though she wasn't by the mark. And then that's a lovely ball out the back door. The big fan, don't tackle there, sir. Carter disposed of, and uh, Stowe School have another. Yeah, again, all coming from Haley there um, with the turnover. Yeah. Nice little show and go in, and a nice uh, out the back door. On in the air first. There's no wonder that then he is touch. the captain Option. of the first 15, Knock and up. also that Saints under 18s yeah. want him Ooh, in, in the their air. team. We just have a. Uh, another scrum here with John Fisher put in well we'll look ahead then perhaps to our next game Crouch. which is live on RE2 Bye. and this time I promise you it is Set. that huge game between Kirkham and the 2023 finalist Bro, Brighton College mm. Stowe rumbling on they've got an advantage for not, not 10. 10 so two penalties on the bounce John Fisher concede and here's Poole Lovely weighted pass, and there's another man over, and Stowe will have another score. They've neglected to tell us who's wearing the number 12 shirt, unfortunately, Stowe, but once again, Haley with the assist. And it's a pretty strong performance as we 
cross over into uh, stoppage time with just the kick to come. Yeah, again, what can we say about Stowe? They have absolutely <laughs> rolled John Fisher here. Beautiful conversion to cross the 40-point mark, and that end result will leave Stowe 40 points adrift of John Fisher's school. The perfect result for them, and they'll keep the victories coming in order to secure themselves a place in the Cup or the plate. But up next, live on RE2 here at the Holden Rosenpark National School Sevens, it's a huge game as Brighton College take on Kirkham. Perhaps the biggest game on RE2 so far. This really is to decide who will finish in the cup in this incredibly tough group that also includes Hartbury College. It's Brighton, finalists in 2023, up against the finalists of the under 15 national, the under the 50 decide National Cup in Kirkham. John Lyon from Kirkham yeah. alongside me, and it's been a pretty breathless start for Kirkham today. Yeah, we're Move tackle! The toughies, really, uh, particularly the first one. We uh, last death uh, try really bailed us out, but um, of course now we're now going to slug it out with Brighton. It's a really tough group here. The hosts of the Sale Sharks we had a great game in the opener. We'll swing it away. Lovely work to break the line. McNamara on the cover. Beautiful ball over the top. What options does Alex Smith have of Sale? He'll go touch all there. himself, but oh, a foot in touch. But Alex Smith so close to breaking away already. Yeah, it's very hard to stop Alex when he gets going. Strong lad. Mark's here, Blue. I think he's given right in your gap. A line out for Brighton for a foot in touch. Good there, Blue. Well, it's been cleared downrange by Brighton, but it's Kripner on the cover, of course. The lowest sixth of Sale had a beautiful game, and he's carving up here. Only McNamara and Abidi gets on the outside. What a try by Kripner. John Lyon, the perfect start for Kirkham, and what a key player Sebi Kripner is turning out to be. 
Yeah, Seb is a really good finisher. He's, he's such a strong lad as well, quick on his feet. Um, I think one on one with, with most, he'd back him to score. Good bet, nine. Well, kick off then, and it's kicked deep as well. Beautiful try by Kripner. We'll be seeing that one over and over again, I imagine. But it's Brighton's first attack of the game. Archie Kane hands it off. And here is uh, Alex Stubbs, it is. Kane. Big, solid carrier. One of Harlequin's uh, representatives in this Brighton side. Once again, they look to take it to the line, this time through Harry Streak. But uh, you won't outmuscle Kirkham at any level. Great pick up by Kane and a beautiful offload, but the ball goes down. Oh, Young Fergus Lamb, the fullback, unfortunately just puts it at deck and possession back with Kirkham, John. Yeah, that was a, a, a case of just staying patient in defence there. Marks There's it. no panic. Um, just press up, press up. And Both sides wait for the ball before you push. Let's be patient, please. Big opportunity then for Coach. Kirkham. Reese Holst to feed this. The crucial game in this group. Kirkham have already Set. seen off Hartbury College, the second closest challengers, and a lovely ball, and away goes Lutus, and the sail fly half will touch down in the corner, despite the best efforts of a scrambling Brighton defence. Sam Arengo jones flying in with a tackle, but instead, it's a try for Lutus, and uh, you picked him out before the game, John, but... That was a really beautiful pass from right, Reese Hulse as well. Yeah, it was. He's under a lot of pressure from their scrum half. I, I watched them in the first game and um, he'd just try and pick your pocket to uh, Brighton 7. Um, so Reese got the ball away really well there. No luck from the conversion for Hulse, but a lovely ball. You see here, he just lifts this offload. He's under a whole world of pressure. Great line from Lutis as well. Good connection between the regulation 9 and 10. And tough in the corner, but uh, Kirkham go over and they're now 12 in front. Up from the kickoff, taps it back as well. Eventually slipped by Brighton and here goes Harrison Causey, dragged into touch by Henry Williams. And uh, a great set piece move off the kickoff though, John. Yeah, we've got <coughs> Sam Lutz always always gets up. He's a you know very Marcus athletic lad. A great leap on him. Um, obviously, we're not trying to take the kick off to give them the ball. We want to Crouch. get the ball back ourselves. And that's the end result Fine. for Kirkham. Set. Just got to watch his scrum half here. Hulse gets it away. Lutus assesses his options. Hulse in behind, and here's Kripner. And Kripner, for all the world, looks to go on the outside. Oh, he does brush off one. He gets rid of Brighton's 14. Lutus on the wraparound. There's the missed pass. Here is Blaney carrying on. The offload's there. Causey with the score. John Kirkham running away with it. <laughs> well. As my old uh, mate, Mr. Trenell, used to say, 21 points isn't enough, but uh, we get this, we're only on 19. But some good support play there, and um, that's what know. gave that, that try by Causey. The great finish by Harrison Causey. Try against uh, Hartbury College, and now one here against Brighton. He turns up in the big occasions. And a great effort from the kick, but just short. Just wide that right hand upright. One. Well, we didn't know how Kirkham would fare after that uh, defeat in the cup final. We've seen Harrow already. It hasn't uh, tied them out. And, well, Kirkham's still flying as well, John. Yeah, we're going all right, but uh, it's the bright and very dangerous. But once again, up goes Luter. Serious leap on the young lad. This time it's just forward. I think he's chipped a fingernail there, Luter. 
Let's go, please, Blue. I'm sure he'll recover in good time. Crouch! Bind! Set! Oh, Stubbs with the feed, and Holst takes him on the outside. Holst on Stubbs, wrapped up by Kane. Well, they're looking to drive him into touch, touch and between Stubbs and Kane, they're able to drag him off field, so Kirkham will not find a fourth in the end of this first half, but a pretty complete performance by Kirkham to lead by 17 at the break, John. Yeah, it just shows, you know, seven minutes, you have the majority of possession, you know, you've obviously given yourself a chance to score tries, but we took out three good chances there, but, you know, Brighton will be hoping in the second half to have more of the ball. Um, they are dangerous. 17 points is uh, a bit of a worry still, but uh, I'll be happy with one more try. Well, Brighton have a bit of a mountain to climb in the second half, but they've certainly got the quality to do so. Otherwise, the... Uh, Finalists in 2023 might be falling into the plate. The second half is live here on RE2 at the Howland Rosen Park National School Sevens in just a moment's time. off then by Kirkham as the sun once again threatens to break through here at Roslyn Park and it's a good offload to set Kane on his way and here goes Fergus Lamb the flying crew Kane over in support a big physical presence on the field of sevens Borsberg well it's James Davis actually the captain at 13 with the head tape just like Kane lost now Strong counter ruck. Some lovely footwork. And Arengo Jones has just the sweep of the beat inside and out. But excellent work by Dupkin to keep hold of him. But here now is Stubbs over the top towards Horsberg. Horsberg now through a tackle. Last ditch defending from Kirkham. But a knock on is given to the dismay of young Alex Stubbs at number seven and uh, well some scramble defense from Kirkham but they've kept them out John let's go please blue waiting for you keep patient keep patient hopefully mistake will come but um, you know there's no point panicking um, and we didn't there you make the change then well it will be a scrum then in Kirkham's favor Change coming here, let's go. Once the uh, changes are made. On comes uh, Tomlinson. Who a good, good impact against Hartbury College. On the field, of course, when that last ditch try went over. Set! Oh, it's been stolen, stolen by Alex, Alex Stubbs. But another knock on. Stubbs, unfortunate there. You highlighted him as a threat before, John, and Alex Stubbs let's go, please, still causing a nuisance. Yeah, he is. Luckily there, he's, uh, he's, he's knocked it on for us, but he, you know, he, he's Crouch. always trying to get the ball at these scrums. Bain! Set! Kirkham with another Stay feed. D just about dug out, and Lutus put some air on it. It will bounce in field, a good clearance in the end. Quick line out, but they're not five. But they will have the line out again. Miller Cole hoping to go fast, but instead they've been brought back. Let's just push one meter. Picked out of the air. Stubbs plays it wide. 
Lamb on the wraparound, but maybe Williams will go himself. Lamb in support, flying through the contact. Good attempt at Jack. And Lutus was over the ball, but just unable to keep a hold Scrum. of it. Scrum. But uh, impressive defence from Kirkham, looking just for a clean floor. sheet against Brighton. That would be a statement, John. Yeah, they're, they're a good side, Brighton. Um, <laughs> Always, always, you know, the Crouch. always very competitive. They never give up. Fine. They'll be fighting right to the end, I'm sure. Set. Well, what can Brighton offer as uh, Alex Stubbs looks to go down the blind side himself? Wonderful covering tackle from Tomlinson, but back to his feet, Stubbs, and offloading it to Miller Cole. Yeah, Lofted pass to Lamb, who's on the wraparound to help Williams out there. He does come away with it. Lamb stepping inside and out. Move tackle! Attack there. Brightner over the ball. You're never on side. And an offside. You're called. never on side. Harrison Causey he just didn't retreat quickly He's enough. Ten. Now Lamb. Patient play from him. Cole with the little out the back door. Move tackle! Lamb brought down by his opposite number. Cole frees the hands. Stubbs, little chip in behind, but great cover this time from Tomlinson once again. And he might look to open up Brighton here. Well, he's beaten Miller Cole. Tomlinson takes on the sweeper. Lovely offload off the deck. And Kirkham are in behind. <laughs> and they might go coast to coast here if they've got the legs. James Davis, the captain, on the cover. But high tackle is the call. And we could see a card here. Instead, it's a quick tap. And that will free up the hands. Acres and acres of space for Harry Ray to seal the game. John Lyon, 13. what a clinical counter-attack by Kirkham. And what an impact Harry Tomlinson has made. Yeah, it's almost a bit of a will-o'-the-wisp, isn't he, Tom? But when he made that kick in the first game, everyone was going, what are you doing, Tom? But he, he's the type of lad who just come out with a little bit of magic. Um, he's very elusive. Um, yeah, that's uh, probably taking it away now. For the second time in a game in a row, Harry Tomlinson has been decisive. You can't blame Harrison Causey for not having the legs. Hunted down by James Davies. He's a really talented player himself, but the quick thinking by Kirkham. Harry Ray scores. Yeah, you're on a yellow, that's why. Well, there was a sending off as well in the mix of things. So uh, for the rest of the game, Kirkham will have the one-man advantage to boot. And what a complete performance it's been by Kirkham. If there was any doubt if they would challenge in this Move competition. They've put those to bed with two huge wins. Miller Cole taps quickly. Miller! Ten. Retreat, keep going, wins another keep, penalty. Going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Now Lamb now. will test them. Over the top to find Cole. He thinks about feeding Lamb. This time he does have possession. Lamb goes to the line. Just about scragged. Move tackle! Miller Cole frees up the hands well. Horsburgh, great pace. Frees up the offload. What a take that is by Sam Marengo Jones. Over the top to Horsburgh, who's looking to take on his man. But there is once the again ball. Sebi Kripner. Lamb drops upon it. Blue There's a the boot in there Red for Milan. And it will be a line out. But in this crucial, crucial game, Kirkham have won it with just 30 seconds to go. John Lyon, a great performance. Yeah, surprised me. I mean, obviously, we always had a chance, but, um, you know, the moment it's nil. <laughs> Commentators curse, they'll probably score at the end, but, yeah, super performance. Uh, well, that's a beautiful line by Henry Williams, and just as we say it, Dylan Moss fresh on the field will score for Brighton, but it will be nothing but a consolation as the buzzer goes on the referee's watch. That's Kirkham time. takes victory for the third time here at Roslyn Park, and they will shoot to the very top of this group with just the, uh, the bottom sides left to face. Not the result that Brighton were after, not the result that Hartley were after. One of those two sides will be into the plate. An absolute whitewash from Kirkham, who kept Brighton out of the game. John Lyons, some final words from you on an excellent performance.
Yeah, <laughs> tough game. The boys are obviously blowing. Um, took a lot out of us that, but hopefully uh, one more game to go today. Rest up tonight and uh, come back firing tomorrow with whoever we have to face. Thanks so much for coming and speaking with us, John. John Lyon there of Kirkham, who can be really proud of a top, top, top performance. Kirkham Grammar School in this huge game, knock off last year's finalists by 22 points to seven and all but secure their place in the cup competition. Well, don't go anywhere, of course, because here on RE2, the under 18s cup competition continues. In fact, we're going to take a break and rejoin the girls' ace competitions as Worthing College are back in action here, this time up against Bishop's Burton College. That's the next game live here on RE2. Thank you very much uh, to Wilf Kemsley and to John Lyon as well from Kirkham Grammar School. What price? A Kirkham Grammar School Harrow final. Who knows? We'll see a repeat of the under-18 15-a-side competition. Right now, our attention switch to the Women's Ace League competition. Bishop Burton College kicking us off against Worthing College. Now, Worthing are three from three. They're looking to end the day undefeated in this pool, Bishop advantage. Burton College still looking for their Knock first on. win. No advantage. And it will be the toughest of asks, but it's been a tough pool stage. Worthing College in a group with South Gloucestershire and Stroud Let's College, Hartpool and City of Oxford College Fine. as well. Set. But Bishop Burton College with the first scrum here, with possession, and running it with Cockroft Smith. Cockroft Smith looks for the offload. Worthing College sees upon it. Pass it back inside with Mimi Clifford. Nice breakthrough. Daisy Evans is here. She's knocked too high. over in contact. High tackle, though. 19, leave it. Too high. 10. 10. Desperate defence from Bishop Burton College and good defence, but just getting that shot a little bit too high. Looped up the back. That was nice from Worthing College. And Sasha Roberts is the beneficiary. If possible, the other side, yeah. The pace setters in the pool, starting as they have played all day. 
They beat uh, City of Oxford College 40 points to seven in their first match and have continued pretty much in similar vein since then. And this is, in summary, Rock Y, this kind of play, this kind of ambition, lovely loop out the back of the hands. And that was from Clara Stevens. Right, ready, let's go. Good take from the restart. The sun in the eyes of Bishop Burton College and a breakdown field too. In touch, thank you, touch judge. Channel please, five meters channel green. A bit, another couple of metres, please. Last match of the day okay. for both these teams. No, no, no. Not straight. There's no well of competition. What do you want, line out of scrum? Has to be an element of competition available. So Bishop Burton then with the... Ready, ready. Crouch. from the scrum. Bind, set. Ella Acton, scrum half. Has a good scrum to work from, and that's a nice pass too. Cockcroft-Smith, here she goes, sees a break and then capitalises. The captain, one of the under-18 England girls in this Bishop Burton side. Play, compete for Counter it, you two, is good, compete though. for it, yes. And away Morgan now. College. Let it go, Green. Play on. Half break spotted. That was Stevens again. She then gets the offload from the floor away. One on one on the outside here. And stretching her legs once more is Sasha Roberts. She has to pass on the inside this time. But there's plenty of support to run this home. Clara Stevens this time. The favour returned from Roberts. And Stevens scores. You've only got 30 seconds, so no water until after. Roberts hauled down, and it was good defence. Really was because from Bishop Burton's number nine, Ella Acton. For the ball, yeah. And that was a good competition. Okay. Time off, we've got a spare ball. ball, ball. Uh, where the budgie smuggler is. Spare ball. ball, ball. So we're all looking for a ball here. And everyone from the Worthing College side scouring around, looking to see where deliverance may come from. They're all in there. And the referee as well. I should say, by the way, that uh, although this is the last of the pool stage matches for uh, both these teams here, as Worthing College are going to top the group if they win this match, um, that will see them through Time to off. the final of the under-18s girls' ace competition. And that match will be played at 4.20. So... Effectively, the, the last match here before the final, unless something goes drastically wrong for Worthing College in Isolation, this match. Isolation, holding on. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, leave! And Amy Bush is uh, making the most of disorganisation in the Bishop Burton College ranks. Just for a moment, they were being told to get back 10 and were trying to do so. But Amy Bush... Um, wasn't going to wait around for them to get back on side, was she? She just brushed them off here. The penalty won by Bush for One her strength off. over the ball, One and it off. wasn't being released. And then here we go. Players not back 10. And Honey Cockroach-Smith um, was trying to get back uh, and was slightly off balance as 
Amy Bush went through. Upright tackle, bring him down. So Honey Cockroft Smith taps and goes from the penalty. Good tackle. And Keely Lewis. Bishop Burton again. Go through the phases. Cockroft Smith. It's a nice line. Tackle away. No hands, no blue. Heavy at the contact, and that is what Worthing College lap up. Chance to turn the ball over, but they still don't. So it's just nice phase play from Bishop Burton. Keeping possession against a, a side who have been so dominant today. Worthing College. Good bustle from the carry by Penny Robinson. Well done, Bish. Late tackle. Cockroft Smith. It's all green and blue at the moment. Stabbed in behind here. The chase is being led by Robinson. Go for the ball. Now get away. She lets Let the player it leave up. it green. No hands, please. And Worthing College. Yeah, you're good. Under pressure themselves now. But Mimi Clifford runs her team out of a spot of bother. And there are numbers away here. They're going to have to scramble well here. Bishop Burton if they're to stop another Worthing College score. But Freya Corbin is going to say no, no, no. Corbin closes the that door is time. You might on well Bishop score Burton it. College. The first half dominated by Worthing College. Twenty-four points to nil to Worthing College at half-time against Bishop Burton. the score as they are and Worthing College is dominant so far today it does look like they will be booking themselves into the final at 420 they will face either Exeter College or Oakland's College those two teams are tied at the top of the other pool at the moment so one of those teams the opposition for Worthing College in the final at Lock on 420 two, Worthing. And, and I only say that because Worthing College are up so far over. and have been up all day and are a side that are so powerful and so well organized so that is lily smith 
And now Amy Bush. Good hands again Green, to Freya Corbett. Good hands again to this is a group of 11 young people aged 18 to 25 from across England who volunteer their time. Ready, crouch! I also, it's a, it's a certain fact that Worthy will be in the final because even if they were to lose here, the points difference is such that they would still qualify ahead of South Gloucestershire and Stroud College. So it is, it is all but done in that regard. Not meaning to be disrespectful in any way to Bishop Burton College and what they're capable of in this second half. Rebecca Cowling. Penny Robinson. Rock, no hands. Let it go, Blue. Let it go. Good contest for the ball. Just too late. Hands. Cat Holt was uh, too late to the ball, said the referee, although strong over it when she was there. Play on, play on. Cockross play on. Smith looked to play that in behind. Instead, she plays it out the back. That was smart and uh, keeps the play alive. And release. Robinson. Ruck there. One man, Ruck. Barlow here. Chloe Barlow. Drive straight. I tackle. Wait. And a yellow card for Worthing College for the high tackle. It's a great chance now for Bishop Burton. Honey Cockcroft Smith. Robinson decides to go straight. They are playing down a very yeah, got it. direct channel. From here, from here. Bishop Burton, and they lose the ball on the floor. The six women of Worthing still wanting to play, and we're going to have a break here. I think Penny Robinson is, is down and seeking attention, so we'll come back to both groups' huddles. Some of the highlights from uh, so far in the match. Things got off to a good start with Clara Stevens, although this was the second try we saw. Stevens having created the first try for Sasha Roberts. And they were strong in defence, Worthing College. Right. Daisy Evans with a tackle there before a penalty was won. It's a penalty here. And we do have two 15s here, yeah. on the pitch for Worthing College. So Amy Bush is wearing 15. Lily Smith here. is wearing 15 as well. So we said uh, Amy Bush scored, but Lily Smith, it may well have been. And we're making sure we find out uh, on that front. But this was the first score of the match. Um, Sasha Roberts benefiting from that flicked offload from Clara Stevens. Time on. So Worthing still down to six. But playing Lock on advantage. 22. And good pressure from Bishop Burke forcing that Nothing. mistake. Green scrum. And Green Scrub will have uh, an excellent field position from which to work here. One and a half. Ready? Ready? Crouch. Bind. Set. Bishop Burton from the base with Ella Acton. Good offload to Jazz Harrison. First lady for the uh, pitch by Worthing College. And they are so comfortable on the ball, no matter where they are on the field. Although that mistake uh, 
knock on by Blue. Rather no, undermines that green, statement uh, for the first time. They make an error in contact. Yep. So another chance for Bishop Duck to see if they can cross Find. the whitewash. Set. I haven't conceded any points in this second half, so they're looking for the first score of the half from either team. Ella Acton does get it away. Here's Cockcroft-Smith going off on a, an excursion of all her own making. Yeah, Not picks held. up again, let go. She gets good. up again, needs support here, finds it. Great offload from Cockcroft-Smith <laughs> and Acton following up and diving over. Bishop Burton College on the board against Worthing. And that is no mean feat. Not many sides have done that today. Yes, good, yeah. They lead in the second half through this try. Cockcross Smith uh, did so well to get up again after the tackle from Freya Corbin and then to find Acton. Someone who's back back playing after a year off due to her injuries. Ella Acton. Cockcroft Smith. That's taken by Alice uh, Redfern. First person in legal. Bishop Burton again. And Worthing having rather gone off the boil here. They're going to top the pool. They're going to be in the final later, but they are. Let it go. Oh, that's right. Not she wasn't at down. Play on. First half sells right now. We'll have a scrum. I stopped it because he went near the injured player. Sorry, I was there anyway. She was there, she got up. You know what I mean? I had that speed and everything. You would, yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't doubt it. We're going to have a scrum. Scrum there, ball. Blue, because <laughs> I stopped it because he went too near the injured players. Abby scrum. Lyons saying, don't worry, ref. I, I was going to cover Blue her. ball. Blue ball. Let's go. Blue ball. I didn't need to stop that. I would have got there before she got to my player. One play. Last play, yeah. <laughs> right, good to go, girls. Let's go. Crowd. Massive thank you, uh, Must Bind. go here to the London Society Set. of Referees, who once again have provided all the referees across the competition. They've all been so well organised in uh, managing these matches and full of humour as well. And uh, this match, no exception. And Worthing College looking with the last play of the game to end things with a breakout try. It will be Mimi Clifford who runs the distance. Don't have to if you don't want to. So this is Alice Redfern who's taking the shot on goal and she gets it. That is some drop kick from Alice Redfern and Worthing go beyond the 30 points Thank mark. You, Thank you. Great speed from Clifford here. One chaser back and Thank you. she always had the beating of her, Just did Clifford. As well. Thank you very much. Thank you. But Jazz Harrison stuck to the task and even uh, managed to land a bit of a shot on number 14, Mimi Clifford. But full time at the final group stage of the Women's Ace League, Worthing College win. They are through to the final, 4.20 on RE1. That's not this live stream, that's a different live stream. If you want to watch the final of the Women's Under-18s Ace League, Worthing College are in it.
Oakham School against Gothforth Academy next. And these two schools facing off in their pool stage match now. It's been a difficult uh, day for both these two schools. There's been a, a lot of competition out there in this Group C. And the two schools both looking for their first win of the day. Played three, lost three so far at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens in 2024. Can they end the day with a victory? Well, Anna Rose, um, welcome back to the commentary box. It's great to have your company for this one between Oakham and Gosforth. Gosforth, um, we saw them earlier today uh, in action, difficult encounter earlier on in the group when they faced uh, Glantaff from Wales, who are second in the group now, but this is a great chance for both teams to end the day on a high. So Oakham in behind here. Could take from Gosford. They're dragged into touch, though, and Oakham will have the ball. I'm really excited to see how both these sides come against each other and see how who will take the win. Yeah, Archie Ryan um, there was hunting after the ball. Did some good work to drag Gosford into touch. And now the line out taken from AJ Andrews. That's a big throw of the dummy. Gosforth give the penalty away. AJ Andrews again. Cut back from uh, the number two, Hugh Windham. Still going now. Gosforth onto the line. Back with Andrews. I think he's got there. Yeah, I think so too. Brilliant finish from the Oakham boy. He did really well to not be held up there. He managed to find a gap and put it down. Really well done. And he slotted those for two as well. Well, such a pedigree uh, that Oakham have in sevens and in fifteens and schoolboy rugby particularly. They are one of the famous names always in the draw. And Andrews fights hard for this first try of the match, even though they haven't had uh, a day that we might be used to seeing from Oakham, given their pedigree. Three consecutive Vars and semi-finals at Roslyn Park and a final back in 2022. Continental tyres. Schools Cup winners in 2023, of course, as well. And that was at Twickenham. That was just a year ago. So it's a, it's a different era, different faces for Oakham and not necessarily the success that they're used to this year. Yeah, they've got some um, some talent, some uh, um, old boys in the Premiership still now. Sam Wustu, who was at Wasp before they folded, and Jack Van Plot, Hawkfleet, who is at Leicester Tigers. Yeah, good point. That goes along with... Um, Tom Croft, Matt Smith, Lewis Moody, Alex Good, all uh, yesteryear from Oakham. Archie Ryan here and plays it into Thomas Ross's hands. Good step through the middle. Now this is Babworth. Speculator comes back to AJ Andrews. Really well played to keep that alive actually there. They're passing through the, through the hands really, really nicely and just trying to keep the ball alive. Eventually, Gosforth get their hands on it. Oh, that was a, a knock on, I think. And be surprised if this isn't a yellow card. Yeah, it seemed like that might be cynical, but I think refs allowed it to play on. Yeah, it does seem uh, quite generous. Normally, Sevens has more of a, a zero tolerance approach to knock ons. Um, yeah, I think that's because the deliberate the knock-on style. I mean, yeah, I think that's because the stakes are so much higher. So, if you it's deemed a cynical foul, then yeah, you like it to go off and get that yellow. But nice that the referee is just playing on here. Gosforth, one hand tapping it back, and they begin from 100 meters out, going round the outside though, and burning Oakham boys. Big fend as well. What wow. a breakout! Gosforth Academy's Josh Farley has gone the distance, 100 plus metres, to get the first score for Gosforth. Yeah, brilliant individual try. Just a turn of pace all the way from his own try line. 
captain, playmaker and game breaker. And kicker there, got the two as well. Brilliant individual try there. Thought he might have been caught there, but no, he pushed him off the strength to carry on and just stride it out on through. What's the overall meterage on that, do you think, uh, Anna Rose? 100 metres between try line to try line, plus the extra bend on that. You're looking yeah. at 110? Oh, yeah. I'd, I think I'd go more 105, but yeah. Uh, James, you're going to be so happy. I'm going to back your geometry more than mine, so we'll go with that. Taken by Thomas Ross. Nicely poised here now with Gosforth having landed their first points of the match. Alfie Hughes, big Alfie Hughes still going. Oh, fighting them away, Alfie Hughes now. Can he offload as well? Two Gosforth boys trailing in his wake. A monstrous run. Yeah, brilliant from Alfie Hughes. Just seemed to shrug off those players as if they weren't really there. So brilliant strength from him. And it's the cardboard cutout treatment from Alfie Hughes. Thomas Ross, another sizable figure in Oakham's ranks. His day, Lawrence Day. Gosforth trying to steal the ball. It's nice to see both these teams just playing a bit more freely than we've seen in previous games, maybe come again, coming against some tougher opposition. But it's nice to see both of them just playing quite freely in a lot closer game. Yeah, it's been a tough uh, day, certainly, with some of the opposition in this pool. But they are really showing what they're capable of, Oakham. And that was nice from Thomas Ross. It's been driving straight for most of the match, but there we see an extension of the skills repertoire of Thomas Ross. Yeah, I thought it was really nice for Oakham just to keep the ball there. They weren't too rushed about getting to that try line, knowing that they've got time on their side. Just keeping the ball in hand, going width to width, and there they go, get a score at the end of it. This is the pool which um, has had Glantaff in it, Cranley School as well, back-to-back -back winners uh, five years or so ago. Alfie Hughes in, in typical form for this try. Yeah, brilliant hit to carry inside to bring the defenders in. He does really well to just wait and wait and wait and then finds that gap. And the big man has a place on a sevens field. Um, I've always said it, and both Alfie Hughes and Thomas Ross proving that for Oakham School. 12 points to seven against Gosforth Academy at halftime in the last match of the day for both these two schools. Yeah. Seven minutes of the day here at Roslyn Park for Oakham School and Gosforth Academy. The chance to end the match on a high. Now the sneaky short one as he left it to go over the 10. That was well done. Almost took it too early, but that was smart from Gosforth. And they've taken this half by storm. Back inside, beautiful score. Brilliant try. So many parts to this try to admire. Yeah, I really liked how we saw at the, at the kickoff the little grubber, the choice to go along the floor, the grabber rather than go the high kick. So 
and he knew exactly what he was doing, picked up. I thought he'd picked it up slightly too early, but he seemed to have enough weight in it. It was perfect. No dice with the conversion, but we're all square thanks to this. Right from the restart, carefully doesn't take it too early. That was class play from number 22. That is Malin Mosdale. And from that moment, they were off and going and that over-the-top offload and then the ability to hold on to the ball in flight when it looked like he'd lost it. From one offload to the next, then Oakham then giving one out the back as well. As type of try, you just shouldn't score. There were three reasons why that shouldn't have worked. The speculator offload, the dive for the line with almost losing the ball and the restart, but they made it work. Anyway, Oakham want to strike back immediately and will. Cruising down the outside is Lawrence Day. Actually having to re rely on a little bit more speed than cruising speed. He was at full gas for that. Yeah, this game's super open at the moment. It's too tough, to, too tough to, and too close to call right, the, right now. Be right, Anna Rose, from what you said earlier, in that two teams loosening the bolts a little bit and uh, playing with freedom. It's a brilliant kick there as well from the distance. Yeah, the wind has picked up here at Roslyn Park as well, and that was in the face of Oakham. So AJ Andrews kicks off. Good chase from Charlie Roberts. Penalty, Oakham. Brilliant defensive there to get the hands over the ball there. Brilliant. Ross with the draw and give. Andrews with the dummy and then pass. Chip in behind from Hardwick. Tackle, release, release. Advantage inside. Gosseth with the penalty. This match getting increasingly more open and expansive, and Gosforth opening up more box of tricks. Picking it up, still going is Josh Jones. Jones Brilliant needs tackle. support. Eventually comes with the reinforcements, and Conrad Thorpe has gone through. Brilliant team try there, bringing everyone into the game. Really nice. Every time that we thought it was over, another offload, bring someone else in. But knocked against the post, Anna Rose. That would have leveled things up from under the sticks as well. Yeah, I really hope that doesn't come back around to bite him. Great tap tackle here. Yeah, that gap just opened up there. Him to slot it in. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Too short for the restart. Oaken with uh, possession in centre field. So much you can do from here. They don't wait until they're set. They keep going at speed. Yeah, Gosworth were ready for them. Hardwick's pass doesn't uh, go where it needs to. It's really nice seeing this game. Both teams have got so much pace in their squad. It's really nice me, seeing two Black. really attacking sides. I'm in the middle. Right. So you give. Perfect, thank you. Clever short line out from Gosforth. Oakham's press defence uh, is good. But they've boxed their way out of it, and now they're onto the outside. Catching Oakham a little short handed. But then they regather and claw their way back and force the knock on. That was good cover defence in the end. Yeah, I think we've seen quite a few offloads in this game. I'd potentially like to see this both teams just trying to hold the ball on for a bit longer, maybe go to ground rather than turning over the ball quite so much. 
Crouch. Crouch. Fine. Set. Tensions of the scrum half from Gosford. Yes, yes. Tackle, and the big release. Tackle. Lands a good shot on him, but still Oakham's ball. Charlie Babworth. Charlie Roberts. Got a jagging sidestep as Roberts. Hardwick. Leave. Gosforth ball, but illegally taken back. So penalty to Gosforth. Last minute of play here. And this match is still hanging in the balance. Both teams looking for their Don't touch him too. first win, and it would be the only win at Roslyn Park this year for them. The under-16 <laughs> cup group stage ends after Take the final battle. whistle. Oakham still two points ahead. Babworth. Advantage, yellow offside. Hardwick. Working it to the sidelines, then back in again. Offside. Penalty again, last 30 seconds, so Oakham can surely from here hold on to the ball. Everything's in their own destiny, but they well fancy another try, won't they? Big hole in the middle. Jacob Hardwick Bring goes through strength. the first, and then he'll look for the offload. Oh, it's still there now. Gosforth, no. They knock it on. First one was fine, second one was a knock-on. Scrum down, black ball. Do you need to watch your language, please? Gosforth will be really upset with that. Black. Just that fumble. Really, really unfortunate there. Yeah, that could have been them away. Pick it up, and there wasn't necessarily the space for that player to go Last himself, play. but he could have played in someone else. Yeah, those things are always much more difficult when you're actually on the pitch rather than watching it, though. So, especially in the diet, end of the game, much harder to do when you're actually involved. 19 17. Open. Crouch! AJ Andrews. Fine! With the ball. Set! Andrews goes down the blind side. He wants to end with another try. And Andrews will. Scampering <laughs> round the outside. Brilliant option. He saw the gap and just thought, yep, yeah, I'll have that one. Watch yes, your actions please. after the ball. Watch your actions. Well, no hint of just getting the ball off there was there from Andrews. He wanted to have more fun out in the sun at Roslyn Park, and let's have a look at it again. 24-17. You can see him scanning the, the field now there to see if there is a gap. I think he knows exactly what he's doing before he puts the ball in. Takes good opportunity, one fend, and scores underneath the face. So final score between Oakham and Gosforth Academy, 24 points to 17. It is Oakham who get that solitary win of the day in this last encounter. Rugby school against Colleg Cigar now. Group stages once again. And Colleg Cigar kick off. Rugby That's school fine. Claiming it. 
both with an outside chance these schools of making it through to the plate if results elsewhere go their way so they're aiming to do Tackle. everything they can to keep those hopes alive toby hunt pops it off that was rufus pierce jordan strider ball in the hands of number seven there edward mclean Tackle. There's Strydon. Pierce. Back to Hunt. Big man is Toby Hunt. Spun round. Has to go back to Hunt for safekeeping of the ball. First man. No, feet, no red. Leave it. Hands away. Colleague Cigar's hands can't yet get onto it. Strydon. Big pass from the number four. Pace of. Proceeding slows down. Tackle, roll, step. Some big collisions out there already. Advantage six offside from the ruck. Yeah, Colic Cigar trying to come out the line and put pressure on, but that leaves them a little Advantage bit open over. here. And Toby Hunts with numerous <laughs> inputs into the phase, rounds it off with the most important touch, the try scoring touch. and knocks it over as well. Yeah, I think there was some really, really brilliant play from the number 11 from <coughs> rugby. Just holds strong, doesn't get pushed off the ball, takes direct line to goal, steps one player, does really well not to get tackled there, then does a brilliant offload for them to go score. When you're ready. Timing, please, guys. The side which looks like they're going to top the pool is Radley College. Uh, That's 10. Our first at the moment. That's Finn fine, Lee Second. That's Ruffin his fight. And Colleg Cigar third and fourth, but with a win each, as mentioned already, they could man. possibly help themselves into hands the away, hands away. with a slice of fortune elsewhere and a mountain full of points in this one if they can rack them up. Colleg Cigar chasing the game though. Morgan now. Ellis Price, who has an enormous pass on him. And that one should have been allowed to play because that was flair personified from Ellis Price. Yeah, exactly. I think it also was really, really close to not being forward, but I think maybe just forward. But impeccable effort to get it to that, that distance as well. Plays the game quite differently, Ellis Price. I saw him earlier in action against Crouch. Bimbro and Deep. Bind really goes off Set. on his own script at times and then you wonder what's happening next and all of a sudden he's played a try scoring pass in for a teammate he's got a really interesting style of play his rugby schools number 14 Harry Tannett was on the charge there's Pierce now Jack Bran pass from Graffin didn't go to plan Worthing College. That's yours. And Exeter College. And they will play that final one. College Cigar will be really happy with that unforced error turnover. They can get the game possession because they haven't had loads of possession yet. So nice to see them on the ball a bit more. Worthing College versus Exeter College. And that match is scheduled That's a long way outside, guys. Line out. Scrum. There is a bit of wind uh, here, but actually, I think the wind that's blowing on this pitch would have helped that. Um, throw and be a little bit more straight it was uh, that was pretty crooked yeah I'm not sure he could get away with that Crouch Pines set that scrum half now can he uh, Leave him. disrupt this scrum for Colleg Cigar nice uh, smuggling of the ball away double switch in midfield now they loop round lovely play for rugby and going all the way to the house, Rufus Pierce, the man they call the goose, with a smile on his face from start to finish. Yeah, he looks super happy with that. And I'm not surprised, he took a really, really good line, the gap opened up, and he managed to come straight through. Really brilliant play. Thought he might be able to pop it to the right, but instead he just took it on himself, fair play. He starts his smile when he receives this ball, and he's 60 metres from the line. 
Yeah, I think maybe a set play, maybe they knew exactly what was going on. He saw the cap, gap and was brilliant. Stride on through it. I thought he might be caught here, 11 against 11, but no. Did very, very well. Timing, guys. That's a lovely score for Brookvick. Wing is offside. Winger in front. Price. That's back again. Pass nice fine. pass to open up the left hand side with Rodoladek. Price seems like a real playmaker for this college cigar side. As you said, he just waits and waits and waits and sees, waits for the um, pass to open up and then he needs to make a wonder pass. Space though for a more straightforward form of rugby. Coming through from Graffen, Robert Graffen. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant that's strength fine. to keep that alive. Lovely offload then as well. Jack Brew. No, you've no, you never tried to lift it, mate. With the next uh, passage of play. Jack Brand, then it's Hunt. Colleagues Cigar have done well just to get back and slow this attack down. They look to be running this one in a few phases ago. Alfie Mitchell switches things Tackle up. Tackle release! Bran again. <laughs> Colleagues Cigar have worked a defensive marvel there. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be one on to goal, but no, unfortunately. On the halfway. Oh, they've done really, really the well halfway. there, actually, to defensively. Brilliant defensive efforts. Not long before half time, can Colleague Cigar find their first Last points play. in this match? Tyler Davis doesn't fancy it himself, so he sends the ball back down the line. Ellis Price sends it back to where it's come from. Now, here is Davis. Plays it off Sakalini. the floor. Cautiously making their way forward. Our Still last cigar. play, guys. Price. Over to the left-hand side. Holy Cigar so patient in this attack. Just waiting and waiting for something to come up. That's nice from Price. Now they have the chance to run this through. Cleon Jones has passed it nicely to the left wing. Rugby, though, shut it down. <laughs> You're in at the side there. And the man doing the resoundingly that, that's impressive side, yeah. defensive uh, effort was Edward McLean. No. And McLean ensures that rugby don't concede at the end of the first half. A breathless, uh, tiring passage of play. They need more than a minute for half time, I think, yeah, Anna Rose. Yeah, definitely. It was very, very, a very, very end to end start to this game. And I think College Cigar will be quite unhappy to not be on the score sheet because they've made some really, really good attacking efforts. So this is the reverse view. This is where we are um, at half time in the commentary box here. And I wanted to ask Anna Rose, from, from the rugby you've seen here, you've been here a week, uh, you've watched, I think, every game on RE2. Um, the level that we're seeing with the under 18s boys today, um, is it is it the best quality of rugby that you've seen? Because there's you know there's different categories. Every category has its uh, has its uh, merits as well. But are we see are we seeing the very highest quality, or do you think we're seeing the most just the most physical? Um, to be honest, I think each um, age group and each like gender showed their own um, qualities. I think during the, the under 18s has probably been the best stuff that I've seen so far. The, both the physicality and the strength and. Also, the speed of this game is just so much faster than the other stuff that I've seen. But actually, everything has, it, as you said, has its own merit. I think the girls' stuff that we saw, that we've seen today and yesterday, I thought Jess were brilliant. Their side yesterday was so athletic; they were so good, and I thought that was brilliant for the girls' game. The other under 14 stuff that I saw yesterday was also brilliant. Maybe less physical, but they're just such athletes, those young boys. And I, to be honest, I think everything's been so so brilliant. Yeah, it's. Uh Pick out Jess, for example. Yeah, the uh, Jamira English-speaking school um, from Dubai. Yeah, they've been they've been excellent, haven't they? Across so many categories, it's been good to see them. Um, rugby school have been playing the game for a fair old while. I think it's fair to say, having created it uh, 201 years ago now. Uh, we celebrated their 
a double centenary last year. And they are 12 points to love up against Colleg Cigar. And maybe, just maybe, they'll have a chance to go through to the plate tomorrow. But only the second place uh, team in the pool does that. And if rugby can add some That's more 10 points timing. to their total Fair here. contest. And if a result on going on right now in RE1. If you're watching this online, Still go and check the score on RE1 right now on a different live stream. Dare we say leave our, our show here, but check out the RE1 live stream to see what the score is, because if Fimbra are losing, there is uh, some chance that rugby school could go Cramped. through still. Bind, set. I wonder if um, one of the rugby uh, players knew that, because when they decided to kick it out at half time, um, he Colics. was quite annoyed. Sorry. So. I wonder if he knew that already and wanted to play on rather than kick it off for half-time. Ball's still alive, ball's still alive! Sorry, Rose, uh, apologies for interrupting. I think we all lost our minds there. We're trying to look at the scoreboard on out, RE1 okay. right now. And we'll try and get those results coming through to us. Um, it looks as if it could be 30 nil, mark. but Step forward. I don't know if that's my eyes. That's or fine. Rugby off the top. A nice switch uh, on the end. Back this way, a little shimmy. Hunt, been one of their enforcers in this team. Good hands from the big number one. It's an organised colleague cigar defence, isn't it? They're really fit side, this Welsh school. Typically so fit. Play on backwards off red. Through the years, historically, colleague Cigar so smart at sevens and they quickly Bounty turn advantage. this defence into attack. It is really well to not go hunting for the ball there. Just wait for rugby to make a mistake. And that's what happens and they got the ball back. Well, from what we can gather on RE1, um, as long as we, our mindset doesn't deceive us, Fimbra are well ahead in their match, um, so that will surely sew up second position. Uh, these two teams fighting really just for that third place. But the match being well and truly opened up again by Colleg Cigar by scoring in that corner. Yeah, brilliant finish actually. I don't know if that was just for the theatrics or whether he had to do he had to do that, but. Brilliant finish, nonetheless. That gives you an, yeah, I don't know either. It was a lovely finish, let's say that, but it's certainly a, a position of strength to be asking for a change if you've uh, dived in at the corner and got your team back in the match. So, well done, colleague Sagat. A brilliant attempt on the kick, but unfortunately just, just missed, just wide. Let's have a look here at how this uh, played out. It was Ellis Price that took Let's it. Let's go, quickly. rugby! Time is off! Price does that really, really, really good thing where he just runs and makes sure the defender draws in that defender and then opens up. Time that is gap. on, He's three really and a half. Good at drawing the defenders and then just having the vision. Timing, to pop please! It off. The man diving in, by the way, Alfie Rodatz Lodek scoring the try. Backwards! Tackle release! Oscar Tebet did well not to knock the ball on. Now he plays Link to move the ball onto the edge. Edward McLean involved now. Run away! Brilliant defensive efforts there from College Cigar. All right, let go of the ball. Turning let the, go ball the ball over, knowing how important that is for them. Yeah, it's a bit of a space out there as well between the two sets Here's of players. Mark. Yeah, and obviously you never want too much spice, but I think a little is really important for the game, especially Guys, the this white for some people might be a nothing game, but for these two sides, it's a, it's a lot in it for them. It means it's bragging rights, and at the end of the day, it's still a game of rugby Bind. that you want to win. Set. Hooked back, Colleg Cigar under pressure. That's fine. Pouring forward. Hands away now, hands away! Disrupt was Tebats. Tyler Davis needs support. Well, get out of my way. Eat the dust, says Alex Ridgway. Deliberate knock-on. 
definitely some right, we go, guys, there, throwing the ball away. Said. Not having this it. Game Not having so it. Physical back ten. And being brought back ten now as well. You're good now. So Morgan. Good switch here. Colleg Cigar in the hunt. Now for the match. And Ridgeway is on and he's got such a big fend, this man. Ridgeway again. <laughs> there is no room on the bus, says Alex Ridgeway. Absolutely brilliant finish there. And as we said, this game is definitely not over yet. 12-10. Quite a difficult kick, this one, to draw level, but... It just goes wide. 12-10, then. Great time to deploy the under the Wales under-18 man, Ridgeway. Bring him on when there's We've got time one and and a half out left, there. guys. This is what he's going to do. Yeah, it's a brilliant, maybe a, a bit of a lucky bounce, but this Timing, pen is please, just guys. absolutely brilliant. And then the second one just shrugs him off. That's ten. Made it look easy. Fair contest. Stay on. Colin Cigar from the restart have claimed this. Still uh, two points behind. Over, just over a minute to play, but momentum is all going one way. It's red and blue. And here they come again. Ridgeway's on the edge. This is Kai Evans. Ridgeway picks advantage. it up. He's going to come advantage. in. And Colleg Cigar will claim the victory on the canvas at half time. But then they stood up. First, no. it was Alfie Rodat Lodek. And then Alex Ridgeway. 40 seconds. Absolutely brilliant. It's, it's quite similar to the, the, the first try we just saw. So, absolutely brilliant pick up. And then goes to the. Goes to the line to score. I think he might be asking for a sub now. I think, yeah, as you said, two tries and a sub. That's what he probably needs. It's a late, late pass from Kai Evans. He did well not to seconds. let that go forward. Time still to play here. So not over for rugby. Timing! That kick off. Well taken by rugby school. Play on, Still forward to organize. We're in the red now, but it's rugby ball. They've worked so hard to keep that in. Can Tackle roll! Through the distance. No clear release. Another 10. Back on your halfway, no clear release. Really nice to see the referees controlling the game a bit and just saying, having absolutely Tackle no... Tackle it did not release. Like area for descent, controlling it completely. Yeah, but Browder wanted to take things quickly and did. Counter works fine! Good counter from Colleg Cigar. That will be the ball game. And that will be Last the victory. Last play, guys. Last play. Ellis Price knocks it to touch and Colleg Thank Cigar goodness. sting rugby school with a late show. 15 points to 12. And they end their campaign here in Southwest London at Roslyn Park with a victory and a good one too against rugby school. And a point which it's almost unfair to mention given that, that this was done and dusted by the first day, but they lost to Fimbra by just two points in their first match. Had that gone their way, of course, they may well have been coming back tomorrow in the plate. Instead, it will be Finbra. Uh, and, of course, there's nothing they can do about that. And they've dusted themselves down extremely well since. But those are the fine margins at the Roslyn Park School Sevens.
Up and south. Richard Hewish College against Norwich School now. Norwich School will kick us off. They've had a good day, Norwich School, and they're still in the hunt for coming back tomorrow if they can win this encounter with a hefty points difference. Back. Then they may okay. be able to overhaul Beach and Cliff School. So that's what's at stake. They need to win. They need to win well, and they need to win by a very precise number of points. And that is release, green. by 31 Back. points or more. That's the aim for them. And here they come. Tackle! No hand, no hand, green, no hand! So Oscar Ratlich. That scrum half with Freddy Snary. Snary has gone backwards to go forwards. And Snary races in under the sticks. 45 seconds for the first points to be scored. And they need plenty more where they I came need from. The attacker release. Okay. Thanks. He's in the Leicester Tigers under 18 right. Academy, this right. young man. Sorry. Probably. But all those accolades at the back of all their minds right now. This is about Norwich School and Norwich School only. Look at this from Snare. He points somewhere else, then says. I'll tap you on the shoulder, that's all it was. Boy. <laughs> Snary kicks off again. Richard Hewish, school, college rather. Have uh, certainly been able to challenge teams at times. Here's Ethan Norris. Norris with three hunting Okay, Tucker! Is taken. It's good. Good Tucker release. Holy ship. Okay, it's good. Back with Norwich now. They turned it over. Hi, Tucker, late. Tobias Spencer, the captain. Oh, he thunders into contact. Physical side of the under 18s cup competition has been a real point of difference to everything else we've seen. These players are hammering into contact. Back, back! Snary on the edge, doesn't want to go on the outside, so dances back and three players beaten. Then he finds supports. That's a lovely break too, and through the middle they go. Ethan Ashton. Lovely cameo this from Snary. Look at that, the way he bounces back off the left and then off the right and then the awareness. And how about this, selling all sorts of wares today, Ethan Ashton. Back red, okay. Taken by Jared Mossman. Crossfield Good. kick here. It's only going to land in Snary's hands, though. So the points rush continues for Norwich. Snary knocks it over. 21 nil. And they're getting closer to that 31 points. It was ambitious from Richard Hewish. Well. Play on.
just now he puts it right on the 10 meter line it's going to bounce back for Norwich but then not the second time Fear green please red red Kent. Sam Gray back. will throw this in back Gray red back the guest have been the two playmakers for Richard Hewish come time but they can't play without the ball and it'll scrum. be a scrum to Norwich. Scrum. Okay. Uh, Cooker, your foot right in the scene, please. Thanks. In the line. Sorry. Well, Norwich beat Beach and Cliff School okay. in their first match today. 28 points to 24. Bang. Set! Beach and Cliff School beats Richard Hewis, 31 points to nil, and it's by that margin that they need to beat Richard Hewis themselves. Now, Gray could cause some real problems. I don't need you, I don't care. Help Richard Hewis across the line a couple of times and cut that deficit. But right now, Norwich School on track. There's Gray. Back, 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 Jared back, Mossman. back, okay. Gray again. Stolen by Norwich. See, yes! No, no! Great. Holy dad. No, no, no! In the ground! 22. Jarukar, 22. Now this will 10 meter. make things much more Back. difficult for Richard And the line, Hewish. please. Thanks. 10 meter. Snary. They're spacing out well, looking to go round the outside of Richard Hewish. Now they go back. Snary with the no-look pass. It, it's not tidy, but it... It's still possession. Back, back. Snary again. Here's Tobias Spencer. Spencer, the captain, <laughs> charges through and Spencer's away. The points count keeps coming. Up to 29, up to 28 with this conversion. If Spencer knocks it over. Half time, calls. It's good from Tobias Spencer. Actually, without anyone touching him here. This is the group which has had Wellington College in as well, Oakland's College, yeah. and Beach and Cliff. So they've been up against it, all these teams with Wellington College in their group. But now with 28 points to nil, I'm rather. 28 points to not, excuse me, at half-time. So Norwich know what they have to do. They need to score four more points. That's it. And keep that points difference at 31 plus in order to go through to the plate competition ahead of Beach and Cliff School. Wellington College are going to top this group. No problem with that. Slotting out the tackle. Nice pass. Back! Advantage! Norwich. Number 10 of Tate! On the rampage. Release! <laughs> Number 10 of Tate! 
Richard Hewish's uh, campaign, blighted by that yellow card. Ten, upside, 20 seconds, and the line, please. Snaring. Good draw, and then a good fend as well. Away goes George Wilson. And the points keep coming, but... In actual fact, for uh, Norwich school car, two, please. fans and relatives, the simple victory of this match will give them passage through to tomorrow's plate competition. So that business uh, not reliant on the points scored, only reliant on the victory. But nonetheless, they're playing like every point matters. Snary with that pass, and then Wilson rounding the outside. Captain, say. Play on. Up she goes. Popped off. Now Wilson again. He's going. High tackle! And only fell the by yes. a high tackle. And there. Dexter. Tackle release, nine! Where's four for Norwich? Release! Knock on Kane, but there was a penalty coming. Ratledge. Step from Freddie Snary. Here goes Snary again. Stylish Snary. Snaking his way through. Seven now. In the line, please. Sad yeah. Gray. And his team in green. Can they get points? For the no, no, no. Here? Release. Okay. Good clear out. Kieran Hill, still there, it's uh, knocked forward, this is going to bounce up nicely. Oh, no, no. Advantage. How can a rugby ball Take do this release. to people? None. Devilish bounce. Over. The bounce. Bumped into the chest and away come Norwich and this is Tobias <laughs> Spencer who is running at high speed. This is um, really difficult to stomach for Richard Hewish, I'm sure. So close to their first score in this match. This is the last try from Snary. Come down, go! <laughs> and still they keep their discipline and organisation, Norwich. Gray loses the ball now. No tagger, no rag. Richard Hewish, start again. Ollie Dad. Tagger release. <laughs> He's tackled. Big carry from Marley Mehmet. Now. But Mehmet uh, with a penalty conceded. Bad Norwich with two more minutes to play. Not many teams have scored 50 points in a match today. Play on. But Norwich at the end of this first day. Still with bags of energy. 
And reinforcements to come on who want to impose themselves on Richard Hewish. And they will do so again through <coughs> Harvey Nkrumah. Another one of the Lesser Tigers Academy contingent in this Norwich school team. Pass from Guy Savory to uh, Harvey Nkrumah. Just barging his way down a door. 40 seconds. 40 seconds. So here's Gray, again causing a, a bit of a Good. panic in the Norwich defence, but they soon recover. Okay. okay. And Guy Savory. Now the Krumer again. Take and release. Last 30 Back seconds. Green. Okay. Pass from Icazaboy. No, 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 stop. Again, it's Tobias Spencer and the link up Play on. with Freddie Snary. Release. Thank. Richard Hewish possession. Can they have something from this game? Need to keep this alive, and they do. And they go round the outside, and maybe here Richard Hewish can end with something. Spencer finally runs out of energy, and Richard Hewish at the very end in overtime. It's Ned Burlingham. Olympic. <laughs> Ollie Dad converts things. Now look at this. See, Ned Burlingham here has done so well. And so too Ethan Norris. But Burlingham jumped in his green and gold Maserati. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, boy. And went into sixth gear. Cheers. Great finish for Richard Hewish. Long, tough day competing in the under 18 cup competition, but at all points they've been competitive and despite the scoreline, which reads Norwich School 56, Richard Hewish College, they have not stopped playing. Norwich School then go through to tomorrow. Plate competition they will be in. That's confirmed with that heavy victory. Well, at the moment, at least, it's our final game live on RE2 here at the Howden Rosden Park National School Sevens. Kirkham, who are looking to win their fourth from four games and progress through to the cup competition, take on St. Benedict's. And Sam, coaching at St. Benedict's alongside me here. How have you found the tournament? Well, we'll ask you how you find the tournament as soon as Kirkham slow down. They won't wait for me. And they won't wait for anyone as Luke Den scores right from kickoff and Kirkham are on their way to the cup. But how's the day been for St. Benedict's? I'm not going to lie, it's been a fairly tough day, but when you've got a group with Kirkham, Brighton, Hartbury College, uh, Exeter College, it's always going to be tough. Uh, but fair play to these Kirkham boys. Obviously, they were in the final of the school's cup last week, so probably haven't done a lot of Kirkham, sevens work. Hold. And they're four from four. Just hold on me. Um, like you have to off your cap to these Kirkham boys 
Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get the hands on the ball now and actually show what we can do in attack. Well, it's uh, difficult to label any group at Ros in a group of death because they're all full of some of the top teams in the country, but this one especially. Brighton and Hartbury hoping that uh, St. Benedict can pull off something special here, which that will give both of those sides a lifeline into the cup, depending on points difference, depending on how those two get on. They're now facing off with each other, fighting for at least a plate, plate position over on RE1. Well, actually, that game has already finished on RE6, in fact. We'll wait the results there, as that's just one pass too many for... Lion Nutt and uh, it'll be a Kirkham line out. So, what was the score in the um, Kirkham Brighton game? Well, that was an excellent game that Kirkham really turned on the style and took them down 24 points to seven. Well, not nearly as close as uh, John Lyon on Cocom's expected it advantage. to be. High tackle advantage. I have to admit, it's surprising. Like Brighton Seven's program is superb, they're brilliant every year as are Kirkham, but when you're in the final, the score's oh, over. When you've got players like that. Well, it's Tomlinson who's an inch short, and surely now they'll dot down in the corner. Harry Ray. Well, Tomlinson came off the bench against Hartbury, and his deft kick in behind got their last-minute winner. He also scored a beautiful try to seal it against Brighton. What a day the young number seven is happy, having, and Harry Ray will uh, capitalise on all his hard work. But yes, a 15-4 win against Hartbury, which just shows the unbelievable quality of this Kirkham side. A good last-ditch tackle there by Lakey, but then just too strong, too powerful, goes over in the corner. Well, whatever the results between Hartbury and Brighton, that side will finish on nine points and they will be into the plate at the moment as Kirkham will finish on 12. But St. Benedict's now on the attack, looking to open things up, and it's a really well-worked run from the captain, Freddie Rossignou. Lifted off the deck, Dawson back to collect for St. Benedict's. Across the face of this blue and white wall of Kirkham, and then some great pace added to the attack. Just over the head of Nutt. And they're keeping possession well on their 22. Looking to stretch Kirkham, perhaps. James Morgan hands it off. And now, perhaps, some numbers on the right hand side for St. Benedict's. Daniel Lake take it to the line and finally taking contact. Will be clean ball for St. Benedict's. Putting in the fend, looking to get onto the outside. In comes the big shot from Archie Eden, but good release and back to the feet. And St. Benedict still with some good possession. Dawson at nine into Shenas, the vice captain. Shenas with a lovely ball across the face. And Shenas is there on the wraparound as well. But Find a it. huge tackle comes across from Ben Firth. But uh, promising stuff down. from St. Benedict, Sam. Yeah, much, much better. Holding on to the ball, being patient, not full, like just running into contact because you're not sure what to do. Um, really good, got up the wing. But again, what a great tackle. Like Shenas is a seriously quick runner. And the big fella from Kirkham's taking him down there. But so much, much more positive play from St. Benedict's the there. Please. Good to see. Come across, please. Use five as middle. middle. Crouch! Bind! Yes. Set! Well, the action continues here with a Kirkham scrum instead. Stepping off the right twice there, a little stutter step, looking to get onto the outside channel. Dupkin with the carry, brought down by Daniel Lake. Advantage, offside. Well, there's a penalty Hold advantage for Kirkham, unfortunately, for St. Benedict's. And then attack the line with great over. pace, a lovely little show and go. Cam Blamey will score. <laughs> and that is pretty cr clinical stuff from Kirkham, Sam. 
as you say, clinical is the word then. Scrum way over there on the left touchline. They've brought it all the way to the right, show some good pace. It was quite good defence from St. Benedict's, but from that breakdown, they've gone wide left. Ford's shown some really good gas, and it's a, it was, they made it look very easy. But as you see here, all the way out here, good breakdown work, and then it's superb hands. Everyone's coming onto the ball. Just under a minute. Coming onto the ball, commit. Just under. And then just a show and a go and some serious wheels there. Really nice play from Kirk. And as I said, it's very impressive from these boys. Time off. Well, we'll have a... Gents, have we made a sub? ...moment to wait while changes are being Should made. Should we get one more player on? Wait there. The impressive thing about this Kirkham side... Time is on. They look really fresh. They look physically in great shape. Um, and you'd have thought tomorrow they're definitely going to be up there with one of the best teams competing tomorrow, which should be a great day. Can't wait for it tomorrow. Considering as well they've had to see off Brighton and Hartbury on the way to this stage. They've got a rotated side on the field now, but uh, serious quality across their side. A different route to that of Harrow, who made in their last game on RE2 three blocks of six changes in one fixture. That's how they're planning on keeping their players fresh. But uh, St. Benedict's on the attack now, and some good footwork by... Uh, James Morgan look. there. It's James Morgan at number 14. But uh, this is good from Benny's. They've kept the ball, but Kirkham just looks so comfy in attack and defence. They all know what their role is. They all know what to do. Um, they're not biting out the line right in defence. And then when That's Bennies do take after. contact, they make the tackles and then win the breakdown. Well, very, very, for want of a better word, professional performance from Kirkham. Well, on the half-time then, on a game that Kirkham needed to win to confirm their place in the cup competition, they will be consigning Brighton and Hartbury to the plate with a win here, and they are in control. They lead by 17 unanswered points in our final game here on RE2 Live at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. We'll be back for the second half in just a moment's time. Kick off here deep to St. Benedict's. As they look to play out from defence, Shenas checks back looking for support. But Kirkham uh, more than one step into the final. just chinked in behind and then it has been regathered by St. Benedict's on the wraparound. Just the sweeper to beat here. Freddie Rossignou, the captain. Lovely footwork from Rossignou to bemuse Dupcan on the sweep. And that is a really lovely try, Sam. 
superb. A little bit of luck with the rico ricochet from the kick, but we just saw how quick Freddie is. His footwork, he's gone 70 yards, and then he's had the footwork to beat the sweeper. Really good play. Lovely pass from him to set up. A little bit of an overlap. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck, but he's taking it with one hand. Lovely take from Ross and you, and then the footwork here to beat the sweeper. That's how you do it. A window back into the game for St. Benedict's, and wow, what a shock it would be Let's if they this. could take down Kirkham here and possibly even knock them out of the cup competition, depending on how Brighton and Hartbury played out. And that's a great kickoff. Oh, Advantage, not gone. There. Advantage is over. Well, it's Kirkham then in possession from the kickoff. And on the outside, the little stutter step looking to put the hammer down is Ray on for another try. And just as St. Benedict's push out in front, Harry Ray re establishes the three try advantage. And again, as we say, they just look so fresh. They look in control of everything they do, Kirkham, whether in defence or attack. Nice. I, 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 what I like about this Kirkham team, they're always looking to pass before contact. There's footwork. He's seen a little bit of gap. I think that just. I think Shenas has played pretty much almost every minute of the game of the day here, and he just looks a little bit tired on that tackle. I think that's the first one he's missed all day. Um, but yeah, this Kirkham team looked very, very impressive. Well, Brighton did beat Hartbury College by 19 points to 14, so a loss here for Kirkham would have put them through to the cup. They'll settle for the plate, it seems. Daniel Moros at 11 takes the kick, and now Shenas looking to put the hammer down. Just assessing options, back to the short side they go. Moros out the back door to Shenas once again. He's got good feet, puts in the fend. And there's no sweeper in place for Kirkham. So Shenas will saunter home and cut that deficit back to two. Great play from David Shenas. Shows what, he, what he's about. He's got superb footwork, he's got speed, and he's got confidence as well. And has deserved that. He's worked so hard today. So here you, you see. I'll tell you now. Step there. Then the fend, and then the speed to get away. To you, um, to really nice play from David Shenas there. Let's just see if some Bennett's can get the kick back here. Like we got hands to it on Let's the last sure kickoff, but he just went forward. If, if Ross and you could put this, unfortunately, well, not you quite had to be out. ambitious in the closing stages, but it uh, will be a free kick for Kirkham on halfway. Time off. We're over on RE1. It's the conclusion to the uh, under 16 competition, which sees Sedber face off in the final. But at the moment, it's been spilled and it's been kicked through by St. Benedict's and Rossignou searching for his second. Has he got the control? He is on the ball. Lovely out the back door offload and skipping away. This time is Callum McGregor. And well, is something on here? A little bit of showboating then from Rossignou uh, around the back. But if, now, if you're ever going to do it, 19. why not do it? Rosny Park Sevens. Um, and Callum's in great support and has got the score. But as you said, if we... Um, it's only one well, try away it. now. And um, as I often say, one bounce of the ball, a missed tackle. There could be an upset on the cards. You never know. Well, wide from the conversion, but two minutes to go here, and St. Benedict's are in within five. Again, really good from Rosinu. Pouncing on the Kirkham mistake. Foot to the ball. Lovely little nudge then, and then here comes round the back. Didn't quite come off as he wanted to, but superb bit of skill. Callum McGregor over the, over the whitewash. Well played, Benny's. Kick off then. Once again, it's deep. Before this time him. it takes a bounce before Dead it reaches line out, touch. Kirkham. So it is a Kirkham line out, but a chance for. Some Benedict's to disrupt. 
Yeah, so. that's a real shame. Again, as yeah, a kicker, that, you can't do much more than Freddie's just done. We, as a chaser, you've got to try and get hands on ball. And if Benny's have got that back, you never know. But it's in Kirkham's hands now. We've seen what they can do with the ball in attack. On the wraparound then, here come Kirkham in attack. Ray on for a hat-trick, looking to take on Shenass and has the beating of him. And Ray will score the hat-trick. As we said earlier, they're super clinical, aren't they? They move the ball wide and raise. I think every time he's touched the ball, I think he scored really powerful. Got that fend, he comes back on the inside and he's looked super sharp. Time is off. Like Iron Robin cutting off that uh, right wing. You know he's going to do it, but uh, stopping it is a whole other issue. Once again, just stepping off the left yeah. and putting in the fend. Yeah, he shouldn't get through there, but he's, as you said, he's got a strong Time fend. On. He's got that acceleration over the first five yards. And fair play. That's, that's his hat trick. Well, it's been a really good performance from St. Benedict's as Lutus onto that's the forward. field now does put it down. A really promising end to the competition in, uh, in what is, in reality, a really tough draw. Yeah, it's been a tough day, but we can the, pro, the boys can be proud of themselves. Crouch. You've lost the first three games. You come up to Kirkham. They haven't Bind. given up. Set. Scored three nice tries, and who knows? We might get one more now at the end of the day. Um, let's see how they go now. Well, they'll play with offside, an advantage, and Ross and you quickly to tap, and he's caught Kirkham unawares, stepping off that right foot. Shenas on the switch. Well read by Lutus, but Shenas gets away. But it's just forward. a hint of a forward pass to bring an end to the fixture. A spirited St. Benedict's performance, but Kirkham, even after such a long day against such high-quality opposition, well, they're through to the cup in fine fettle, and they are a promising side going into day two, Sam. Yeah, they've looked very impressive. It's the first thing I've seen of them today, and um, you've got to say that they are, I would have thought, would be in the mix toward, toward tomorrow's afternoon. Very, very impressive. As I said, especially as they were in the cup final for 15s last week. So, um, yeah, we won't be playing them tomorrow. Wants to watch Kirkham then heading into tomorrow. Like action will start back here on RE2, the first game at 10 a.m. Coverage of the under-18 competitions as they reach their thrilling conclusion. And that'll wrap up all the coverage from here on RE2 today. Thanks for being with us, Sam. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. And that's all from me, Wilfred Kemsley, here at the Howard and Rosen Park National School Sevens. Join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. where the action continues from the under-18 competitions for the men and women. Or over on RE1 now, it's the under-16s plates, followed by the post-show analysis and interrogation of proceedings. Thanks for joining us here at the Howard and Rosen Park National School Sevens. Good evening and goodbye.
the world of competitive sports, every advantage counts. At Holroyd Howe, we understand the vital role nutrition plays in athletic performance. That's why our dedicated team of professionals provide expertise in sports nutrition to give athletes the power to perform. We work with our chef's teams to craft meals tailored to fuel peak performance, ensuring your athletes have the energy they need to succeed. Education is key when it comes to fueling performance and we can support athletes in making food choices through our various initiatives and sports nutrition programme. Get in touch today to see how we can help support your athletes with our sports nutrition guidance and expertise. Holroyd Howe, providing the power to perform. Wednesday at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. We've taken you through Monday and Tuesday across the Asda pitches, across the Wimbledon pitches, across the Merton pitches, but now we are bringing you the hub of the activity, RE1 and RE2, where the live stream happens, where the food court happens, where the bar happens, for those of us that need a pint later on, because it's sunny. Um, lads, you've had a, a fantastic morning. I mean, we, tell me about today so far. Well, we had our first two group stage matches and we've had some great moments. Simon to my right here, running through the whole team, sidestepping their sweeper and scoring under the post. Brilliant try, probably highlight of my day so far. And this is your first time the school's ever made it through to day two. How, how does that feel, being part of a bit of history? Well, I mean, our coach, Mr Metcalf, he's well chuffed. Yeah, he's been glazing us all, all last night, yesterday, and we're happy for him, happy for the school. A true legend of the competition. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, ultimately, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we've got so many resources at Wellington. We've got so many good players. Like, we're just really kind of privileged to to be able to not only have that kind of history, but to be able to put teams out in the Vars, in the Cup, 14s, 16s. You know, we it's something that you know, as you say, kind of Wellington and Roslyn Park are kind of go kind of almost sort of hand in hand. You know, if you look at the, I guess, the history of the school and its rugby, it's a lot of that kind of reputation has been built at, at Roslyn Park. Chaps, um, what have we been eating for lunch? Chinese, mate. Unbelievable over there, need to try it. Chinese, what what, uh, what particular sort of Chinese have you been having? Um, we got these these chow mein like noodles, they're really good. Salt and pepper chicken as well. I mean, is this your first time down here or have you been before? Uh, this is my first time, but I'm enjoying really much, but hopefully we can get a win in our uh, next match about which other people you might be able to see around. They're, they're up for Ugo Monia, apparently. Ugo, if you're around, give them a shout. Um, but listen, Bobby, you've got a lovely mullet, so could you just give that a little show off to the camera? Um, if, imagine you're in a L'Oreal advert. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, listen, guys, we can't keep you for too long, but just um, give me a little give me a little cheer for the, What do we call the school on the, on the touchlines? What's everyone shouting for on the touchlines? BSN. BSN, right. What I want is a huge come on BSN, all right? So we're going to in three, all right? Three. Two, one. BSN! Sounds like things are going well in the Netherlands. It is extraordinary what a vast expanse the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens covers. School. Tell me about that hat trick. Well, first try, um, just nice hands down to the wing and just had the pace. I give to you the 2024 champions, Stanford! Yeah! Yeah! 
runners up in the under 14 girls. I'd like to welcome them up to the pins. Come on, Kitchy, the under 14 girl champions. Jamira, English speaking The sevens, I think, is a great introduction because it's a simple game, it's fast, and I think that's why we liked it. Because we, we couldn't kick a ball, and we knew in the sevens, listen, you don't have to kick. Get the ball, create some space, and, uh, and score some tries. Been a great start, the boys are really excited about playing here. They're a, they're a great year group. Uh, a good start against the Hay School. tournament in the world, not just schoolboy, of any level. I've been told that and actually I'm quite emotional about being here.